Hello and welcome to LN Audiobooks. Please subscribe and leave your suggestions and favorite novels on this channel. Thank you so much, and please enjoy the light novel. Volume 1 of Campfire Cooking in Another World with My Absurd Skill. Chapter 1 I got caught up in a hero summoning, but everything seemed incredibly shady, so I ran. All of a sudden, I was in a fantasy world of swords and magic straight out of medieval Europe. My name is Mikao Tatsuyoshi. 27 and single, I'm just a humble salaryman living in the suburbs of Japan. If asked why I'm in a world such as this, it's because I was caught in a hero summoning ritual. I've read web novels to kill time, so I'm familiar enough with this trope as to be sick of it, but never in my wildest dreams did I think it would actually happen. And to think, I'm not even the hero, I'm just collateral damage, this is no joke. The country that held this hero summoning ceremony was a place named the Kingdom of Rijzeger. Even though there were supposed to be three people summoned, four people showed up so the higher UPS in the room all made troubled faces. Although the ones who were most troubled by this were the people who've been suddenly whisked away into another world, in other words, us. I mean, they're coming at us and calling us heroes all of a sudden. I had already caught on to the fact that this was another world because I've been reading all those web novels, though. To be honest, I got my hopes up just a little because they were calling me hero. But those hopes were dashed pretty quick. Right after we were summoned, they immediately had our statuses appraised with a magic tool. In the job column of our statuses, everyone other than me, they were all wearing school uniforms, so I think they were all. High schoolers, had hero from another world written down, but I was a victim from another world. On top of that, all of their stats like HP and MP were between 700 and 800, while my stats were only about 100. Even so, those numbers apparently were above average for this world, so I was told that I was at least somewhat powerful. But my stats clearly didn't measure up to theirs, so that fact was no consolation at all. The number of skills I had was no comparison to those three either. Including skills we all had like appraisal and item box, they all had stuff that shocked the higher UPS that were there, like holy sword skill or holy spear skill or even sacred magic. And on top of that, they all had the skills for elemental magic like fire, water, earth, wind, sacred, lightning, and ice. They were the definition of overpowered. Compared to them, I only had the unique skill online supermarket. My immediate reaction was, no, no, what the hell kind of skill is that? I mean, I knew what an online supermarket was. I owed online supermarkets a lot. But it's a skill, you know? A skill. There ought to be something more magic-like or something, no? The people of this other world had no idea what the skill was, and the three with the hero job all laughed at me, so thanks to this unique skill I was immediately branded as useless. Even so, there was no doubt I was summoned to this world with the hero summoning ceremony, so I was able to participate in the audience with the king, but what he said was shady as all heck. According to the king. The demon king frequently attacks this country because he wants to conquer it. They ve somehow managed to stall him for now, but they have no idea how long they'll be able to keep the status quo. The kingdom's people are suffering under these continued conditions. With those feelings, they had no choice but to rely on the ancient ritual of hero summoning. It's a selfish wish after summoning us here at their convenience, but they want us to somehow save this country. They don't know of a way to return us back to our world here in this country, but the demon king might know of a way, as he has lived a long life and is extremely skilled at magic. Well, it was that kind of excuse. There was clearly something going on here. Especially them putting off responsibility for returning us to our world for later. Also, the king said that this country was in dire straits, but the people here had none of that grimness about them. Not only that, but the king was a very obese old man, and he was wearing a gemstone studded gaudy as all heck mantle that screams just how much money did you put into this. And sitting next to the king, his wife, and their daughter beside her, are both wearing flashy dresses that put on display just how they're living in the lap of luxury. Would a royal family expressing grief over the state of their people put forward an appearance like they're indulging in every luxury they can? Putting together all these observations, I came to the conclusion that this was one of the no-good types of other world summonings. Even though they called us heroes, in the end we'll probably just be used conveniently by the country, like being sent out in wars to expand the country's territory. Moreover, I wasn't even a hero so I probably can't expect to be treated well, in the worst case, I might even be executed. I decided that it would be best if I left the castle as soon as I could. That's why, at the time, I acted as humble as I could and said this. Seeing as how I'm not a hero, I'd only be causing everyone trouble by remaining here. Doing that would riddle me with guilt, so if I could just have enough money to live during the two or three months it would take for me to find employment, I'd like to leave and live on my own. And just as I expected, they gave me twenty gold coins and tossed me out of the castle with the haste of someone getting rid of a nuisance. And so we've come to the present, with me walking around the streets of the capital. I had no idea if 20 gold coins was a lot or nothing at all, 
but at any rate I'd been given enough money for me to at least live for a while. I thought to myself, I need to hurry up and learn more about this world, starting with the value of currency, don't I? And then I'll need to leave this country as soon as possible. With the king like that, I can't imagine this country is a good place to be, and I don't think anything good will happen to me if I stay, either. Okay, with that decided, let's hurry up and take action. This capital resembled a town out of medieval Europe. I started off by calling out to some children who were idling about on the street nearby. Hey, do you guys have some time? I just arrived from way out in the country so I'm not really familiar with this place. I'll treat you to some skewers from the stall over there, so can you teach me some stuff? They were wary of me at first, but they couldn't win against their stomachs and so they eventually agreed. I bought the children two skewers each and listened to what they told me. The first thing I asked them about was the value of the currency here, which one could argue was the most important thing to learn and came to these conclusions based on what they said, one iron coin 10 yen. One copper coin 100 yen. One silver coin 1000 yen. One gold coin 10,000 yen. One large gold coin 100,000 yen. One platinum coin 1 million yen. The skewers I treated the children to were five iron coins each. If a family of four had six gold coins, they could probably live off of that for at least a month. I also heard of the existence of the adventurers and merchants guilds, which weren't attached to any country, both of these were basically mainstays of any fantasy novel, and that belonging to either of these guilds would make moving from country to country or town to town smooth. Basically, it would lessen the costs of doing so. If one had a form of identification not from either the adventurers or merchants guilds, or no form of identification at all, those from rural areas or children living on the streets often didn't have any of this, one would get taxed when trying to get into countries or cities they're in. This kind of stuff is common in this genre. I also asked about this country. And I heard that, while the conflict with the demonic race was real, apparently this country was the aggressor. The stated reason was to destroy the demons that cause harm to humans, but in the end, their real aim was the demon folk's land. This country has also been making suspicious moves towards the neighboring human-led countries too, so people have been leaving the country little by little for a while now. The children also told me that they were orphans whose parents had died in the war. These children knew more than I expected. Apparently, they see and hear a lot because they take on a lot of menial jobs to earn money to live. Orphans are really tough. Anyway, I'd planned to stay at an inn tonight and leave the capital tomorrow. I heard from the children that there's a stagecoach that goes to a town called Kiel's which lies on the border to another country every day, so I was set on riding that to get out of here. After that, I was going to cross the border, and figure things out again from there. At any rate, getting out of Rijzijer Kingdom was the most important thing. In order to do that, I'd need some funds, but I had an idea for that. I also already had the 20 gold coins I was given from the country. They probably gave me a bit more than was necessary because they were feeling a little sorry that they summoned me in a fashion like a pseudo-kidnapping. Well, it's convenient for me that this shady country gave me this much. Let's live off these funds for a while, I thought. I arrived at an honest and moderately priced shop for clothes that was recommended by those children. I came because I was still in the suit I was wearing when I was summoned, so I stuck out like a sore thumb. I bought a dully colored shirt and brown pants so that I'd match those people walking the streets. The clothes were more expensive than I expected at seven silver coins, but I managed to get the store to buy my suit, Y shirt, and bag for three gold coins, so I made a net profit of two gold and three silver coins. I considered putting the writing implements, documents, smartphone and other small accessories I had into my item box, but I didn't know how the existence of the item box would be treated in this world, so I probably shouldn't show it so easily to others. There were cases in the novels I'd read where the item box was treated as an extremely valuable skill, after all. Thankfully, the store owner threw in a cloth shoulder bag for free, so I put my stuff inside that. My shoes were probably fine as is. Before I left, I made sure to ask for a moderately priced inn nearby. He recommended an inn three buildings over, so I headed towards it. The inn the store owner recommended was four silver coins for a night's stay with meals. After dinner I returned to my room and checked everything that needed to be checked. First up. Status open. Named Tsuyoshi Mukauta age 27 job victim from another world level 1 HP 100. MP100 Attack 78 Defense 80 Agility 75 Skills Appraisal, Item Box Unique Skill Online Supermarket. Just like they had told me at the castle, when I chanted Status Open, an opaque window appeared in front of me with my status on it. Apparently only summoned heroes with the appraisal skill, although I'm not a hero, can check their statuses at any time. According to them, normally one would have to check their status using an appraisal magic tool at a town's guild branch or temple. Oh yeah. They were bragging something about how the magic item for confirming statuses was something the magic tool craftsmen from their country poured their blood, sweat, and tears into developing, weren't they? I decided to turn my thoughts to my own skills. Well, leaving that aside, they also said that around 70 is the average for people in this world, 
so I guess I'm just a little stronger than most people. The skills appraisal and item box are shared between all of the people that are summoned, so that must be something like a perk of the ritual. It seems like the item boxes of the summoned always have a high capacity, and while I was at the castle I overheard someone saying that there was a legend of a past hero putting in over 1000 monsters into their box. I was also told that those summoned are able to understand this world's language from the moment they arrive. That also probably falls under the perks of summoning. I mean, it's a cliché of other world stories, after all. The biggest problem was my unique skill, online supermarket. I know what an online supermarket is. As the type to want to hole up in his house over the weekends, I've used them a lot. I don't hate cooking, so back then I would cook from the ingredients I ordered, and eat while watching the dramas I'd recorded, or else spend time drinking beer and reading all the web novels I could find. That was my routine on days off. But the question is, how do I use this skill? Online supermarket. Nothing happened when I chanted the name. Then, what if I touch it? When I touched the words on my status screen. The window changed. It's literally just an online supermarket site. It was the exact same site I often used to use. For now, I put a 500ml bottle of water costing 8 iron coins and 2 sweet breads costing 1 copper coin each into the cart. Apparently, the prices reflected their pricing in Japan. When I tried to check out though, it said, there is not enough remaining credit. Please add more funds. A square frame appeared under the notice. So, it's telling me to add funds? Do I just put the coins in here? When I hesitatingly brought a silver coin close to the frame, it sucked up the coin on its own. And as soon as I finalized the purchase, silver particles of light gathered before my eyes and gradually formed a shape. It was the cardboard box the site used when delivering orders. Once I opened the box, I found the water and sweet bread I ordered inside. Oh, this is going to be useful. Back then, I thought, those important people working for the kingdom didn't know anything about my unique skill other than that it wasn't a skill for battle, and the heroes that were with me laughed, but this is actually a good skill that'll be quite useful. As long as I have money, I'll have no problems with food, and I can probably even earn the money I would need for that with this somehow. It's not overpowered like being a hero, but with this skill I can probably become very rich in this world. According to the information I got from those children, salt is expensive in any country that isn't next to the ocean, and spices such as pepper or sweets are only for nobles and the like. I could use my skill to buy lots of salt, pepper or sugar at the prices I used to buy them at in Japan, and then I could go and sell them at high prices here in this world. If I did that, it should amount to quite the profit. If I looked around carefully, there should be other products that would bring profit. Online supermarkets these days stock daily necessities as well as food, after all. Because of that, I'd like to register with the Merchants Guild, but doing so in this country would probably be a bad move. If by some chance they realized that they could make money off of my skill, there would be a real possibility that the kingdom would start interfering with me. If I was going to register, I should do it in the next country over. Anyway, it all starts tomorrow. Let's hurry up and get away from this town, and then cross the border. I probably won't be able to sleep in a bed for a while after tonight seeing as how I'll be on the road. And so I went to sleep, in order to be ready for tomorrow. After I ate breakfast, I left the inn. As I headed over to where the stagecoach would be stopped, I checked on the fee and departure time. The fee seemed to be one gold coin, and it would take around four days to get to Kiel's. There was still time until the coach was set to depart, so in the meantime I went to prepare four days worth of food and a weapon just in case something went wrong. Of course, using online supermarket in front of people would be a bad idea, and in the case that item box is a rare skill, there could be a chance of an uproar so I probably shouldn't use that either. I bought a water skin, jerky, black bread, as well as a slightly large knife. With this, I was ready. All that was left was to ride the stagecoach and get away from this capital. Other than me, there was a middle-aged peddler, a young married couple and their two children, and a woman in her mid-30s riding the stagecoach. There was also a party of four adventurers guarding the coach. From when we departed, I started talking a little with the peddler who was sitting next to me. Are you going to Kiel's to sell something? I started off with harmless small talk. Yeah, I managed to get some soap from a certain source, you see. I was thinking of getting a firm I know in Kiel's to buy it off me. Oh, soap, is it? So this world has it too. So, after a lengthy discussion, I learned that apparently soap does exist, but it was something only nobles use. When selling to a noble, a bar of soap went for around three silver coins. When I tried to indirectly bring up the subject of item boxes, I learned that nobles and large trading companies would hire people with the skill. It was said that people with the item box skill are about 1 in 1000, but it seems. The size of it depends on the person's MP, so if one didn't have at least a fairly large item box they wouldn't be able to get hired by said nobles or companies. No matter how small your box is, it should be at least three times bigger than what I can carry with this wooden back rack that I have, 
so from my point of view anyone with an item box is someone to be jealous of. Saying that, the peddler laughed. I see, so the item box skill does exist among people, even if it's rare. As long as I pretend that my item box's capacity is small, it should be fine to use, I thought. If I was to become a merchant, having the appraisal skill would be a great boon, wouldn't it? I was able to ask about item boxes, so I tried bringing up appraisal in the same way. Ah, uh -huh, that's something every merchant dreams of. But that's something that only summoned heroes from another world who only exist in fairy tales can use. Although I do think that it's not heroes who should have the skill, but merchants. Appraisal, it's the dream of any merchant, no? Even without the appraisal skill, it would be nice if the appraisal tool becomes more widely available. People find them sometimes in ancient ruins, but they're so expensive your eyes will pop out of your head, so only countries or guilds are able to obtain them. Woo, you, that was close. I couldn't help but sigh in relief in my head. So appraisal is something only summoned heroes have, and magic tools with appraisal also exist. But they're so expensive that it's impossible to own one privately. It seems they only rarely come out of ancient ruins, or in other words, highly difficult dungeons, so of course there wouldn't be a lot of them. It was good that I asked. So now I know that there's basically no chance that I would ever get appraised. While we talked about this and that, I eventually found out that the peddler was also aiming to cross the border. He leaned over and told me a secret in a whisper. This country's become pretty suspicious lately, you know? It would have been out of the question if I had a family, but luckily I'm single, so I'm thinking of getting out of this country early. There's rumors that they might close their borders soon, after all. Closing their borders? I thought, this. Country is dangerous as all heck. It's a good thing that I gave up on this country early and decided to move. On the way to Kiel's, monsters like goblins and wolves appeared, as I would expect from a fantasy world of swords and magic, monsters do exist here, but the adventurers guarding us defeated them without trouble, so the ride went smoothly. When we arrived at Kiel's, I headed over to where the old peddler told me the stagecoach for crossing the border would be. No way, at the station, a notice saying, stagecoach services currently on hold was displayed. What do you mean, on hold? Is this what the peddler meant by closing their borders? But if that's really the case, would the town really be this calm? At any rate, I needed more information. I headed over to a restaurant where a lot of adventurers that have probably been to many different countries gathered so I could fill my stomach while I was at it. I took a seat at the bar, and called out to a group of two adventurers who just happened to be sitting next to me. Hey, you guys have a moment. Sure. What do you need? I've actually just arrived here a little while ago, so there's a few things I'd like to know. I promptly waved the barkeep down and bought the two some ale. When I did that, the adventurers happily said, Ah, you know your stuff, and promptly started talking. I see. So stopping the stagecoach is in order to help stop the flow of people leaving. Yet. If the population decreases, so does the number of soldiers and the amount of taxes. Right now it's just the stagecoaches, but they might really shut down the border eventually. Even though this country is already warring with the demon folk, it seems they're planning on starting a war with the Kingdom of Marvale too. Right right, it's only a matter of time before war breaks out. It might have been because they have some liquor in them, but the two adventurers were very talkative. The country of demon folk borders this country's northern end, while the kingdom of Marvale is in the west. My plan was to head to the kingdom of Venon to the southeast. We're also planning on saying goodbye to this country soon. Hunting monsters suits us more than fighting in a war, you know? You should leave as soon as you can, too. I'd have left this country already if I could have but if a monster appeared on the road there would be nothing someone like me, who was just a little stronger than average, could do about it. It seemed to be a significant problem, but as I looked at the adventurers, it came to me. Why don't I just make a request to the adventurers guild? It'll probably cost quite a bit of money, but there's no point in being stingy here. My first priority is to leave this country before they close their borders for good. I decided to put out a request to the adventurers guild to guard me while I crossed the border. The next morning. Well then, let's go put up the request at the Adventurers Guild. The guild was facing the main street and I found it immediately, but it was early in the morning, so the building was jam-packed. In a rather cliched development, I was stared at by the adventurers when I entered, but I tried to ignore them. I'm just here to post a request, I swear. If they realize I'm a client from my conversation with the clerk, nobody should mess with me. Probably. After I stood in line for a while it was finally my turn. Excuse me, I'd like to make a request. A request? is it? What are you asking for, sir? I'd like to hire guards while I cross the border into Venon. Also, I don't have a carriage, so the journey will be on foot. This is my first time putting out a request, how much should I pay for a job like this? An escort mission on foot, yes? For that kind of request, you'll need at least a C-rank party or above, 
and on top of that it'll be on foot, so it'll take quite a while. At the very least, you should probably offer seven gold coins. While I was thinking to myself that seven gold coins would hurt my wallet quite a bit, the receptionist started talking again. However, because the stage coaches are stopped, we've been getting more of this kind of request. Taking that into account, a reward of eight gold coins might be more appropriate. I see, because if the number of the same kind of quest increases, adventurers will bite at the one that pays more. But eight gold coins? HRM. It honestly hurt me to pay that much, but you need to break eggs to make an omelette, there was really no choice. Understood. I'll pay eight gold coins. Also, could you let them know I'll handle the food? From the receptionist's choice of words, it sounded like eight gold coins might have been a tough sell, so I tried adding food onto the table. I don't hate cooking, and I did have that skill so as long as I were to choose cheaper ingredients, it should be fine. All right then, I'm in your care. Leaving reward money at the desk, I left the Adventurer's Guild. The next day, I got called to the Adventurer's Guild. When I arrived, I was surprised to find that my request had already been accepted. I didn't expect to have it accepted this fast, but I wanted to leave as soon as possible, so I was actually grateful. At the Guild, I was introduced to the Sirank party, Iron Will. I'm the leader of Iron Will, Werner. Pleased to meet you. My name is Makota. And the pleasure is all mine. It seems only nobles get family names, so in order to avoid suspicion, I only gave them my last name, and also made sure to pronounce it in a foreign way. Werner was a densely packed, 190 centimeters tall man in his early 30s. He had a large shield on his back, and a sword hanging from his hip. His thick arms carried many old scars, so he really felt like a seasoned adventurer. From Werner's introduction, the members of his party were, a man wearing leather armor with a long sword on his hip named Vincent, who I thought was a swordsman, a young girl who was probably a scout named Rita, who wore a chest protector and carried a knife, a stoic old man with white in his hair named Ramon, who donned a robe like a mage, and a woman named Franca in her early 20s who was probably their healer, as she wore white clothes that reminded me of a nun's habit, by the way, she had a huge chest. It seemed to be a pretty balanced party. I didn't think the guild would introduce me to people who they didn't think would be able to complete the request, so I decided to hire them. After I talked with Werner, we decided to leave tomorrow at 7 in the morning, after meeting up in front of the Adventurer's Guild. If that was to be the case, I would have a lot to prepare, as I would be the one preparing all the food for the trip. On the way back to the inn, I bought the things I'd need for the trip. First was a mantle, it could stave off the cold, and when sleeping I could just wrap it around me, so it seemed pretty necessary. I also bought all the cutlery and plates I'd need at a general store. While I was doing that, I also found a lot of other stuff that seemed useful, like a magic stove. Just like the name implied, it was a stove that produced fire when one ran magic power through it. They came with either one or two stovetops, but both models were expensive. Just then, I suddenly thought, why not just buy a mini stove from the online supermarket? It looked exactly the same, so if I were to tell the adventurers that it was a magic stove, there wouldn't be anything suspicious about it. Okay. Let's do that. Buying a mini stove from the online supermarket is way cheaper, too. With that decided, all that was left was to actually buy what I needed with my skill, so I hurried to return to the inn. After I got to my room, I proceeded to buy up a storm, a mini stove and the accompanying gas canister, a pot and frying pan, knife, chopping board, and the all-important ingredients. I was buying for a party of five adventurers plus me, so I made sure to get a lot. I got vegetables, like potatoes, carrots, and Japanese scallion along with cheese, ham, sausage, and eggs. I also bought some pre-prepared side dishes. Lastly, I got some salt, bouillon cubes, and other spices. All in all, I spent a little over two gold coins. I was down to eight gold coins, five silver coins, and a few copper and iron coins each to my name. My wallet's getting tighter and tighter. I considered, but it'll only be until I reach Venon. Once I get there, I'll register at the Merchant's Guild and sell my heart out. And after securing funds, I'll move again once I've seen the state of things. Let's work hard for my safe and peaceful life. When I arrived in front of the Adventurer's Guild at the agreed-upon time, I found the members of Iron Will already waiting for me. Sorry I'm late. No, we just arrived early. Don't worry about it, said the leader, Werner, laughing. Apparently, they drilled the habit of doing this quickly into their bodies. That's a good habit to have, I thought. Okay then, let's go. I nodded and set off on the road to Venon. Leaving the town of Kiel's, we made smooth progress. Iron Will's formation had no holes. I was in the center, with Rita the scout in front, Vincent the swordsman to my right, Ramon the mage to my left, Franca the healer behind me and to the right, and Werner behind me and to the left. They were set up to protect me, the client, at any time. 
we should take a break soon. At Werner's suggestion, we decided to rest. As promised, I started to prepare food. That said, there wasn't much time, so it was going to be a simple meal. I took the mini stove that I bought earlier out of my item box. Oh? So you were an item box user, Makota. And that's a magic stove. You've got something pretty neat, there. In response to Vincent's comment, I nodded, explaining, my capacity is pretty small, though. I did hear that item box users exist, so I decided to make it out that I have an item box, but that it's small. That way, it would be more convenient to hold my stuff, which has been increasing, and this way, it should also probably better than going to weird lengths to hide it. I got the magic stove from an acquaintance. He said he probably wouldn't have any chance to use it anymore, so I got it for pretty cheap. I readily used the excuse I prepared beforehand for my mini stove. The end justifies the means applies here. While I talked with Vincent, I brought out a loaf of bread and some ham and cheese to make sandwiches. I also made some instant consomme soup in wooden cups. Of course, I made sure they couldn't see while I made it. After I poured in water that I boiled with the mini stove into the cups, lunch was finished. Everyone, food's ready. I handed out a cup with soup in it and a plate with a sandwich on it to each adventurer. All right, I guess I should dig in. At Werner's signal, everyone began eating. De delicious. This bread is very soft and delicious. Yeah, yeah, this bread is crazy soft and tasty. This soup's good too. Oh, this is pretty good. Delicious. Those reactions in order were Vincent, Franca, Rita, Werner, and Ramon. It's good that they liked it. I cut so many corners making this though. They were especially surprised about the bread. Apparently, only nobles got bread this soft. Certainly, all the bread I've eaten up till now in this world has been black or brown and hard as a rock. In order to avoid further questions, I told them, this bread is made from a secret recipe from home. I bought a bunch before I left and put them in my item box. Everyone froze up, and somebody uttered, something so precious. But I just replied to that by telling them that food is meant to be eaten. I mean, I can get more bread anytime with my skill. At any rate, it's really great that we can get hot food while traveling. Werner said, and everyone else nodded in agreement. Too true. We were right to take this quest. Evidently, while traveling, it would be normal to have rather tasteless foods like hardtack or jerky, so the food I put out is quite the feast to people who are going places. It seems that good food breaks the ice anywhere, as conversation flowed freely. Apparently, the members of Ironwool had felt the unrest in the country too, so they had recently discussed moving to a different country as well. It was then that they saw my request, and thought it was perfect timing, so they accepted it. Actually, there were other requests that paid more, but they didn't really need money that badly at the moment, and since I promised to, provide the food during travel, they ended up taking mine. It seems that food fees for five people is no joke, I noted. No, no, I'm the one that's thankful for you guys taking my request. I also came to Kiel's because I wanted to get out as soon as possible, but seeing that the stagecoaches were stopped, for a while I was panicking, wondering what I should do. So it's thanks to all of you that I'm able to travel to Venon. Even though I look like this I'm pretty confident in my cooking, so leave the meals to me. After I said that, everyone smiled. They had good food to look forward to for the rest of the journey, after all. I'll try my best, so please get me to Venon safely. Chapter 2, For Some Reason, A. Legendary Beast Contracted With Me. When I made ginger fried pork. Three days have passed since leaving Kiel's. If I had ridden the stagecoach, we would be in Venon by now. And from there, it would have been another half day to Venon's border town, Falliers. However, we were walking, so we'd finally passed the halfway point. It was taking a long time because we were on foot, but other than that, there had been no real problems. The members of Ironwool were pretty skilled, so they quickly defeated all the goblins and wolves that had appeared thus far. As expected of Sirankers, monsters of that level probably didn't even serve as a warm-up. The sun will be setting soon. Let's stop here. At Werner's words, everyone started preparing camp. I was on food duty, so I was going to be a little careful picking out the menu this time. Anything too eccentric or complicated might have been considered bad by this world's standards, so I made sure to make it as simple as possible. I'm thinking today should be grilled sausages, pot ofu, and bread. Everyone seemed to like meat, so there shouldn't be any complaints. First, take the preheated pot and cut bacon into it, and then put in vegetables and sausage. After giving the ingredients a little while to cook, put in the water. Once it starts to boil, throw in the bouillon cubes and let it simmer on low heat. Yeah, this is looking good. I gave it a taste test, and the saltiness of the bacon and sausage had seeped in, so it didn't seem like I would need to adjust the taste at all. All that was left was to grill some more sausage on the side. Dinner's ready. I handed out the pot of foo in wooden bowls, 
along with the grilled sausage and bread on plates. Eh, uh, it's delicious. Makoda's food is great, as usual. Vincent said, talking between vigorous bites of his food. Rita nodded heartily at his words. It really is delicious. It might be because I've got such good food in my belly, but I feel like my body is moving better than usual. I've also been feeling more powerful ever since I started eating Makoda's food. Franca said, agreeing with Rita. Eating is the most important thing to humans. Depending on how delicious the food is, people's moods will definitely change. The normally silent Ramon chimed in seriously. Yeah, I get it. You like my cooking, Ramon. Thanks, man. That's certainly true. People have to eat to live. If that's the case, it's obvious that tasty meals would be better than bad ones. It really just means that we're pretty lucky to be able to eat like this while traveling. Werner was the one to sum it all up. It was somehow actually a little embarrassing to be praised that much. I guess this was a victory for Japan's food industry. But I wonder, I thought to myself, what's up with what Rita and Franca said about them moving better? I didn't make anything really special. It didn't seem like there was anything bad going on, but I was still a little curious. Let's use appraisal a little here, I decided. Name Rita age 16 job scout level 18 HP 135, plus 27, MP 64, plus 2, attack 119. Defense 107 agility 138 skills dagger skill, eavesdropping, quiet steps. MBFFHHHH. I did a spit take. Wait what the heck are you doing? Cough cough hack and nothing, there was just something weird in the soup and I choked. I'm fine, R cough cough plus 27 and plus 2. W what the heck is that? I reflexively spat out my food. Is it because they ate my food? Is it really? I appraised the pot of I had in my hands. Pot of foo. Pot of made with ingredients from another world. Increases max HP by 20% for one hour. Oh. It was totally my cooking's fault. Wait, wait, if the pot of raised HP, then what raised her MP? The sausage? The bread? Sausage. Sausage from another world. Raises max MP by 2% for 10 minutes. White bread. White bread from another world. Raises max MP by 1% for 10 minutes. Oh, so it was both of them. Thinking about it, I mused, isn't this pretty dangerous? I mean, you can raise your HP and MP just by eating. If someone else finds out about this, oof, I feel chills. This was definitely, 100%, without a doubt, something nobody could ever know. Luckily, only summoned heroes got the appraisal skill, and magic tools that could appraise only belong to countries or guilds. Also, people would need to use those magic tools in order to confirm their own statuses, so there shouldn't be any chance of them finding out that way. As long as I kept my mouth shut, this should never get out. I've locked up my lips and thrown away the key, I decided. I will never, ever, speak a word of this to anyone. Five days had passed since we departed from Kiel's. Let's stop here for the day. The sun was starting to set, and as usual we made camp at Werner's command. Then, I'll go ahead and use the red boar's meat as I like, okay? Sure, we'll be looking forward to it. The red boar is a large boar monster with red fur that the members of Ironwool had hunted along the way earlier today. Goblins and wolf monsters, apparently, they're called grey wolves, don't really have any parts that are worth anything, so we had left their bodies as is, but I was told that the red boar's meat, hide, and fangs all fetch a fair price. As expected of adventurers, their dismantling work was quick and professional. The problem was that it would be trouble to carry this much stuff. When they started talking about throwing away the relatively cheap meat, I told them I had room in my item box and offered to put the meat inside. And so, that's how I ended up getting permission to use the meat for our meals. At first I thought to make steaks, but that would take time, so I rejected the idea. Instead, today's menu was going to be that. My favorite ginger fried pork. First, cut the red boar meat into thin slices before marinating it in the ginger fry sauce I bought. While that's happening, cut cabbage into small strips. After that, all that's left is to cook the marinated meat. I also quickly prepared the usual instant consomme soup. Dinner's ready. I cooked the red boar meat with some flavoring from my homeland. I hope it suits everyone's tastes. I handed out the red boar fried with ginger and some cabbage on the wooden plates, some consomme soup, and bread to everyone. Oh, the smell really gets my appetite going. Werner, what the heck is this? It's great. Vincent, delicious. It's the first time I've eaten something this good. Rita, I don't really like red boar meat, but even I think it's delicious like this. Franca, it's my first time eating cabag raw, but it tastes great with this meat. Ramon, whoa, it's just a storm of praise here. I just cooked it with a certain company's sauce, though. That certain company that makes a lot of different sauces. 
Also, I realized, so cabbage is called cabag in this world, hey? While everyone was busy praising the cooking, and while I was also making my way through the meal thinking it really was delicious, we suddenly heard a voice. Humans, give me some of that, too. The owner of the voice was a wolf with such lustrous fur and radiating such a divine aura that it was ridiculous to even compare it to the wolf monsters we'd seen up until now. The adventurers froze. They didn't even quiver. Hey, human. Can you not hear me? I slowly held out my half-eaten portion to him. As soon as I did that, the wolf that was as big as a cow thrust its face into the wooden plate and ate all of it in one bite. This is not enough. Give me more. I it's a Fenrir, Werner whispered, face dripping with cold sweat. Is that such a dangerous monster that a party as seasoned as iron will can't move an inch? W what should I do? Even though we're so close to Venon. M. Makota, do as it says, Werner told me, but there was none left. It seemed to be a monster that understood human language, so it may be that just as Werner said, following its wishes was the best way to get out of this unharmed. Uh, umm, I'll have to cook it, so would you be willing to wait? That is fine. I will wait, so make it quickly. I quickly cooked up some more red boar fried with ginger and handed it over to the Fenrir, or whatever it was. Fenrir ate it with gusto, and kept asking for more, in the end, it ate seven or eight kilos of the red boar fried with ginger. Burp that was delicious. Nevertheless, to be able to satisfy me with so little meat. You are pretty good, human. So little meat, he says, even though he ate seven or eight kilos of it. How much does he even eat usually? Yes, I will form a contract with you. Hey? What's a contract? Hey, are you listening? I said I'd become your familiar. Familiar, he says. I think I've read web novels where they've done this sort of thing before, but does that mean I would be a tamer or something? No way no way no way no way. I mean, it's a monster that talks, yet? I couldn't help thinking, it's strong enough to freeze the members of Iron Will, yet? To be contracted with something that's strong, isn't that bad? Umm, eh, I ref. Hum. No, you see, I refu. Ha. This bastard, he's not gonna let me say no. This cannot be true, but could it be that you are trying to refuse a contract with me, Fenrir, retainer to the goddess of the wind, Ninrir? I do not think you would do something so outrageous, but what say you? Hum. When Fenrir, the monster that could speak human language said that, the members of Iron will signal to me with their eyes to hurry up and agree already. Do I have to? Really? So yes is the only answer available here? I thought, resigned. I reluctantly replied with, I understand, and Fenrir nodded, satisfied, with an mm. Come this way. At Fenrir's prompt, I had no choice but to get closer. Closer. Come right in front of mine eyes. Just as I was told, I stood right in front of Fenrir. Well then, I shall start the ritual of contract. Having said that, Fenrir put his forehead to mine. When our foreheads touched, my body lit up for a moment. With this, our contract is set. Mm. You have the appraisal skill. Are you a summoned hero? H -hey -i. I instantly closed Fenrir's mouth. Mph -mm mph, H hey, what are you doing? I whispered hurriedly, th that's a secret. Ah, uh -huh, is that so? Yes, I understand. Then, try confirming your status. It looked like Fenrir understood, so he said that in a whisper that only I could hear. At Fenrir's prompt, I appraised myself. Status open. Name Makota. Tsuyoshi Makauta, age 27 job victim from another world. Level 1 HP 100 MP 100 attack 78 defense 80 agility 75 skills appraisal, item box, familiars, contracted magic beasts Fenrir unique skill online supermarket. Somehow, my skills had increased. There was now a familiars entry, and it said contracted magic beast Fenrir. Mm, everything seems to be fine. Eh? You can see it too. Who do you think I am? I am kin to the goddess of the wind. I would at least have something like appraisal. Is it so? Actually, what happens now that we have a contract? Now then, with this I have become your familiar. Because of this, as the master you have to look after me, you're familiar. Do you understand? Do you understand, he says, I thought, feeling a little miffed. But, hey? Is that right? By take care of him, does he mean that familiars are basically pets? From now on, I look forward to three meals a day. Hey. Three a day? That, could he possibly have been lured into a contract by food? Is that right? Hey, you over there, I have already contracted with this one here. I will not attack you, so stop freezing up like that. Being addressed directly by the Fenrir, the members of Iron Will twitched. UMM, everyone, this Fenrir, over here understands speech, 
so I think it's okay, so. Ah, uh, I had forgotten. We have been bound by contract, so you, give me a name. Eh, uh, don't ask me that all of a sudden. Hmm, then, Pokey. You, are you making fun of me? He seemed to get mad after I said Pokey. Actually, I thought, now that it. Looks like he got lured in by food it seemed ridiculous to be afraid of him. Hey, don't get mad at me. How about Koro, then? When I said that, the Fenrir got even angrier. What's up with this guy, he's being pretty selfish, I thought exasperated. Fine, then since you're a Fenrir, how about Fel? Hmm, Fel. I like that. Let us go with that. What's with him, acting all important? Like this, the Fenrir's name became Fel. While that was happening, Iron Will finally started moving again. Among them, Werner, the fastest to recover, hesitatingly raised his voice. M. Wakoda. Ah, Werner, are you okay? Why yeah, I'm fine, but... T to think that I would lay eyes on the legendary beast Fenrir. Hey? Legendary? This guy who got lured in by food? There remain legends of a sighting around 300 years ago, but I've never even heard of anyone contracting with that Fenrir. Eeeh. Well, there are only enough of us Fenrirs to count with your hands. From what I have heard, there was a Fenrir that formed a contract 700 years ago, but I have lived over 1000 years and this is the first contract I have formed. H. -ha, so he's lived over 1000 years, I noted. I will be able to eat food this good. Compared to that, serving a human for several tens of years is no loss to me. Ah, ah, ah this guy actually said it, I thought more exasperated than anything. He just declared that he did it for the food. They say that he's a legendary beast, but is this guy really okay? From then on, Fel the Fenrir became one of our traveling companions, and we had made enough progress to be arriving at Venon soon. I was in the middle, Rita was in front, Vincent was to my right and Ramon to my left, and behind me to the right and left were Franca and Werner. Respectively. Added to that usual formation, Fel followed us slowly. Werner sighed while making a thoughtful face. What's wrong, Werner? Well, we're almost at the border, so I was just wondering what to do. Hmm? What does he mean? No 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 no, Makota. Like this, they'll definitely stop us. Vincent glanced furtively behind us as he said that. Eh, because Fel is with us, I realized. The border guards will come crawling out of the woodwork. Although I think they'll withdraw once they realize we don't mean any harm. Werner, even before the question of if they'll withdraw or not, the entirety of their army is still no match for a Fenrir. Well, what Ramon says is true. Eh, is that fairy tale of a Fenrir destroying an entire country something that actually happened? Rita, that's not a fairy tale, it's historical fact. Um, have my ears gone bad? They're talking some nonsense about destroying a country. That's a joke, right? I couldn't accept what I had just heard. Even if they acknowledge that it's contracted, there's no doubt that the entire country will move this time. Werner said while looking at me. Hey? Me? What now? There's just no way that the country will leave you alone, now that you've contracted with a Fenrir, Makota. As long as they capture you, Fenrir will definitely follow, after all. Eh? Ah Ramon, is that true? I couldn't help my shock, it would be extremely troublesome to have a country stepping into my business. There is no need to worry. If they mean any harm to either of us, all I have to do is fight them. No no no. Th that d be bad. If the great Fenrir fell. If F fell were to get serious, the entire country would disappear. If they mess with us, they deserve to disappear. No no no, F fell, isn't that a little too violent? If they do not want that to happen all they have to do is leave us alone. It is a very simple thing. After Fell made his point, the members of Ironwell could only stare, open-mouthed. More importantly, is it not almost time for food? Fell's words marked the start of lunch. The red boar meat that the members of Ironwell hunted was in trouble. No matter how much they say that it was okay to use, there had to be a limit. Including Fell's portion of boar yesterday, and the meat I served him this morning because he kept going on about eating meat, we'd already gone through quite the amount. Hey, I request meat. Of course you'd want meat for lunch too. The red boar meat isn't mine, so if you want to eat meat that badly, go hunt some yourself. Hmm? Is that so? I will get some meat right away, so wait a while. Having said so, Fell ran off into the forest beside the road. M. Makota, it's okay if you want to use all of the red boar meat. No no, there's no way I can take advantage of you like that. If we let him, Fell really will eat all of the boar that everyone took so much trouble hunting. Also, we can't just coddle him like that. If he plans to travel with me from now on, he should at least take responsibility for the cost of his own food. I mean, I can't hunt, and if he wants to eat meat like this every time, 
I can't very well buy it, can I? If I tried that, I'd go bankrupt right away. Ha ha ha. If he's really a legendary magic beast then he should at least be able to hunt his own food, I thought. You're amazing, Makota, Werner. Amazing. You're amazing, Makota. Rita, you're great, Makota. I really respect you for being able to order around that Fenrir. Vincent, to order around a Fenrir that could destroy a country by itself, you must be a hero. Franca, to think there would be a person that could tell a Fenrir what to do. Ramon, eh, even if you say that. It might feel amazing if you say that Fenrirs are legendary magic beasts, but this guy, Fel, was lured into a contract by food. To be lured in by food, honestly, that's something I can only think an idiot would do. It's scary though, so I wouldn't tell Fel that. While I was thinking that, Fel came back with a huge bird in his mouth. I it's a rock bird, the members of Iron will stared at Fel with the bird in his mouth with blank faces. By rock bird, do you mean the bird that Fel hunted? Yeah, it's a B-rank monster. It's about strong enough that even if we fought it with all our strength, we might not win. Oi, you hunted something that dangerous? I have caught something. Quickly, make me something to eat. No, I mean, even if you tell me to make food, if you just plop a huge bird down in front of me. I didn't know how to butcher animals. There was no choice but to ask for help here. Fell, you know I don't know how to butcher this? I have no choice but to ask these people for help, but is it okay to pay them with the non-meat materials from this rock bird? As long as I am able to eat meat I have no problems with this. Now that that's settled, can I ask you guys to dismantle this? Just like that, I asked them, but the members of Iron will all shook their heads saying, no no no. It's too much to take all the materials just for dismantling a rock bird. Even if you tell me that, I thought, I really just don't want to pay this guy's food bill out of my own pocket. No no, thanks to Fell what's left of the red boar meat has decreased drastically, and Fell himself is okay with it so please take it. They kept saying, it's too much right until the end, but I somehow managed to convince them. It's something fell hunted so it's free, after all. Also, it seemed like there would be trouble entering Venon like this, so collecting favors now should help me out in the long run. With that settled, the rock bird was cleanly dismantled by Iron Will. So, thinking that for a bird this would be just right, I used the teriyaki sauce that I bought with my skill and decided to make rock bird teriyaki. First, cook both sides of the rock bird well. Normally, it would be better. To use kitchen paper to wipe up the extra fat, but this was a different world, and we were camping, so I just dumped it over to the side. Now, add the teriyaki sauce. When the sauce starts to simmer, mix it well with the rock bird meat, and there, the teriyaki rock bird is finished. For today, I'd decided to make the freeze-dried onion soup. This one had a lot more stuff in it, too. Also, just having instant consomme soup all the time would be boring. I served the finished meal to the members of Iron Will first. Hey, where is my share? You eat a lot, Fell, so I'm serving everyone else first. I'll make it right away, so wait a bit. Mm, I see. From there, I cooked my heart out making teriyaki rock bird. Fell seemed to really take to the teriyaki rock bird, so the entire bird outside of our portion ended up being eaten by him. The rock bird teriyaki was good, and I quite liked it, but next time I'd like to eat it in a calmer environment and really savor it. We'd come far enough to say that Venon was right in front of our eyes. From here we could see the fort on the country's border. The soldiers inside seemed to be coming out in force. Heh <laughs> it really did come down to this, hey? Huh? I looked over at Fell, who was following behind us slowly, and sighed. It seems like there's a lot of soldiers coming out, doesn't it? Fell is with us, after all. I'll go on ahead and explain the situation. Having said that, Werner ran towards the fort ahead of us. Sorry for the trouble, I apologized in my heart. Reaching the fortress, we found Werner and the border guard soldiers lined up waiting for us. I am Edgar Wolgard, captain of the Kingdom of Venon's 4th Night Brigade. I've heard the situation from Werner, here. Is it true that you have formed a contract with that Fenrir, there? The guard captain that seemed to have the highest title there, he even had a last name, so he might have been a noble, asked me with such a tense air about him that I thought I could see it. This is because Fell's here, isn't it? I thought, the other guards still have their weapons in hand so they can react to anything, too. I guess even a rotten legendary beast is still legendary, or something, I'm used. Yes, I formed a contract with this Fenrir. When I said that, the guards all let out an, ugh. I see. But still, it's a Fenrir, a beast that's been said to have destroyed a country. Will it really not harm this country or its citizens? For a person entrusted with guarding the border, I guess that concern would have been pretty appropriate. Hey, Fell. These people here are really worried about letting you, whose strength is legendary, into the country. 
they'll be in trouble if you go wild in their country, after all. You definitely won't do anything like that, right? N.H., do not lump me in with those dumb as a rock monsters. As long as they do not lay a hand on you, who is my master, or I, I will do nothing of the sort. There you have it, Captain. He was making a face, shocked at the exchange between Fell and I. You really did contract with the legendary magic beast. Even though it's right in front of my eyes, I still don't really believe it, that's right, Captain, I complained in my heart. I was forced to enter a contract with him while I still wasn't really sure what was going on. From your conversation just now, it seems like the story of your contract is true. If that is the case, I'll allow you in. However, make sure you hold the reins on your Fenrir tightly, please. Yes, I understand. Hey, Fel, I'm begging you here, so please behave, okay? I understand already. Just as I have said earlier, as long as they do not lay a hand on us, there will be no trouble from my end. I'm really, Riaoli, begging you here. If something happens, it'll be my fault. You are being awfully persistent. Well, I just wanted to Riaoli I'll make sure you get it. Oh, if you end up doing something that causes trouble for everyone, I can just take away meals. Gah. I've somehow made it through the border, so I really needed to make sure he got it. If something were to happen, I'd be the one in trouble, after all. I see. If you've tamed that Fenrir to this degree, it seems like the worst won't come to happen. The captain said, looking slightly relieved. Captain, I'm pretty sure that worst will never happen. We were there when Makota formed his contract with Fel, and we also traveled together the rest of the way here. In all that time, Fel hasn't flown off the handle once. It's just as our leader says. Fel went and hunted monsters at Makota's instruction, too. I was super surprised. Rita, I was surprised, too. When I told him to go and get his own meat, I had meant that he should take responsibility for the cost of his own food, so I sent him hunting. I didn't have him hunt for my own profit, so please don't get that wrong, okay? Who, so you've really got a firm control over him? Wait a minute, Captain, what do you mean by, who? You know you look like you're planning something bad by putting your hand to your chin like that? Please stop, I don't want any trouble. Well after this and that, we somehow managed to get permission to cross the border and so had made it safely into the kingdom of Venon. By the way, since I didn't have a guild card, I was made to pay a tax of five silver coins. There was also a tax to let Fell in too, so that added an extra two silver coins onto the fee. The fact that Fell cost money too kinda hurt me in my wallet. I need to hurry up and get into the merchant's guild. Entering the kingdom of Venon, our first destination was the border town, Falliers. I'm so relieved I managed to get in. Thanks, everyone. In the first place, it would have been impossible to travel alone in this world full of monsters, so I was really thankful to everyone from Iron Will. And with Fel's situation, I wouldn't have been able to get into the country without their help, either. Not at all, we were all able to experience something good, too. We even got to see the legendary beast, Fenrir, and even talk to him too. As our leader says, I'll be bragging to everyone about this. I'll be bragging about this too, same as Vincent. Like, hey, I got to meet a Fenrir from those fairy tales, you know. Phew phew phew, Rita, you're such a child. But it's true, this is something one would want to brag about. To see a Fenrir in our lifetimes, this might just dry up all our luck as adventurers. I guess Fel's existence was just that impactful to everyone else. But, Makota's life is probably gonna get real busy from here on out. Werner, what do you mean by, busy? Because there's no way they haven't already told the Margrave that rules this area and probably even the king that a Fenrir and its master have been let into the country. GHH, that would happen, wouldn't it? Not to mention that Captain, he was obviously plotting ways to get you to serve the country after seeing the relationship between you and Fel. The Captain. He really was up to no good. Even if you tell me that, I don't plan on staying in this country forever anyway, so when that time comes, I'll just have to think about it while consulting with Fel. Ha ha ha, that's right. As long as this great Fell is with you, they won't be able to do anything reckless. I was relying solely on Fell, but there was no way around it. Even I'd like to go around and see the world, since I'd already been summoned here anyways. I'd started to feel like it would be nice to use this trip to travel the world while I profited with my online supermarket. Traveling in another world seemed like it'd be full of adventure, after all. By not staying in this country, you mean you plan to travel? I nodded at Werner's question. I've started feeling like I should go see the world, you know. I see. If that's the case, you should register at the Adventurer's Guild, Makota. Eh? The Adventurer's Guild? I thought, I don't want to become an adventurer, though. The Adventurer's Guild, you say? Personally, I plan to join the Merchant's Guild. I can cook, 
so I was planning to travel and set up stalls at towns I stop at to earn money, or sell commodities wholesale because I have some connections. Is that so? But still, Werner looked at Fell while making a thoughtful face. Makota, you're planning on having Fell hunt for his own food from now on, aren't you? I nodded of course that was the case. If so, how are you planning on butchering what he hunts? Ah, that's right. Also, taking the rockbird into consideration, what Fell hunts will probably all be high-ranking monsters. If so, then having the Adventurer's Guild buy off their other usable parts would be perfect, you see. Certainly. If they'll buy that stuff then having them do it would only help my travels from now on. But being an adventurer, hmm. You look like you're really having trouble with this, Makota, but why not just register at both? That was said by Vincent, who was eavesdropping on the conversation between Werner and I. I could do that, but would that be okay? Well, there's not a lot of them, but there are people that are registered to both guilds. Eh, uh, is that so? If that's the case I'll go for both, then. Thus, I decided to register at both guilds. We reached the goal of our journey, the border town failures. It seemed that they were already informed of our presence from when we passed through the border fort, because when we arrived, Fell was let in without too much trouble. It wasn't as much as when entering the country, but to get into the city I had to pay taxes again, two silver for me and one for Fell, and it hurt me a little to do so. Passing through the gate, I found an envoy from Margrave Lindell waiting for me, just like Werner had said there would be. Sir Makota, am I correct? I am a servant of Margrave Lindell, Edmund. It is a pleasure to meet you. To tell you the truth, Margrave Lindell would love to meet you, Sir Makota, and has sent me to invite you. I see, it's finally here, a forceful invitation event. However, I didn't want to meet him. I didn't plan to stay in this country for long, after all. Let's refuse him politely, here, I decided. No no, a mere traveler such as I would never dream of a meeting with Margrave Lindell. Oh no, Margrave Lindell insists. No no, I should say. No no no. It is I who should say, please, come with me while Edmund and I were attempting to push each other around with words, Fell came over. Hey, you. Do you not understand that mine master is refusing to meet yours? S so this is the great F. Fenrir. Sir F. Fenrir, please come along as well. Edmund managed to say that through a face strained with fright at Fell's sudden appearance. Humph, how crafty you think you must be. I do not wish to meet the Margrave, either. He is simply after mine power, no? There were such foolish humans in the past, as well. And no no no, th there's no way. Do not lie to me. Would you like to find out what happened to those foolish humans who thought to use mind power? Hmm. Hi hi, Edmund finally cracked when Fell bared his teeth, and ran away, screaming. Fell, that was too much. Those kinds of idiots do not learn unless if you do it like this. Yes yes, is that so? Is it okay to treat Margrave Lindell's envoy like that? Nobles are very protective of their reputation so he might try something. Werner's worry was entirely warranted. I didn't think Fell would go that far, either. There is no need to worry. If they try something all we have to do is face it head on. Wow, well I'll be counting on you Fell ol buddy. Well, Fell will be with you, so it'll probably be fine. When Werner said that, the other members of Iron will nodded in agreement. I don't think a noble's private soldiers would ever be able to stand up to Fell. Franca, what Franca says is right. I think so, too. Rita, actually, the only thing that could rival Fell would be something like an ancient dragon, no. Vincent, you can say that again. Ramon. The fantasy mainstay, dragons. So they really do exist. I don't want to see one at all, though. Mm, an ancient dragon. Truly, that one is probably the only one who can fight evenly with me. Eh? Fell, have you fought an ancient dragon before? Vincent latched onto that statement, excited. Around 400 years ago. Yes. That time was a draw, but I will not lose the next. Whoa, whoa, awesome. A battle between legendary beasts, I would have wanted to see that. Same here, Vincent and Rita seemed to be fired up, and Franca and Ramon were showing wry smiles while watching them. Hey, hey, calm down everyone. We're going to report this to the Adventurer's Guild as soon as we get Makota's signature that the quest is completed, got it. I signed the quest complete report when Werner asked. When I tried to return the red boar meat, I was refused. They said that it couldn't pay for the rockbird meat they'd eaten, but I should have it anyways. I really have been treated well by you guys, especially after taking all the red boar meat. Thank you all very much. I would never have made it this far without the members of Iron Will. Not at all, we got to have a good time too. We even got great food out of it, so overall it's been a good quest, no doubt. I was gratified that they said that. Really, thank you all very much. 
Well then, farewell. You too, Makoto. The members of Iron Will left, hands waving. Okay, so I've accomplished my current goal, but what should I do from now on? I started pondering my current situation. I don't plan to stay in this country long, but for now I should register to the guilds here, I guess. I should register for the Adventurer's Guild as well, as Werner suggested, but right now I want to go to the Merchant's Guild, my original plan, first. Hey, Fell. We're going to the Merchant's Guild. M.M. Are you going to become a merchant? At the very least, I hope to do so. But I also plan to register at the Adventurer's Guild. I want you to hunt your own meat from now on, but I can't butcher the monsters myself. Also, we could use the funds from me. Selling the other materials from the monsters you hunt to the guild. It's okay, right? If I sell the other parts. Those are not things I need, so I do not mind. More than that, I want to eat tasty meals. Yeah yeah, I get it. Man. I couldn't help but think, this guy, rather than a legendary beast, he's just a gluttonous snack hound. Fell and I arrived at the merchant's guild. When I entered with Fell in tow, everyone was surprised and it caused a minor ruckus but everything calmed down after I desperately explained that he was my familiar. Currently, I was listening to an explanation of the guild at the receptionist's counter. The person taking care of me was Michaela, a blonde-haired, blue-eyed bombshell. Michaela's explanation was as follows. The Merchant's Guild is an organization that supersedes countries. There are five ranks within the Merchant's Guild, iron rank traveling peddlers or stall owners, those that do business without a brick-and-mortar store, bronze rank privately owned stores, small, privately owned stores such as a town's butcher or green grocer, Silver rank small scale firm, a modestly sized firm in a single city, gold rank mid scale firm, a comparatively larger firm with several branch stores, mithril rank large scale firm, a large firm with many branches. Registration fees, annual fees, and taxes depend on your rank. Iron rank registration fee of 5 silver annual fee of 1 gold taxes of 2 gold bronze rank registration fee of 1 gold annual fee of 2 gold taxes of 4 gold silver rank registration fee of 2 gold annual fee of 5 gold taxes of 10 gold gold rank registration fee of 4 gold annual fees and taxes depend on how many branches exist. Mithril rank registration fee of 8 gold annual fees and taxes depend on how many branches exist. Annual fees and taxes must be paid within one year of acceptance into the guild. Starting from the day you register. Your rank and qualifications are re-evaluated and renewed every year. Your membership will not renew if you have not paid your annual fees and taxes. The taxes you owe are paid to the country, the Merchants Guild takes responsibility for the delivery of this payment. In the case that you lose your guild card, the reissue fee depends on your rank. If you participate in illegal business practices, the Merchants Guild is allowed to expel you. It is possible to start from iron rank and gradually work your way up. Please consult the guild if you are troubled by anything, including cases of, setting up a store needing investment funds, or acquiring inventory. As expected of the Merchants Guild, I thought. Everything I want to know is explained to me kindly and carefully. So, Makota, sir, what kind of business are you planning on opening? About that, since Fell's around and I want to go around seeing the world myself, I don't want to be stuck with a brick and mortar store for right now. If that's the case, I guess Iron Rank would work well, I reasoned to myself. I have a familiar, and for the moment I have no plans to open a store so I think Iron Rank would be a good fit. Would you register me as such, please? Thank you. Your registration fee will be 5 silver, would it be alright to continue the registration process as is? My wallet was feeling a little empty at the moment, but if it was only 5 silver I could pay it, so I went ahead with the registration process. Now then, this will be your Iron Rank guild card, sir. As I explained earlier, in the case that you lose it reissuing a guild card will cost its own fee. For an Iron Rank, that cost will be 8 silver, so please be careful about not losing it. Eight silver, hey? That's quite a lot. I'll have to be careful not to lose it. Oh, there was something else I wanted to ask, as well. UMM, excuse me, but does this guild buy goods wholesale? To tell you the truth I've come across some things during my travels. Wholesale. It depends on the good, but yes, we do buy. It depends, hey? As expected of a merchant's guild, they have a discerning eye. I was thinking of having them buy some salt and pepper off of me. Those probably wouldn't cause a problem. Okay then, I will bring the goods I would like to sell to the guild tomorrow. We will be waiting. Thank you for registering with our guild today. As I left the merchant's guild that treated me politely and warmly behind, I realized that I had forgotten to ask about an inn where I could stay with a familiar. I hurried back to ask Michaela about it, and she recommended a place named Jumping Horse Inn. She gave detailed directions, so I headed there immediately with Fell. It was just as Michaela had told us, Fell was able to stay in the Jumping Horse Inn as well. However, 
a room with accommodation for a familiar cost seven silver a night. I was slowly growing more and more destitute. Fell had been led to a separate building behind the inn, so I headed over there. Hey, I held it in during lunch, but I have been hungry for a while now, you know. Now that he mentions it, we didn't have lunch, did we? Fell didn't raise a fuss about it, either. He might have been trying to be considerate, which is kind of unlike him. Sorry, sorry. Let's have an early dinner, then. We were right in front of the shed for animals, but no one was around but Fell and I, so I could go ahead and cook there. I might as well eat too, while I was at it. I still had some of the red boar meat that I got from Iron Will, so today was going to be red boar steak. I should cut Fell's portion extra thick, too, I thought. Also, for my portion, it's been long enough that I want to eat that, I considered. And by that, I meant rice. The one thing a Japanese person needs is rice, after all. But at the moment all I had was one miniature stove. Cooking rice takes time, too. I considered, hmm, what should I do? Tomorrow I was going to sell salt and pepper to the merchant's guild, so I needed to buy some of that. But that should also earn me some money, I considered, and it's not like having one will cause me any trouble, so let's get one of those. My wallet's getting lonelier and lonelier, but I really do want to eat rice. With that decided, I used the online supermarket to buy rice, an earthenware pot, another portable stove as well as 5 kilos each of the salt and pepper I was going to sell tomorrow. The rice I bought was Kashi Hikari rice, which I often used to eat at home. I'm not sure how much the salt and pepper will be worth, so for now I settled on only 5 kilograms. In total, it cost me around 8 silver. I could feel the lightness of my wallet on my soul, but I was looking forward to making some profit tomorrow. Now, let's start cooking. First, wash the rice and let it soak in water for around half an hour. While that's happening, let's get moving on Fell's steak. Seasoning the red boar meat with salt and pepper, I cooked both sides on a pan. It was a bit rare, but it should be fine. The steak was finished once I put it on a plate and added some steak sauce to it. Here, Fell. When I handed it over, Fell ate one immediately with two chomps and a lick of his chops. I cut that steak pretty thick, though. This is tasty. Give me more. So I grilled even more red boar steak for Fell. I'll use this sauce for Fell's next steak. Here. Chomp chomp mm. It tastes different from the last one. However, this one is delicious as well. Hee <laughs> hee, so he noticed. There are a lot of different types of steak sauce, so I prepared several of them. The first one was garlic flavored, and the next was grated radish. Having these sauces was pretty handy. They were good to fry vegetables with, and the garlic one could even be used to make garlic rice. In addition to the steak sauce, teriyaki and yakiniku sauce could also be used for a variety of purposes so I used to have them stocked in my house. I got these sauces when I was buying food in preparation for my trip over the border. I kept grilling steaks to appease Fell's appetite. Next, I used onion flavor, and butter flavor after that. Whoops, the rice should be finishing soon, I noticed. Let's put the clay pot on the stove. I got the pot up to a boil by setting it to a little stronger than medium heat for 10 minutes, before letting it sit at low heat for 5 minutes, and, finally, letting the rice steam for another 20 minutes with the fire off. I ended up making about 450 grams of rice but I could just throw the leftovers into my item box and it would stay just as fresh as when it was made. Because my item box is the same one that summoned heroes have, its storage space was basically infinite, and it also stopped time for items within it. It was the only thing that made me grateful for their method of summoning heroes to deal with their problems. Meanwhile, I continued to cook steaks for Fell while this was happening. Make the next one the same flavor as the first, if you would. Garlic flavor? Okay, here you go. So this is called garlic flavor then? It truly is delicious. So you like this flavor? Quite. They are all tasty, but this is my favorite. Ho ho, I see I see, as for me, I think onion flavor would be my favorite, I thought. With that said, the rice should be just about ready, so let's do that. First, pile the freshly made rice into a bowl. Cut the red boar steak into large bit-sized chunks, and place it on top of the rice. Over that, pour some onion flavored steak sauce, and it's done. A red boar steak bowl. All right, let's try some. D delicious mmg mmg this is great, wow. The red boar steak is good, but so is the rice soaked in steak sauce. We Japanese really do need rice. Rice the best. Hmm, that looks tasty. Give me some of that, too. Eh, uh, Fell wants some too? If I don't give him any here it looks like he'll make a big deal out of it. There's no other choice. Wait though, if I do that, the rest of the rice will go straight into Fell's belly. Ah, man. When I made Fell his own steak bowl, garlic flavored, he started to chomp it down promptly. Mm, this is good. 
I had thought that grains were not something edible, but this is pretty good. Right? Rice really is the best. I don't exactly hate bread, I thought, but it just doesn't stir up the same appetite that rice does. Being able to eat rice like this even though I'm in another world is all thanks to my online supermarket, I thought thankfully. At first I was like, what the hell is this? But the online supermarket is just incredibly convenient. Sigh that was delicious. I'm full, such satisfaction. As I basked in the satisfaction, Fell started grooming himself, so he must have been satisfied too. Ah, I noticed with a start, it's a bit too late for this, but wasn't it bad to feed cats and dogs anything with too strong a flavor? Also, aren't onions no good for dogs? Fell was wolfing it down like there was no tomorrow, so I guess it was okay. In the first place, Fell is a magic beast from a different world. He seemed to be perfectly fine, so I guess there was nothing wrong and I didn't need to worry. All right, well, I have to get ready for tomorrow, so I'm gonna go back to my room. Understood. After I got back to my room, I started preparing the salt and pepper I would sell to the merchant's guild tomorrow. The salt I bought came in a paper bag, and the pepper in vinyl packs, five packs of 20 grams each, so there was no way I could just bring them into the guild as they were. I guess I'll need to move them, I decided. I can put the salt in this jute bag I bought at the general store where I also got my wooden utensils, I thought. As for the pepper, I think this wooden vessel with a lid is good enough. Right, my preparations are complete, I thought with satisfaction. I'm a little tired from all this, so I guess I'll go to sleep early. While wishing for the sale to go well tomorrow, I fell asleep on a bed for the first time in a long while. The next morning I was pressed to cook a large amount of steaks because Fell said that he wanted the same thing as yesterday. Yep, he's a carnivore. The rate at which we went through meat was amazing. I still had some red boar meat left, so everything was okay for now, but he did eat the rest of it for breakfast. I was going to need to get Fell to go hunting soon if this kept up. And if that was the case, I'd have to go register at the Adventurer's Guild. I guess I'll go after I go sell this salt and pepper at the Merchant's Guild, I decided, resigned. Today's gonna be busy as well. By the way, my breakfast ended up being a simple ham and cheese sandwich and some onion soup. Yeah, there's no way I could eat steak first thing in the morning. After that, I headed over to the Merchant's Guild just as planned. I took Fell along with me, because we were going to visit the Adventurer's Guild right afterward, too. Michaela, who took care of me yesterday, was here today too. Good morning, Michaela. Good morning, Makota, sir. I've come to sell what I talked about yesterday. This is what I was talking about, having said that, I took out the jute bag full of salt and the jar with the pepper in it from my item box. I will take a look. This is, excuse me for a little bit. Michaela took one look at the pepper and stood up. Hey? Maybe bringing pepper really was a bad move? They say that back in ancient times pepper was worth its weight in gold, so maybe 100 grams was a bit much. After a little while, Michaela returned, wanting to lead me to a room in the back. I told Fell to wait before following her. In the room, a man in his 50s with a good physique was already waiting for us. Please, take a seat. I am Robert, the guildmaster of this branch. Please to make your acquaintance. Oh man, so the guildmaster makes his appearance? Yeah, I shouldn't have brought out the pepper. After he told another employee to leave the salt and pepper on his way out, the guildmaster started inspecting it with an, I'll take a look. Just as I would expect out of a person who made it all the way to the rank of guildmaster, he started confirming the smell and taste with a sharp look on his face. I've been in business a long time, but this is the first I've seen salt and pepper of this high quality. Salt with so little impurity that it is pure white and has no bitter or unpleasant taste in the mouth, and pepper with such vivid smell and taste. I can only say that it's wonderful. Is that so? But when buying this from the online supermarket the salt was only 5 copper for 5 kilos, and the pepper was the same for 100 grams, I thought to myself. By all means I would like to buy this off of you, but where in the world did you get it? From my online supermarket. It's salt and pepper produced from another world, so I can guarantee its quality. As if I could say that. While I was traveling, you see. When I started trying to avoid the question, the guildmaster said, that was a boorish question. A merchant shouldn't reveal their sources so easily, I guess. He said while laughing. Well then, about the price how does 4 gold for the salt and 10 gold for the pepper sound? What? Th that's a joke, right? I started panicking, it was only 1 silver to buy both of them, but the salt is worth 4 gold? And the pepper 10? Eh, eh, umm, I knew that salt and pepper were expensive in this world, but is it really that much? As I thought, that's too low, hey. Then how about 15 gold for the both of them? Whoa, he's just raising the price on his own. Does he think I'm hesitating because I've been quiet? No, I'm just surprised is all. In my confusion, 
I couldn't stop my thoughts from racing. K.H. Fine then, seventeen gold for both of them. I can't go any higher than that. I didn't know what kind of misunderstanding the guildmaster was operating under, but he raised the price even further. Why yet? Th that's fine. S 17 gold in one go. The cost was only one silver, and I got 17 gold. I thought, amazed. I'm profiting hand over fist here, I realized. I'm the one that's asking them to buy it, so it's not gonna work every time, though. If I start constantly bringing in salt and pepper like this, they really will start to wonder how I got it. I should probably limit this to once per guild branch, I decided. Even so, I was thankful to have obtained a way to get money in a pinch. Accepting the 17 gold, I decided to pay the year's annual fee and tax right now. It's better to pay this type of fee when you can, I thought to myself. It'll be awful if I let the deadline approach and all of a sudden I don't have the money for it, after all. I have certainly received the annual fee of 1 gold and tax of 2 gold for an iron rank. Will you, with this I'm good for 1 year. I put the 14 gold I still had left over after paying the annual fee and tax into my wallet. Added to what was already in my wallet. I now had 19 gold, 5 silver, and several iron and copper coins each. It seemed like I'd be okay for now. Well, I have an idea for if I find I don't have enough, I thought. It'd be easier for other stores to trust me when selling if I were to have a merchant's guild card. And I had my online supermarket, so I had a wide variety of things I could sell. I was glad that I decided to join the merchant's guild. Alright, next I guess I'll go register at the adventurer's guild. With my wallet comfortably thicker after selling that salt and pepper, I left the merchant's guild. I arrived at the Adventurer's Guild. Just like the Merchant's Guild, the guild building was quite large compared to the rest of the town. As expected, it was full of grim-looking people holding weapons. I'd say it's about four physical fighters to every one magic user. I thought, looking at the people inside. At any rate, I was amazed at how they could do such a dangerous job. Well, I was about to register for said job as well. I didn't plan to get into fights like an adventurer at all though, not one bit. I was thinking about this and that to take my mind off of things but the stairs ever since I lined up were really something. This was probably that, an adventurer? You? Don't make me laugh, cliché, but they probably couldn't try anything with Fell right next to me. I wasn't sure if they knew that Fell was a Fenrir, but it seemed that they instinctively understood that laying a hand on Fell would be dangerous. I was so glad Fell was there. I'd get messed with all day if it wasn't for him. I want to hurry up and run away from this place already. Ha <laughs> ha, won't this line hurry up? After a while, it was finally my turn. I'd like to register. Then please, fill out this form here. It's fine to leave spaces blank if you can't answer them. The receptionist at the Adventurer's Guild was beautiful, but also felt cold and blunt. Yeah, the Merchant's Guild was politer, I thought. I'm not sure if it was thanks to the hero summoning too, but I could write this language just fine, so I filled out what I could. I only ended up filling out the essentials, name, weapon, I didn't plan on using it much, but I should probably have one anyway just in case, so I wrote down short sword and the fact that I had a familiar. The registration fee will be 5 silver. Okay then, please drip some of your blood onto this card. After paying the fee of 5 silver, I was given a copper brown card and a needle. I did as I was told, and pricked the tip of my finger to drip some blood onto the card. Your registration is complete. You will start at the bottom, G rank. The quests that you can take are only G or F rank, so please understand that. Hey? Is that all the explanation I'm getting for the Adventurer's Guild? Is there something else? Isn't there more to explain? The receptionist made a clearly annoyed face that felt like she was saying, What? You're actually gonna ask that? I'll ask. I'll ask the hell out of it. In these cases, if one doesn't properly ask about it first, it'll come back to haunt them. With no other choice, the receptionist started talking. Man, the receptionist at this adventurer's guild has a bad attitude. The difference between her and the receptionist at the merchant's guild is like heaven and earth, I complained in my head. Michaela explained things kindly and carefully with a smile from beginning to end, you know? The Adventurer's Guild explanation, full of unwillingness, went like this. The Adventurer's Guild is an organization that supersedes countries. Adventurer ranks are as shown below, ranging from G to S. Low, GFEDCBAS, high, the only requests an adventurer is allowed to take are requests of their rank, or one rank higher. If an adventurer fails their quest, there will be a monetary penalty for breach of contract. Depending on the adventurer's rank, they will be forced to take a certain number of quests within a certain time frame, otherwise, their registration will be made null. If the adventurer wants to re-register, then he or she will have to start from scratch as a G rank. G1 quest a month F, E1 quest every 3 months D, C, B1 quest every 6 months A, 
S1 quest a year murder or thievery will get one forcefully expunged from the guild. There will be no personal fights between adventurers. The Adventurers Guild assumes absolutely no responsibility for the actions of its adventurers. The Adventurers Guild assumes absolutely no responsibility in the event of an adventurer's death or injury. Or so I was told. Basically, an adventurer was responsible for themselves. I had no intention of raising my rank at all, though. I was a brand spanking fresh newbie so I was a G-rank. So a G-rank needs to do a request a month or their registry gets nullified, hey. If that happens, then the registration fee I paid goes up in smoke. Thinking like that, it would be better to do a request while I'm here, shouldn't I? I need to get fell to hunt some more, anyway. Getting away from the receptionist with a bad attitude for now, I headed over to take a peek at the quest board. Even if they said that I could take requests one rank higher, I was still a newbie who just registered, so I felt like I really should take a request of my own rank, GG rank, G rank. Oh, this one and this one both look good. It's cliched, but they're both requests to harvest medicinal herbs. Cure grass x5, 1 silver each merge grass x5, 1 silver and 3 copper each. For now, these two are the only contenders, but the reward for merge grass is higher, so I wonder if that means it's harder to find? Just as the trope dictated, it seemed that in order to take the request I had, to physically take the notice off the board and bring it to the receptionist, but also it looked like once someone took a request off the board, they had to accept it. If that's the case, I'll go for the cure grass. I took the notice for the cure grass and headed over to the counter. By the way, I made sure to go to a different section and different receptionist than the one that gave me the explanation earlier. Her attitude was several notches better, but there was still a huge difference between here and the merchant's guild. I immediately left the guild after asking where the cure grass could be found. I was relieved that I got through that without being messed with thanks to Fell's presence. Cure grass could be found on a grassy plain right outside the east gate. It was right outside the gate, so there wasn't much danger, but I felt I should still go ahead and get that short sword. I wrote down that I used a short sword when I registered at the Adventurer's Guild anyway, I thought, so let's go buy one before I look for the cure grass. Fell, I'm gonna stop by the weapon shop for a bit. Humph, even if you do not ready a weapon, I am here, so it will be fine. What about when you're out hunting? I'm by myself, so it's just too careless to not have a weapon at all. There will be no problems if I just erect a barrier. What? Be barrier? You were you able to use magic like that? Of course I can. Of course I can, he says, but this is the first time I'm hearing of it though. Actually, I just noticed this, but I'd never appraised Fell before. It was a bit late but I decided to do so now. Name Fell H1014 Race Fenrir Level 906 HP 9843 MP 9481 Attack 9036 Defense 9765 Agility 9684 Skills Wind Magic, Fire Magic, Water Magic, Earth Magic, Ice Magic, Lightning Magic, Holy Magic, Barrier Magic, Rending Claws, Body Reinforcement, Physical Attack Resistance, Magic Attack Resistance, MP Efficiency, Appraisal Blessings Blessing of the Goddess of the Wind, Ninrir. It was so incredible, I was left speechless for a moment. Whether it's level or HP or MP or whatever, isn't he close to max stats? And his age is 1014, I guess he wasn't lying when he said he had lived over a thousand years. Does that mean he raised his level and stats to near max over 1000 years? He's normally just a gluttonous snack hound, but I guess Fell is unexpectedly amazing. Fell, I just now took a look at your status, but you're an amazing guy, aren't you? Why are you stating the obvious? Ah, uh, right, right. Is that so? Then. I'm counting on you to put up a barrier after we leave the gate, man. Well, I'll still be getting a short sword as insurance, though. There were several weapon stores near the Adventurer's Guild, so I eventually picked one and headed in. When I asked the owner for a sword easy enough for a beginner to use, he gave me a short sword for 8 silver. Okay then, let's go pick some herbs. The request I had taken required me to leave the town, so I showed my Adventurer's Guild card at the East Gate and was let outside. Leaving the East Gate and walking steadily with Fell, we reached an incredibly spacious grassy plain in about 20 minutes. This was probably where the herbs grew. Now then, I'll be picking herbs here, so you go hunt some meat, Fell. Understood. I will be troubled if something happens to you, so I will take the liberty of putting up a barrier. Ah, uh -huh, that's right, Fell could use barrier magic. Right, it is finished. With this barrier you shall be fine even if you see a monster, as long as it is below a certain level. I thank thee, I thank thee, clap clap. Now then, I shall take my leave. Make sure you prepare lunch. Having said that, Fell gallantly dashed off into the forest. I was starting to respect him a little, but I see his gluttony is still in full effect. Okay then, I guess I'll start looking for the herbs, 
I thought to myself. Although all I really do is just appraise everything I see. Appraisal, 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 appraisal. It was all weeds. Appraisal, appraisal, appraisal. Cure grass. Ah, there it is. This cure grass looks a bit like thistle, doesn't it? I used a knife to cut off the cure grass from its roots. The knife that I had bought a while back finally saw some use. I started again, appraisal, 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 appraisal. Yeah, it really is all weeds, I thought. Appraisal, appraisal, appraisal. Cure grass. Hoop, found another one. Now I just need another three, and the request should be over, I thought happily. Right then, let's keep going. Appraisal, 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 appraisal. Merge grass. Ah, this is for that other request. Looking at merge grass reminded me of poverty. It looks like, what was it called, um? Oh that's right, the common fleabane. Let's take this too, just in case. After that, I continued to use appraisal, and ended up with 18 cure grass and 7 merge grass. Okay, it's about time for Fell to come back, too, I thought as I decided to stop for the moment. I started preparing Fell's meal. That being said, we currently did not have any meat, and if I tried to use my skill to buy meat, I would have no idea how much that would cost, so for now I was just making something cheap. Thus, I'd decided on that for lunch. First, I needed to buy more ingredients from the online supermarket. I already had onions and bouillon cubes from before, so I got 1 kilo of mixed ground beef and pork. 5 bags of pasta at 700 grams each, and 10 cans of meat sauce. All of it cost 4 silver and 5 copper, but I had all that money from selling that salt and pepper to the merchant's guild, so it was fine for now. I bought the kind of pasta that cooks in 5 minutes, I thought, but it's fell we're talking about here, he'll still probably be pressing me to hurry up. Taking that into consideration, I started boiling the water already so that I could start cooking at any time. In the meantime, the meat sauce. First, Finally mince onions and cook them in a pan until they're transparent, then throw in the ground meat. After giving the meat some time for the heat to pass through it, pour in lots of the canned meat sauce. Like that, there won't be enough moisture, so pour in hot water that you've dissolved a bouillon cube into as necessary while you simmer the mixture. Finally, adjust the taste to preference with salt and pepper, and the meat sauce with extra meat is finished. Fell returned just as I finished with the meat sauce. He dropped his prey right in front of me with a thud. What a good smell. This is, a rock bird. The thing you called teriyaki that you made before was good, so I got another. I hunted more, but I cannot bring them back all at once, so I have put up a barrier near the edge of the forest and left them there. Yet, yeah, one is probably the limit if you have to carry it in your mouth. If that's the case, it'll only take one trip if I come with you and put it all in my item box. Wait a bit. I put away the pot with the boiling water, the frying pan with the meat sauce on it, the portable stove, and everything else I had out into my item box. I put the rockbird in there, too. Right, let's go. It will take too long if you walk. Get on my back. All right then, I won't hold back. I did as Fell said and got on his back. Now then, let us go. W wait a second I clung desperately onto Fell's back as he kept raising his speed. I said why a e e e it. Hey. We have arrived. Ha 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 ha. I thought I was gonna die. Humph, you are a coward to raise a fuss over just that much speed. That much, he says. I swear, anyone would be scared if they were going that fast. Don't you dare go that fast if I'm riding you again. What if I fall off? I do not care. It would probably be your fault. This bastard. Ah I see, that's your response. I guess you don't need food, then. If something happens to me you won't ever get to eat cooking from another world again, after all. Grnmmnn, he growled, mulling it over. Let's hurry up and put away these monsters and then go back. The monsters that fell hunted were piled up at the edge of the forest like a mountain. When I appraised them, there were five orcs, a red boar, a giant dodo, and a black serpent. They say that snake tastes like chicken, so I get that, but are orcs edible? I asked fell, it seemed that they were edible. Apparently, it was pretty normal for people to eat orcs back in town. I is that so? So they eat bipedal pigs. I had the online supermarket so I could cook for myself basically all the time, but that turned out to be the right decision. This other world cuisine is scary. Putting the monsters that fell hunted away in my item box, I rode on Fell's back again back to that grassy plain. This time Fell, seemed to have been a little considerate of me, so the ride ended up being fine, somehow. Now then, let's have lunch. My stomach is empty. Hurry up. Wait a little, I have to cook the pasta. And the pasta would take five minutes to cook. It was a good decision to boil the water early. 
Finally put the pasta on a plate and pile it high with meat sauce with extra meat, and lunch is served. I made sure to mix it extra well for Fell. Fell, it's done. Mn? What's this? It's a dish from my world called spaghetti with meat sauce. It's good. When I said that, Fell started chowing down. Yes, there is not a lot of meat, but it is still pretty good. From his response, he probably intended to eat more. I started to cook the next batch of pasta, while eating my own portion. In the end, I had to make four batches for Fell. I also ate my own portion, so 700 grams x4 makes for 2.8 kilos of pasta. Even so, Fell still said, this is a good amount for a light lunch. He really does eat too much, I couldn't help but think. After he finished, his mouth was sticky with the meat sauce, so I got a good laugh out of it. He hastily washed his face in water he conjured up, though. After lunch, Fell went back to hunting, and I continued to look for herbs. By the end of the day, I had picked up 40 cure grass and 20 merge grass. Five of one of them makes a set for a request, so I harvested them with that in mind. Appraisal really was useful. I not only started recognizing what cure and merge grass looked like, but also got used to appraising things, so I ended up making more progress after lunch than before. Fell also ended up catching a lot of prey. He caught a second red boar, three cockatrices, a giant deer, and a murder grizzly. Just from the name, a murder grizzly sounds really dangerous though. I pretended I didn't see it and put it into my item box. I returned to town on Fell's back. I got stared at by the gate guards because I was riding on him, but they didn't say anything, so I just kept on riding him through the gates. Now then, let's head over to the Adventurer's Guild, I guess. Fell, head over to the Adventurer's Guild, please. Understood. When we entered the Adventurer's Guild, I noticed that there weren't many people inside. Maybe because it's too early? I thought, it'll probably still be a little bit before adventurers return with their finished quests. Let's turn in my quest and turn Fell's prey into money before that happens. Because I picked up some merge grass along the way, I took the corresponding request paper off of the board as well. I lined up at the least busy counter space. There were only two people in front of me, so my turn came pretty quickly. I gave my guild card to the receptionist and when she said, Cure grass collection, is it? I nodded and handed over the cure grass I picked. Eh? You just took the quest this morning and you've already got this much. She was a little surprised at the 40 cure grass I handed over. Eh, ah, uh, yeah, I just happened to find them, guh, was 40 too much? This was all thanks to appraisal, so let's be careful not to attract unwanted attention. So you found a whole group of them. I guess you were just lucky. Saying that, the receptionist reached an understanding on her own. Well, let's leave it at that, I decided. Then I will organize the cure grass into bundles of five. There are eight bundles, so that will be eight silver. Please confirm the amount. Pocketing the eight silver, I said, also, please process this, and handed over the merge grass request form. After she finished processing the form, I told her, I also have some merge grass, so, and handed over five of them. She seemed like she'd say something if I handed over all of the merge grass again. I'll leave the leftover merge grass in my item box and use it when I pick up a request in the next town, I guess. So you also have merge grass. This is one bundle of five merge grass. One bundle comes to one silver and three copper. Please confirm the amount. I'm relieved, so, stuff like this is fine too, I thought. I was worried that there would be problems with accepting a request and fulfilling it immediately, but it seemed to be fine. Appraisal worked its magic here so I made more profit than I thought I would. Right, next is Fell's prey. I also have a red boar, can I sell it here? Eh? A red boar? But, you should still be a G-rank, apparently a red. Boar wasn't something a G-rank could usually hunt. Well, it is a giant boar, after all. It would definitely be impossible for me to hunt one on my own. No no, not me. My familiar killed it. The receptionist looked at Fell and immediately said, Eh, I see. In the case of large monsters such as a red boar, please use the sales counter next to me. Got it yet? This receptionist was pretty okay. I guess here it just depends on which receptionist you get, I thought to myself. I continued pondering as I moved. Well I've already completed a request, so I plan on hurrying up to the next town. I guess I won't be coming back here. Now then I guess I'll head over to the next counter and turn Fell's prey into money. Of course, I'll be keeping all the meat. Excuse me, I'd like to sell something. Sure, then put it right here. I was received by a grim-faced old man that looked like he might be a retired adventurer. Um, there's quite a lot, is it okay to bring them all out here? A lot? Do you have an item box? Yeah, kind of. Okay then, I'll take them out. I started with the five orcs, and then the two red boars. 
WYE it just a bit. Is there still more? Eh? Yeah there is. When I nodded, the old man replied, there's not enough room here. Come with me. Ah, wait a second. I have a familiar, is it okay if he comes too? I called fell over after I got the old man's permission. Fell and I trailed after the old man to a warehouse behind the sales counter. I see, so you're that guy from the rumors. Hey? What rumors? I thought as the old man continued, the fact that some guy came in with a Fenrir has been the talk of the town. Gah, is it really? Well, I did think I would stand out because Fell was around. So this was hunted by your familiar too? Well, yet. Yeah. Then, I'll take out the rest here. I brought out the rest of the monsters. A rock bird, giant dodo, black serpent, three cockatrices, giant deer, and a murder grizzly. This is all of it. The guy stared open-mouthed at the pile, dumbfounded. Hey, is this old man all right? He wasn't moving at all, so I called out to him, you okay? He finally came back to his senses with a jolt. Th this is, wow. Not only the numbers, but even the monsters themselves are amazing. A rock bird and giant dodo, a giant deer is B-rank 2, and the black serpent and murder grizzly are both proper A-rank monsters, you know. Hey? Are they really that powerful? I did think that they were awfully large, at least comparatively. Ah, I thought as I realized I did also think that there were some really dangerous sounding names, so they must have had the rank to match. Either way, Fell did all the work, so I had no idea about how powerful they were. Before that there was something I wanted to know desperately. Uh, um, those monsters, are they all edible? That's right, they're meat. To me, securing meat for Fell's meals came first. Yet. Yeah. All these guys are edible. Not to mention they all make for high quality meat. Who, perfect, I thought. Fell went and hunted them so I figured they should be edible, at least, but it was better for my heart to ask a pro, just in case. If that's the case, can I take all the meat? I'll sell everything else, though, please. Hmm? The meat will fetch a pretty good price, are you sure you don't want to sell that too? Yes. We have a huge eater here, you see. I glanced at Fell as I said that, the old man went, ah, in understanding. With this much to butcher I won't be done right away. I'll hurry as much as I can, so come back tomorrow. Ah, right right, I'll deduct the cost of butchering these from your profits, just so you know. Right right. Oh, wait, tomorrow will be a problem. For now, I'll need to have him butcher at least one of them. Um, excuse me, but could you finish just one of them right now, please? Ha? Huh? Oh, for that familiar's meal, hey? Okay then, wait a bit. Having said that, the old man went and butchered one of the red boars. The old man's butchering skills were brilliant, and it didn't take long for him to have the hide, meat and innards neatly separated. I decided to sell the hide and scrap the innards while I took the meat. Then, here it is. The meat for the single red boar that the old man handed over to me weighed about 200 kilos. With this I'd be able to feed Fell for a while. I put away the red boar meat in the item box and left the warehouse after I said goodbye to the old man. When I passed in front of the receptionist's desk, I was stared at by the adventurers there. I guess it really is too much to take out all those monsters there in front of everyone, I noted. But I had Fell to worry about, so I still wanted to secure as much meat as I could. I won't be staying long in this town anyway, so I'll just endure it. I slipped through the stairs of the adventurers and hurried out of the guild hall with Fell. When we returned to the inn, Fell told me, mine stomach is empty. Well, it was about time, since the sun was beginning to set. But Fell always eats a lot so it's hard on me to make all of it. I thought, there's no other choice, let's start cooking. What should I do for today? It's been all meat recently, so I should put in some vegetables too. When one mentions vegetables and meat and easy to cook, they'd be referring to a vegetable stir-fry. With extra meat for Fell of course. It's Fell, so I could see him P.O.O. pooing the dish if it didn't have much meat in it. Um, for vegetables I should have the cabbage, onions, carrots and bell peppers I bought before. I'd have liked to put in bean sprouts and some sort of mushroom, but I didn't have any on hand, so for today this was enough. I have that for seasoning, so it should be fine. Now then, first cut the red boar meat into appropriately sized chunks. They'll be a bit bigger to fit Fell's standards, though. The vegetables don't have to be that finely chopped, just cut them into appropriately sized chunks. The red boar meat is already seasoned with salt and pepper ahead of time, so I simply sear them lightly on the frying pan. Once they're cooked through to a certain degree, I take them off the heat and let them rest. If only I had some sesame oil here, I'd be able to cook the meat with some of it and bring out even more flavor. I didn't have any on me this time though, so I used salad oil instead. From there, I added the carrots, onions, bell peppers, and cabbage in turn to the frying pan and cooked them through. 
I preferred my bell peppers and cabbage with a bit of crunch to them, so I made sure not to cook them too thoroughly. Once the vegetables were cooked to a certain point, I added the red boar meat back in and lightly simmered the whole thing some more. Now, it's time for that, which I'd been recently hooked on. Sweet and salty Chinese miso, in a tube. This is really tasty too, and recently I'd been using it every time I'd made vegetable stir-fry. Food companies nowadays really know their stuff. Even without creating your own mix of seasonings, just using this would allow a person to enjoy their own sweet and salty Chinese miso-style stir-fried vegetables. That being said, I added the explosively delicious sweet and salty Chinese miso to the vegetables and red boar cooking in the pan. Sear it lightly and let the flavors meld together, and there, it's done. Fell, it's done. Nnn, I would prefer just meat, though. Well, haven't I only been giving you meat up until now? Having some vegetables sometimes is good for you. Certainly, it is said eating leaves every once in a while is good. However, there is no problem if I do not eat any. As of right now, I have not eaten any leaves for several decades. After all, no matter what leaf it is, what is bad is bad. That's nothing to be so proud of. By eating leaves, did he mean something like how cats eat grass sometimes? Well, for now it didn't seem like eating vegetables was bad for him, so it'd be better to eat some. When I placed a large portion of the sweet and salty Chinese miso vegetable and meat stir-fry, extra meat, in front of Fell, he only took a small bite at first. After that he started to chomp it down as voraciously as usual. Yes, yes, that's right. This sweet and salty Chinese miso is delicious. Now then, I should eat too. Yes yes, this is great. Ah, there's no rice. I should have made some rice. Crap, I completely forgot. This is exactly the kind of flavor that goes well with rice. Ah oh man. There was nothing to be done about it, I wiped up the sauce with some white bread and ate that. But really, for this flavor it should have been rice. I keenly felt regret for the fact that I should have stocked up on rice. It seemed that Fell approved of the sweet and salty Chinese miso as well, as he ate three helpings before he was satisfied. Yeah, Fell really does eat a lot. I really want to look forward to how much meat we'll be getting tomorrow, I thought, hoping for the best. The next morning, I visited the Adventurers Guild together with Fell. The grim-looking old man from yesterday was there when we headed straight for the sales counter. Good morning. Hey, I've got it all ready. There's a lot of meat so I've left it in the storehouse. Come with me. Fell and I followed after the old man. The meat was piled up like a mountain in the storehouse. This is all the meat you asked for. Wow, with this much meat, I'll be able to feed Fell for a while, no matter how much of a big eater he is, I thought appreciatively. I quickly put all the meat into my item box. I thought so yesterday too, but your item box is pretty big, isn't it? When the old man said that, I could only answer with a half-hearted, ha ha. The meat is more important, so I'll let it go for today. Plus, this old man already saw it yesterday anyway. I probably won't come back to this Adventurer's Guild branch anyway, so I won't be seeing him again, either. I plan to leave this town either today or tomorrow, after all. Staying in one place for too long would be a big no-no. Now then, next is what you get for selling the rest of it. When all the meat was safely in my item box, the old man brought out a somewhat heavy-looking jute bag and placed it in front of me. Um, as for the breakdown, First are the orcs. For orcs, other than the meat the only other usable part are their testes, so five pairs comes out to two gold and five silver. Next are the red boars. The materials are two hides and four tusks, and that makes two gold and four silver. Next, the cockatrices. The meat is the most valuable part of these, but other than that there's just their feathers. The feathers were a little damaged too, so the feathers from three cockatrices comes out to five silver. Apparently, orc testes were used as ingredients in a type of sexual vitality drug, and in order to make one dose you needed the pair. No matter how much vitality you say that will give me, I'd pass, personally. But still, it seemed that the finished product was pretty reliable and was therefore fairly popular. The red boar's hide could be used for shoes or leather bags or belts, and their tusks were used in handicrafts and art. And cockatrice feathers were used as pillow stuffing. Next is the rock bird. Its beak and feathers come out to seven gold. Next, the giant dodo also has a usable beak and feathers, but that one also had a small magic stone, so adding that in, the total comes to 22 gold. And then there's the giant deer. The materials are its horns and hide. This one also had a magic stone, so adding that in, the price is 28 gold. These are both B-ranked monsters, but having magic stones in both of them is pretty lucky. Apparently the rockbird's beak and feathers went into making arrows. Arrows made from these not only had high penetration ability but were also easier to enchant with wind magic, so it seemed that archers would covet these arrows. As for the giant dodo, a large bird with degenerated wings so it couldn't fly, the beak was a material for magic items, 
you can put various effects on it and then shape it into a pendant or bracelet, or even a ring, and the feathers were used in high-end down beds. And it seemed that the giant deer's horns were popular as materials for magic staves, while the hide served as materials for leather armor for Madrank adventurers, or materials for other high-end leather goods. As for the magic stones found in the giant dodo and giant deer, they are stones filled with magic power, and have various uses depending on the elemental affinity of the magic inside. Magic stones could only be found in monsters ranked B or above, so they were often sold or traded at high prices. Also, not all B-ranked monsters have magic stones. It's said that they're only found in around 30% of B-ranked monsters, and it's only at A rank that you are guaranteed to find a magic stone, although there are size differences. And lastly are the two A ranks. It's been a while since I've last seen one. For the Black Serpent, we can use its venom sack, innards, fangs, eyes, and hide. There was also a pretty decent magic stone inside, so with that added in, the total is 64 gold. Next, the Murder Grizzly's materials are its innards, claws, and fur. And this one had a larger magic stone, so the total is 78 gold. As expected of A-ranked monsters. For the Black Serpent, which is large and ebony-colored, its venom sack seemed to have many uses, I was too scared to ask, and its innards were used to make nourishment pills. After that, its fangs were used in magic tools, the eyes in magic staves, and the hide was materials for leather armor used by high-ranking adventurers. Its magic stone was apparently fairly large and aligned with water. The large, gray murder grizzly's innards were also used for medicine, its claws for magic tools, and its fur made for carpets that were popular among nobles. As for its magic stone, it was pretty big, and was worth the most out of all the magic stones in the lot. The final amount comes to 204 gold and 4 silver. From that is the butchering fee. This time you gave me a lot of high rank monsters, so with a small discount I'll be fine with 2 gold and 4 silver. Taking that away you're left with an even 202 gold. Most people prefer gold coins even if the amount is large so I went ahead and gave you that, but if you prefer platinum or large gold coins I can prepare that instead if you wait a while. And no thanks. Gold coins are fine. From looking around and shopping at various places, I'd found out that in town nobody used large gold or platinum coins. Even if the count was at or above 10 gold coins, they never asked or gave any of those denominations. I think it most likely that while large gold and platinum coins exist as currency, there weren't many of them circulating around. At any rate, to exceed 200 gold coins. I didn't even do anything. For now, I'll take what I can get, though. I guess I'll let Fel eat some other world meat later. Oh, also, I was told to ask you this by an acquaintance, but your familiar is a Fenrir, right? The old man asked me while looking at Fenrir, who was yawning unconcernedly behind me. He is, what of it? If you didn't know, there are people who are saying it's a great wolf instead. Apparently, since the rumor of, a guy with a Fenrir as a familiar came to town was currently circulating around, there were also people saying that there was no way a legendary magic beast like a Fenrir would obey a human. So people have been split half and half between saying it's a Fenrir and it's a great wolf. The great wolf is an A-rank monster, and apparently, it's a wolf with grey fur just around Fel's size. I mean, there's nobody around who's even seen a Fenrir in the first place, you know? But even I was a pretty good adventurer before I took up this job. From where I'm standing, though, looking at its bearing, there's no way I can think it's anything but a Fenrir. The Fenrir theory and the great wolf theory, hey? I can probably use this. Up until now I was thinking that since Fel was around I shouldn't enter the larger towns, but in the case where I needed to enter one no matter what I might be able to just tell people that he was a great wolf. They would probably be surprised anyway because a great wolf was still an A-ranked monster, but it should still be better than a Fenrir. The old man seemed like he already understood, so I ended up taking the money and leaving the storeroom without answering his question. And just like yesterday, I slipped past the stairs of the adventurers and quickly exited the adventurers guild with Fel. Fel, I've done everything I wanted to do in this town so I'm thinking of leaving. What do you think? I am okay either way. As long as you feed me delicious meals. Eh, uh, is it so? Well then, let's go. With that, Fell and I left the town of Falliers. Chapter 3, Ingredients from Another World Possess Preposterous Effects I was currently walking along the road with Fell after putting Falliers behind me. Was it because Fell was with me? I didn't see any monsters at all. Even the road out of Ridge Seager's capital had goblins and grey wolves on it though. Personally, there was nothing better than there being no monsters around, I guess. While walking along with no real destination, I asked a question that had been on my mind, hey, Fell. You can use magic, right? Yes, I can use magic. He used barrier magic when we went out for the herb gathering quest, but that was the kind of magic you couldn't see, so it hadn't really hit me. Conjuring water or fire or something visible seemed more like magic. I wonder if I can learn to use magic. 
As I thought, now that I was in a world where magic existed, the feeling of wanting to try using it welled up inside. After all, it's magic, you know? Magic. I'm probably a little too old to be like this, but I really am excited about it. You should be able to as long as you have MP. Hmm hmm. I did have some MP at least, so did that mean I could use magic? How do you become able to use magic? How, you say, you should be able to use it if you want to use it. If I want to. Like I said, if you want to use wind magic then by thinking of wanting to use wind magic you can use wind magic. The same with fire, and so on. This is no good. Fell is the type of genius to do things by feeling. HRMMMM, but by thinking of using it, does he mean that the mental image is important? Image, image, image. Ball of fire, ball of fire, ball of fire, fireball, it's a fireball. I held out my right hand and chanted, fireball. Nothing. E embarrassing. You, what are you doing? Fell looked at me, exasperated. KHH. Please don't look at me with those eyes. You will not be able to use magic if you do not circulate the magic power around your body, you know. Eh? Really? You know, that's the basic stuff I wanted to hear about in the first place. What do you mean, circulate magic power? I wasn't even sure what magic power was like in the first place. It is difficult to communicate with words. I am circulating magic power in my body right now, so try touching me and feel it. Feel it, he says. Is that really possible? Doubting him a little, I touched Fell's back. Whoa. It's only vaguely, but I think I get it. I could faintly feel something warm flowing around Fell's insides. It was still blurry, but I felt like I was grasping something. Do you understand? Yeah, somehow. If that is so, then all that is left is training. Of course it would be. All right, let's try it. Magic power, magic power, magic power, something warm, magic power, magic power. Hum. There was something there. Circulated around my body like blood flowing through my veins, circulate, circulate. I was doing that while walking, training the circulation of magic power throughout my body. Hey, I am hungry. I started when Fell said that. It's already that time? Then, let's have lunch. We moved to an open space by the road. Now then, what should I make? Okay, let's make pork chops. They're simple. It's not actually pork, but I'll try using the orc that seems similar. Is it really okay though? I did have those thoughts. I mean, these pigs are bipedal, you know? But the people of this world eat it regularly, and the butcher at the Adventurer's Guild eats it too and even said it was a high-class ingredient. Also, I have a lot of orc meat, so if I don't at least challenge myself with it, it'll just go to waste. If it's no good I can just make Fell eat all of it, yet. Yeah. Start off by cutting onions into thin slices, and cut the orc meat thinly as well. After that, Mix together ketchup, Worcestershire sauce, sugar, alcohol, and a little soy sauce to make the sauce. Cook the orc meat in a frying pan until its color changes suddenly, and then add in the onions. Continue heating the meat and onions together until the onions become transparent, then add the sauce mixture in and continue lightly heating until the flavors are mixed together, and the pork chop is finished. When I placed it in front of Fell, who was waiting with his nose twitching at the smell, he scarfed it down immediately. Yes, this is delicious, too. Well, that's good. That means at least Fell is perfectly fine eating orc meat. Now then, I should try some too. It looks just like a pork chop, so it seems like it should be delicious, but... I prepared myself, and threw a bite into my mouth. MG 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 MG. Hey? It's tasty. It's totally fine. In fact, it's absolutely delicious. It's like high class, branded pork. What the hell, orcs are amazing. Why wasn't I told earlier? I felt hesitation at how they looked but this is really good. It was completely fine, as long as I thought of it like a fancy branded pork. Yes, yes, it's great. It felt like blasphemy, but I took some of the pork chop meat, put it in between two slices of bread, and bit into it. Yeah, that works. Hey, another. I made another for Fell while I ate my own pork chop sandwich. We took a small break after Fell was satisfied with his meal before starting to walk again of course, while I practiced circulating magic power around my body. After I spent a while training mana circulation, I finally felt like I'd reached a decent point, like I was just about able to actually use magic. I stuck out my right hand, palm facing up. Fireball. Bomf, a small fire the size of a candle's flame lit up on my palm. FHHSSN. Fell, my friend, please stop snorting like you are making fun of me. Sure, it isn't much, but in my books at least it isn't a total failure. I managed to conjure fire from nothing, after all. Yeah, 
it's not a failure. If I say it's not, it's not. But, I'll have to train more if I want to pull out a real fireball in the future. Fell, should we call it a day and make camp? Sure. I made quite a bit off of the monsters that Fell hunted, so I was gonna treat him today. I'd make it a great feast of other world meat. Hey, Fell. Thanks to you, I've managed to make quite a bit of money, so I'll use my skill to get some food from my world for you to eat. What do you want? Food from another world, hey? Of course I want meat. Of course he'd say that. Looking at my skill window, I tried to figure out what would be good. Fell was standing next to me with eyes full of expectation. So for now, something that he can eat right away, I guess. If that's the case, I guess it's side dishes. Which one, though? Oh, they have soy-flavored fried chicken. The meatballs and mince cutlet are good, too. Next is some hamburg steak, and also some thick-cut pork cutlet, and they also have fried tofu, so I'll get that too. I added all of it to the cart. Hey. I is it ready yet? Fell, would you stop drooling while looking at the screen? I decided to check out just the side dishes first so that Fell would stop drooling in impatience. I bought several of each, so it ended up coming out to four silver and seven copper. For now, I just threw in five gold and paid it out of that balance. As soon as I finished checking out, a cardboard box appeared. When I opened the box and took out the side dishes, they were all still hot. Whoa, they're still hot. This is good. I took the hot side dishes out of their packaging, and served them to Fell on a plate. Right, here you go. Even before I said that, Fell had already jumped on the plate and started. Wolfing it down. But he'd still want more at this rate. I was sure the side dishes I bought wouldn't be enough, so I took a little longer to look through the site to think about what meat I should buy for a main dish. Maybe coarsely ground sausage and some roast pork would be good. I'd just have to lightly season the sausage with salt and pepper before cooking it, and in Fell's case, he can probably eat the roast pork as is. After that, the main dish would have to be beef. I was thinking the main dish would be domestic wage Ihu steak. I'd eaten a lot of different meats in this world, and they'd all been fairly good. That was why, when I tried to think of something better, it really could only be domestic wage Ihu. It was pretty expensive, but I'd already decided to splurge today. I found that they had some domestic black wage Ihu steak, thigh cuts, so I went with that. One steak, 250 grams, is one silver and five copper by itself as expensive as I expected. Judging from Fell's habits, he'll eat about ten. As for my share. Oh, this and this is good. Coarse sausage, roast pork, steak meat and my share of food all came out to two gold. While I was shopping on my online supermarket, Fell finished eating his side dishes. What, are you going to feed me that next? Fell, you eat too fast. Just wait a little, some of it is better if I cook it first, so eat this for now. I threw around five lumps of roast pork that I took out of their packages on a plate and gave it to Fell. While he was eating that, I took the sausages, seasoned them with salt and pepper, and cooked them so that they were just lightly burnt enough to have crispy parts. Here, eat this too. Fell happily started chewing on the sausages that I put in front of him. Each and everything is delicious. Well, that's good to hear. But there's still the final main dish. I seasoned the first two domestic wage Ihu steaks with salt and pepper before cooking them. The main dish is domestic wage Ihu steak. First, with salt and pepper. Hmm. Mg mg. Mmm, how incredibly soft and delicious this meat is. This is great. It is delicious. Hehen, <laughs> it is, isn't it? This is the meat of an animal called a cow, which has been raised carefully by my country so that it is as delicious as can be. What? You say your country in the other world raises this animal called a cow just for meals. Hey? This world doesn't have animal husbandry, or raise livestock. It does not. This world overflows with monsters. It is enough to hunt them for meat. I see. Certainly monster meat is pretty good, and if those monsters exist in great numbers, then there might be no need to go through all the trouble to keep livestock. I kept grilling steaks while Fell talked, this time with the steak sauces I'd used before. I used garlic flavor, grated radish flavor, onion flavor, and butter flavor, one after another, as I put out steaks like I was raising a combo meter. Even so, to raise them yourself so they are more tasty, your country is really particular about its food. Yeah, no doubt. My country makes no compromises, and cares about its food more than any other would, I think. After all, we had everything from B-class gourmet to high-class French restaurants, and in Tokyo, you'd be able to eat cuisine from almost any country without having to leave the city. I see. That is why the food you make is so good. Well, that's mostly thanks to the online supermarket and all the different spices and seasonings that food production companies make. It seemed Fell was happy and full after eating and enjoying his fill of the domestic wage Ihu steaks. Yes, it was a treat. Even so, 
I have thought this before, but when I eat your cooking, I can feel energy overflowing from inside me. Especially today. I feel like right now, I can easily defeat that ancient dragon that I tied with long ago. Eh? No way, is my cooking showing some sort of preposterous effect? Wait, she t. Today's cooking was all made with stuff I bought from my skill. Usually, I used meat from here, so the effects of other world ingredients had been kept to a minimum. That's why, even if there were side effects, when it came to someone already as powerful as Fel, it didn't turn out to be much. But today, I fed Fel food made only from stuff I got off of my online supermarket. F Fel, by energy, could you mean? I appraised Fel. Name Fel age 1014. Race Fenrir level 906 HP 9843, plus 5118. MP 9481, plus 4550. Attack 9036, plus 4518. Defense 9765, plus 4394. Agility 9684, plus 4551. Skills Wind Magic, Fire Magic, Water Magic, Earth Magic. Ice magic, lightning magic, holy magic, barrier magic, rending claws, body reinforcement, physical attack resistance, magic attack resistance, MP efficiency, appraisal blessings blessing of the goddess of the wind, Ninrir. Hey? Am I seeing things? I blinked several times and appraised Fell again. Oh. All of Fell's stats had been buffed by about 50%. That the stats had been buffed this much must have something to do with how much he ate, or the ingredients, or possibly how it was cooked. I had no idea how things got like this, but there was no doubt it was because of the food I bought with my skill. But, it's got to be all right. I mean, when I looked at this before, there was a time limit. No matter how much Fell ate, at the very latest it should all go back to normal after tomorrow morning. Probably. Hey, it is a waste to sit still with all this energy. I will go hunting. Hey WW wait a bit. What if M monsters attack me? I'd appreciate it if you didn't leave me alone when the sun has already set and it's dark out. G.H., I shall erect a barrier around you. A barrier erected by me in mine current state should deflect even a dragon's breath. Deflect a dragon's breath. You. Now then I shall take my leave. Saying that, Fell ran into the dark forest as if he was jumping into it. Sigh, I guess I'll just eat my own dinner. Wait, why is it already pitch black? While Fell was around, his silver fur always faintly glowed, was that an effect of his magic power, so even if it was dark, I never really minded. My online supermarket was basically made for situations like this. I opened up the site and bought a flashlight with batteries, which I placed on top of a cardboard box. This is fine. Let's eat. It's been meat over and over again recently, so I suddenly wanted to eat this when I saw it, Amagong Aoki Bento. Also, some canned coffee I used to drink this every day in Japan. Haha, <laughs> it's gone a little cold, but man, this is good. This canned coffee, too. After thoroughly savoring my meal, I decided to go straight to bed because I had nothing else to do. I was going to just curl up in my mantle and sleep, but I had a sudden idea. If I remember correctly, they should have it. I opened up my online supermarket. Uh huh, oh, there it is. A pillow, futon, and blanket. Now that I have quite some room in my budget thanks to Fell, it should be fine to buy a futon set. If I have this, camping out should become a good sight more comfortable from now on. Okay, let's buy it. And, button. Right then. There's no need to worry because of Fell's barrier magic, so. I'll be able to sleep soundly tonight. I fell asleep inside a bed comfortable enough one wouldn't think they were camping. Ya yeah, eun dang, I slept well. Yeah, sleep is really different when you have a real bed. Whoa. What the heck is this? There were three mountains of monster corpses piled up next to me. Fell, my guy, I don't care how much energy you had, this is too much. The culprit, Fell was currently sleeping soundly on the other side of the mountains of corpses. A thought came into my head as I gazed upon the three densely packed mountains of monsters, what do I even do with all this? Well, for now there's nothing else but to cram it all into my item box, I guess. I've been using it for a while, and it does seem like time doesn't pass at all inside there. I mean, the vegetables I bought a week ago with my skill basically haven't aged at all, the leafy vegetables haven't wilted, and the other ones still looked completely moist and fresh. The amount being what it was. I'd have to dole it out little by little among the adventurers' guilds we would visit over our travels. I could always just learn to butcher it myself, but I'm no good with gore and stuff, so I don't really have any confidence I'd be able to learn it. I'll think more on that later. Anyway, I wonder how many monsters are in here. I appraised the mountains, a giant dodo and giant deer. Fell hunted these before. 
Both were bigger than the ones he caught before. And then there were three rock birds. Rock birds were basically chicken, so having several of them is always nice. There was also a black serpent, which the Adventurer's Guild bought for a high price before, as well as an equally expensive murder grizzly. Both of these were bigger this time as well, it's kind of scary thinking of how expensive they'll be. Next is a red serpent. It was a snake that was basically a black serpent, just brownish red. Mm. The red serpent's head is bigger than the black serpent's, so the red serpent might be bigger overall, too. After that are five orc generals and an orc king. Hey? An orc king would be, the king of a group of orcs, right? For an orc king to be here, what happened to the other orcs? Fell, guy, just what did you do? Right when I was thinking that, Fell woke up. Hmm? What? Fell asked when he noticed me staring at him as he roused. What happened here? I asked, pointing at the piles of monsters. Is it not obvious? Those are what I hunted. Fell replied with a touch of sarcasm. No no no, I get that. But no matter how you think about it, this is too much. MMRGH, I was just so full of energy. Also, I did not get tired at all, so I had much fun hunting. Ha <laughs> ha, is it so? There's an orc king here, but what happened to the other orcs? I ended up running into an orc settlement. They noticed me and attacked. Of course I made it rain their blood, but I only brought back the orc king and the orc generals. Because stronger monsters are more tasty. Rain their blood, really, what are you thinking? By the way, how many orcs were there? There might have been about 150 orcs, I think. Uh, H150, you say? I thought I knew just how overwhelming Fell's strength was, but combining that with food bought from my world brought about such an overpowered result. Not to mention, orcs weren't even the only thing he fought last night. There were many other monster corpses here. Turning my eyes to the mountains of corpses again, I continued appraising. Four ogres, can you eat ogres? Hey, Fell, there's ogres here, but are they edible? Ogres have a lot of muscle and taste terrible. However, it seems an ogre's hide is prized among humans as a material for armor. You need money, do you not? That is why I brought it back even though it is not edible, just in case. Eh, is that so? I'm completely fine on that front at the moment thanks to Fell, though. Well, I'll keep it for now. And, next is a blue ogre. Unlike a regular ogre, blue ogres have blue skin, of course. Is this what they call a subspecies? I bet he didn't bring it back for any other reason than the fact that ogres are worth money. Though. After that, it's, uh, a metal lizard. Just as its name implies. It's a stupidly big lizard with a silvery hide that's as hard as iron. How did Fell even take down a lizard with skin this tough? I kind of want to ask, but looking at how beat up its skin is, even though it's so hard, it seems better not to. I can imagine that this lizard suffered a horrible, tragic death. Namu Amida Butsu. Okay, what's next? Um, Chimera. Eh? Chimera, isn't that the thing with a lion's head, a goat's head, and a snake's head? That thing that shows up as a final boss in games? No no no, no way. Wait, oh. It has all three heads. Indeed, that is a chimera. They are pretty tasty, you know? Usually they are a bit of trouble, but last night I managed to take it down with one hit. Killing it with one hit isn't something you should be bragging about. This is definitely no good. I'm not sure, but I bet this thing is far above even A rank. The day I bring this into an adventurer's guild. Whoa, I got chills for a moment. Yeah, this thing is no good. Let's have it sleep forever in the depths of my item box. Yeah, that's it. While I was thinking that with clouded eyes, Fell said, I am hungry. Even though you ate that much last night. There's no helping it, I'll make some food. Before that, I stuffed all the monster corpses into my item box, and my bed, too. Okay then, what do I make? Of course, the main dish would be monster meat. I'd learned the hard way last night what happened when you overdid it on ingredients from my world, after all. I knew from past meals that accompanying vegetables or seasonings didn't have that much of an effect, and that something on the level of spaghetti with meat sauce was still fine. I had to take all that into account when thinking up a menu. Everything in balance, right? Thinking like that, I figured that I had cockatrice, which was basically chicken. So, let's have that. I'll make a chicken sauté. Start off by removing the cockatrice's excess fat, and season it with salt and pepper to build a base of flavor. Pour in a small amount of salad oil because the skin still has a lot of fat, and start cooking from the side with skin. If you push down on it with a pot lid while it cooks, the skin will become crispy and delicious. Flip it and cook the other side when the skin becomes cooked into a light brown color. Once the cockatrice is cooked, remove it and use the pan to make a sauce. There's umami in the meat's fat, 
so using the frying pan without wiping it down first makes for a more delicious sauce. That's what I always do. Combine butter, some lemon juice, I always use a bottle of 100% lemon juice, and a little soy sauce in the frying pan to make lemon butter sauce. It might just be the nature of a Japanese person, but I always want to put soy sauce in. It's fine with just lemon and butter, but in my case I feel like adding soy sauce makes it one level tastier. Just pour the lemon butter sauce onto the crispy cockatrice, and it's finished. Fell, it's finished. Was he really that hungry? When I placed it in front of Fell, he immediately bit into it hard. I put some sautéed chicken between slices of bread and ate it as a sandwich, and had some more of the canned coffee I bought last night to go with it. This sautéed chicken sandwich is great. The canned coffee, too. I know, let's buy some more canned coffee from the online supermarket next time and stock up. That, and some instant coffee. There'll be times I want hot coffee, after all. If I do that, then I'll need some sugar and milk too. I'm running low on spices and seasonings too, and I want to stock up on some more vegetables also. I guess I'll buy it all from the online supermarket tonight. Seconds. Yet, yeah, yet. Yeah. I started making a shopping list while I cooked seconds for Fell. After several more helpings and a small break, we stood up. It's about time to get going. I started walking again with Fell of course, while practicing magic as well. I've worked hard. For three days, I've done nothing but practice moving mana around my body. That's why it should be possible. It's possible, I can do it. Let's go. Fireball. A ball of fire slightly larger than a softball appeared above the palm of my hand. However, it couldn't be called a real fireball like this I had to be able to throw it and make it explode, first. I threw it ahead of me. The fireball flew at the speed of a city bike, before losing speed, and falling around 20 meters ahead. Bump a small explosion, can that be called an explosion, happened. I hated to say it myself, but that was pretty pathetic. It didn't even get to the A of attack. Next to me, Fell reacted as he usually did, snorting as if he was mocking me. God damn. I did say the only way was to train, but if you can only do this much after trying so hard maybe you should try to learn in combat. Rather than spending long hours training, you might learn more by going through a single real battle. That might be so, but doesn't that mean fighting monsters? I can't use a sword, and my magic is only at this level. What happens if I get hurt? Is that all? There is no need for worry. I shall erect a barrier. It will protect you from their attacks, but will not prevent you from attacking. I am at your side, so there is no need for fear. But still. I really don't like the idea of getting hurt. Aik, you coward. Hurry and get on my back. Fell snapped after seeing my hesitant attitude, and forced me onto his back. Hey, W wait a bit. Where are you taking me? I asked in a panic. Fell only replied with, of course, where the monsters are wa monsters. I'll be killed. It will be fine. I will choose some weak monsters in accordance with your level. I am also here with you, do not worry. Don't tell me that, of course I'm gonna worry. I'll probably be thought of as a huge wimp, but there's no way I can fight monsters all of a sudden. Hmm? I see goblins. Just perfect. I will erase my presence so we will not be noticed so you be quiet as well. So saying, Fell started running. Just perfect, my ass. What the hell is this? There are so many goblins. The place Fell brought me to was a settlement of goblins. Those are goblins. Try using your magic. No no no, no matter how you think about it, this is impossible. What the hell are you even expecting of me? Hurry and shoot. What are you saying? There's too many of them, it's impossible. Mm, I have put up a barrier already. Look, we are safe. You say that, but there's no way we're safe. You coward. If you won't attack, I will. After saying that, Fell let out a howl. Hey, who was it who said to be quiet? Look, all the goblins are staring this way. Ghhh, they've noticed us. Kya. A huge number of goblins wielding clubs, swords and axes are coming this way. Humph, now you have no choice but to fight. Use your magic and shoot them shoot them until your body remembers the feeling. I will go and hunt the higher ranked goblins. Wait don't leave me alone. What the hell do you even mean, shoot until your body remembers. God damn it. I'll have you pay for this, fell. Oh, shit, the goblins are here. Fireball. 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 I threw my pathetic fireballs at the goblins. Even if they were pathetic, fire was still fire, and they did some damage to the goblins. I continued throwing fireballs. My surroundings were swarmed with goblins but no matter if they swung their clubs, slashed with their swords, or tried to split my head with their axes, Fell's barrier stopped all of them. Even so, 
I felt nothing but fear seeing the goblin horde bearing down on me. So as to sweep them all away, I gave up thinking and just throw as many fireballs as I could. Fireball. 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 Just as Fell told me to do, I did. Nothing but throw fireballs as fast as I could. Fireball. 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 Damn. This isn't over. Fireball. 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 Doing this, I noticed that the more I shot, the more speed and power my fireballs gained. It was like I figured out the feeling of it. I must have gotten used to it while throwing so many of them. I threw even more fireballs at the crowd. Fireball. 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 I threw more and more, as many as I could. How much time had passed while I was trying my best to throw so many fireballs? Ha, 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 ha. Fireball. A ball of fire around the size of a volleyball flew at a pretty considerable speed, hit the goblins, and exploded. It was exactly my ideal fireball, as well as my last one. And no more, I'm finished, is this what happens when I run out of magic power? I can't move my body. There's still goblins around, but I can't move anymore. Humph, so you can do it if you try. Fell, ah, he came back. I'm finished already. I'll leave the rest to you. I lost consciousness as soon as I saw Fell. MNN. Uawa. Goblins. I lurched up and looked around frantically, in the darkness, I saw Fell next to me. It's already this late. I've been out for quite a while, I guess. How was it? Fighting proved beneficial, no. Beneficial, my ass. After he put me in such an awful situation. I felt like I'd been lightly traumatized by the sight of small, dirty, green-skinned goblins coming at me all at once. I'd be seeing nightmares of that for a while. The last fireball you cast was pretty well done. Fell nodded in approval as he said that. It is thanks to me that you have become able to use magic. What do you mean, thanks to you? I'm still a beginner, we should have started off with one or two of them. And you forced a whole settlement onto me, it's true, that last fireball was quite good. However, I don't think it was right to shove me into a goblin settlement all of a sudden. It is your fault for taking so long to learn magic of that level. Grnrnrnrnmm. This is why geniuses suck. There's no way I can do things like you, Fell. You should know what my status is like if you can use appraisal. He should know that the difference between our stats is like heaven and earth. Hmm? Your level has risen. Hey? Really? I appraised myself in a hurry. Name Makota, Tsuyoshi Makota, age 27 job victim from another world level 3 HP 110 MP 110 attack 83 defense 82 agility 78 skills appraisal, item box, fire magic, familiars, contracted magic beasts Fenrir unique skill online supermarket. Who? I went up two levels. All my stats, like my HP and MP, had raised slightly. Ah, I also gained the fire magic skill. I was thinking that I was finally a mage. But why does my job entry still say victim from another world? When will this ever change? When I gain more levels? No, of course it'll change if I gain more skills, I think. There's no way it stays like that forever, is there? No no no, it can't be. Right, here. While I was thinking this and that about my status, Fell slowly got up. He rolled over a big green something about two and a half meters in size with his front legs. Whoa. It was a huge goblin. I tried appraising it, it was a goblin king. A goblin king. Fell. He did say back then that he would go and hunt higher ranked goblins. So that settlement had a king. So that was why he took me to that settlement. That goblin king has a magic stone. Magic stones are worth money to humans, no? Goblin kings are inedible and serve no purpose otherwise, but this one seems to have a magic stone, so I took the trouble of bringing it back. Ah, I see. So that means that goblin kings are at least B rank, right? Are goblin kings B or A rank? Rank? I do not know about ranks, but when you get as strong as I am you can tell if something has a magic stone or not. Hmm, is that so? If that's the case, I can earn a lot of money by having fell hunt things with magic stones. I won't do that, though. Doing that would definitely lead to a world of trouble. You were also unconscious. Even I am not able to carry both you and a goblin king and still continue moving. That is why I waited here for you to wake up. HMMNN, and? Why has Fell been conspicuously glancing sideways at me over and over again? That thing has a magic stone. Yeah, so what? Magic stones are worth money, are they not? They certainly were. Back at the Adventurer's Guild, the prices for the Brank Giant Dodo and Giant Deer flew upwards just because they had magic stones, even if they were small. So, should you not reward me with another feast with meat from your world? Ha <laughs> ha 
This guy's become a captive of the flavor of that domestic black wage I who stake, hasn't he? Listen here, there were a whole bunch of monsters back then. Yes, and this time I also hunted a lot of monsters. Most of them even had magic stones. He's talking about when he hunted way too many monsters because he ate my world's food and was bursting with energy, right? Of course that doesn't count. It was a direct result of my meal, after all. You know, we still have almost all the meat we got from the Adventurer's Guild, so it'll be a long while before I go and turn those in, right? Hmm? Is that so? If that is the case I will give up on a feast from your world. However, I am still hungry. Geez, he just had to go and learn something weird. At least he isn't grumbling about it. But I'm still not back to normal. I ran out of MP once, so I'm still feeling sluggish. It's too much work to cook for Fell. Not to mention, I still haven't gotten him back for throwing me into a whole swarm of goblins. This calls for a punishment of a meal without meat. I opened the online supermarket window. Oh, it's sweet things for when you're tired, right? I guess red bean buns and jam buns, strawberry flavor, are fine. I like them quite a bit, as well. It's fine to give Fell the same thing, actually, he eats a lot, so I'll buy some cream buns too. For now, five each of the three kinds for Fell. And of course, canned coffee to go with the sweet buns. Oh, you can buy an entire box of canned coffee. Let's do it. If I'm gonna buy the canned coffee, I might as well also get the instant coffee I was thinking about getting too, at least for now. I was also going to restock on spices and seasonings, as well as vegetables, but I want to pick them out more carefully, so I'll do it next time. Then this is fine. I'll check out. There isn't much money left in my account, so I add another 5 gold and pay with that. I removed the packaging from all of the breads, placed them on a plate, and handed it over to Fell. What is this? Red bean buns, jam buns, and cream buns they're sweet breads. Hmm, is there no meat? Fell, are you really going to make me cook right after I just woke up from going unconscious? Grrnnrnn. I understand, this will be fine. Fell started biting into the red bean bun after confirming its smell. Mmm, -hmm, this is pretty good in its own way. Eh? He's okay with sweet bread? He ate a jam bun next, reacting with, oh, this is good too. It seems he liked it. The cream bun went over well too, seeing as he said, I see, it tastes like thick milk. This is good, too. Eh, uh, you like sweet things too, Fell? This didn't turn out to be a punishment at all. More. He's actually happy about it and asking for more. Wait, you know you've already eaten 15 of them. Any more and you're definitely overeating. You need to be careful not to get diabetes or cavities, I have no idea if Fenrir's can get diabetes, though, you won't be able to eat meat anymore, you know? You'll get sick if you eat too many sweets, you know. Humph, as if I would ever get sick. More importantly, seconds. There was no choice. I caved and bought him two more of each kind of bread, and asked him, what do you mean, you won't get sick? I have the blessing of the goddess of the wind, Ninrir. In my case, not only am I able to better control wind magic, but also no status ailments will work on me, including poisons and sicknesses. By the way, invalidation of status ailments comes with blessings from any god. That is just the kind of thing blessings are. You can nullify status ailments with just a blessing from a god? Hey? What's with that shocking truth? A god's blessing, how unfair. Just being able to nullify all status ailments is already basically cheating. Fell's already strong, even without his blessing. I need a blessing way more than he does. Gods, any one of you is fine, so please bless me. Hey, Fell, we've been traveling like this without any real destination in mind, but is there anywhere you want to go? For me, I really just wanted to get out of that suspicious kingdom of Rijzijer, so I was happy to just travel while keeping a certain amount of distance from there. Then how about we go west? There is a deep forest there with many delicious monsters. West? What country is there in the west? HN, I do not know of such things. Don't know? You. What country it is and how it is is important, you know. What if they're doing something dangerous like fighting wars? MM, I do not care to know the names of countries. And even if humans are fighting, it has nothing to do with me. Not to mention humans are always fighting somewhere. To think he doesn't know even the names of countries, it was a mistake to ask Fell. Well, when you get as strong as Fell I bet he'll go unharmed even if he just bursts in in the middle of a full-on battle, so I guess there'd be no need to care about the names of countries or how they're doing. But that won't fly with me. By people are always fighting somewhere, I guess he means that, even in this world, conflicts between countries are unending. They were saying that there was gonna be a war between Rijzijer and Marvale, too. As I thought, as long as I'm traveling, I'll need to take a look around all the countries and figure out their political state. 
If that's the case, I'd need a map. Up until now, whenever we came upon a village, we went around instead of in because of fell. But I want a map, so let's try entering the next one. There is a village up ahead. It seemed Fell could sense presences, and could at least tell if there were people or monsters in a given area, so he told me like this whenever he noticed something. Shall we make a detour again? No, this time we'll go in. I want a map. When we were inside of the village's entrance, the guard yelled, stop, and pointed his spear at us. I am Makota, an adventurer. This is my familiar. When I shouted that in a loud voice, the guard replied, do you have proof? So I called back, if you want to look at my guild card. I'd have liked to show him my merchant's guild card, but since Fell was here, I had to show him my adventurer's guild card so I could prove that Fell was my familiar, other than name and rank, the card also noted whether or not the owner had a familiar. At my reply, one of the two guards hesitatingly approached me. This is my guild card. Hmm, it does say you have a familiar. Th that, is that a great wolf? It looked like the guard assumed Fell was a great wolf on his own. It was still better than telling him Fell was actually a Fenrir, so I just said yes. Oi. SHH. Fell looked like he was about to say something, but I shut him up. I couldn't imagine what would happen with this guard, if he was already this jumpy around a great wolf, should he discover that Fell is really a Fenrir. Not to mention, there were a bunch of villagers looking this way from afar. I am no great wolf. Suddenly, Fell's voice echoed into my head. Whoa. Hmm? What? And no no, it's nothing. Yet. I see. At any rate, you must be a great adventurer, seeing as how you've got an A-rank great wolf as a familiar. I laughed vaguely in response to the guard's words. I said that I am not a great wolf. Fell's voice rang in my head again, and I turned around to stare at him. Hmm? This? This is telepathy. A contracted master and his familiar can communicate telepathically. Eh? This is the first time I was hearing of it, though. Yes, this is the first time I have formed a contract as well, so I had completely forgotten. My dear Fell, please don't forget something as important as that. But if he said that a master and his familiar could communicate telepathically, does that mean I can talk to Fell like that, too? Testing, testing, testing. Fell, can you hear me? Yes, I can. I said you were a great wolf because it's better that way. Think about it. If he's that scared just thinking you're a great wolf, what do you think would happen if he learns you're a legendary Fenrir, hmm, but? There's no buts about it. Isn't it better than causing unnecessary trouble? From now on, when we enter human villages or towns, you're going to have to pretend to be a great wolf, Felga, why? Because entire countries and their nobles will make moves on us if they know you're a Fenrir. If that happens, won't that be annoying, it would be, but would it not be fine for me to just destroy them all? If they come at us? Destroy them all, he says. I've had this thought before, but Fel really is a meathead. You say it would be fine for you to destroy them, but if you keep doing that, then eventually, there'll be no place for us in the world. Also, if you keep doing that, all the human countries would unite and cry for your death, you know? And that would be annoying too, wouldn't it, Gah? Certainly, that is a possibility. Right? That's why you should just pretend you're a great wolf here for the sake of convenience if you say so, I guess I must. Oh. Also, we should start mainly using telepathy to talk in towns and villages, or when there's people around. The fact that you're a Fenrir will get found out if you start talking, after all mm, yes I understand. After having that telepathic conversation, we were allowed into the village without problems, but... Their stairs hurt. Finally, even the village chief came out. Welcome to Leiden. It seems that you're an adventurer, but why have you come to a village like this with nothing to offer for you? Actually, I wanted to get a map so I tried stopping by, but there is no such expensive item as a map in this small village. If any place would have one, it would be the town of Rottle, which is four days' travel from here. They have bookstores, and even a public library. In this world, not only was paper precious, but books all had to be handwritten, so apparently, they were quite expensive. Maps were also made of paper, so you'd think they'd sell them in bookstores, but of course they'd be expensive, too. Only a suitably large town would have something as expensive as that. Rottle was only one step down in size from the country's capital, so it should hold most things one could want within its walls. I managed to get what I wanted to know out of the village chief, so I left the village immediately. It seemed like the villagers wouldn't be able to calm down with a large beast like fell around, and even the village chief looked like he wanted us out as soon as possible. That village really isn't kind to strangers. Well, it's fine since I've figured out our next destination. The town of Rottle is four days travel straight down this road from Leiden, or so I've been told. All right then. Let's go to Rottle, I guess. But it'll take four days, 
Hey? I'd really like a map as soon as possible, though. Hmm? If you want to get there faster, would you like to ride me? I'd be grateful for that, but please don't go at a ridiculous speed like before. At that speed, it would not take even a day to reach our destination, you know? Or would you rather get there even faster? No way, I was already almost thrown off at that speed. I'll die if you go any faster. I'll be happy to shorten the four days down to two, so would you go at that pace? Make sure you never reach those speeds, you hear. I feel like that is a little slow, but I shall do as you say. Like that, we made our way down the road to Rottle. He why fell. The sun has set, so let's make camp around here. I called out to fell while I was being thrown around on his back, and he came to a stop. All right, food. I am hungry. Yeah yeah. You did let me ride you for the whole day today. I'll make sure to make your favorite meat. If that's the case, it should be something that really gives you that sense that you're eating meat. So, something like this might be just perfect. I took some giant deer meat out of my item box. Just like it sounded, a giant deer was basically a huge deer monster. Actually, I'd eaten deer once before. One of my work senior's relatives was part of a hunting club and got some fresh deer meat, so we ended up eating it at my senior's place. According to that relative in the hunting club, the most delicious way to eat deer was as a steak, so we ended up making steaks. Deer meat has the impression of being tough and having a peculiar taste, but when I ate it, I found out that wasn't true at all. While you definitely knew you were chewing meat, it wasn't tough, and it didn't have a bad taste at all. In fact, it was quite delicious. Just like that deer, this giant deer meat was lean with little fat, so it should be fine to treat it similarly. I was thinking of imitating my senior and making giant deer steaks. First, take a pre-cut chunk of the giant deer meat and score some notches in it before pounding on it with the back of the knife. Apparently, deer meat has a lot of muscle fibers, so pounding it before cutting it makes it softer and juicier. Then, season the meat with salt and pepper before letting it sit like that for a while to soak in the flavor. Once it's set for long enough, melt some butter on a pan and sear the meat. It's finished once both sides are browned. Fell. It's finished. I handed Fell a finished giant deer steak and tried some myself, too. MGMG, ah, oh, delicious. Its taste wasn't gamey, and the meat gave just enough resistance to the chew to be comfortable. Not to mention, every bite caused more juice to leak out. Its taste wasn't that heavy, so I felt like I could eat several of those. More. Fell seemed to like it too, since he immediately asked for more. I started cooking more giant deer steaks. Next, I'll season it with. Ta da! The usual steak sauces. You gotta use these when you have steaks. Fell seems like he likes it, too. First up is the garlic flavor Fell said he liked the most. Hong Hong, mm, mmm, this is great. After that, I brought out the grated radish, onion, and butter flavors. I also had another helping of steak with onion flavored sauce. The taste wasn't heavy, so I think I can manage another. Even giant deer is great when eaten like this. That's probably because you usually eat it raw. Japan's food industry is the real MVP, really. Even so, giant deer meat was even more delicious than I expected. Burp, it was so delicious, I ended up overeating. Even if it was a lot smaller than Fell's portions, as one would expect, two steaks was too much. Now then, once I finish cleaning up all the cookware, I need to prepare my sleeping space. I started off by laying out some cardboard. It was the flattened form of the boxes I got by buying things with my skill. I realized, you see, that laying out a futon directly on the dirt is bad. At first, I put it directly on the ground without thinking, and the futon got damp with moisture, it was terrible. I'd love to have a bed frame or duckboards, but it seems that's too much to ask for, even from my online supermarket. When I was trying to figure out what to put under the futon, I suddenly remembered that I had cardboard. I kept getting more cardboard every time I used my skill, but up until now, it was just trash. I just left it in a corner of my item box along with all the wrappers and packages from food I bought. But, if I laid out the cardboard like this, then my futon wouldn't get damp or dirty. What a great way to recycle cardboard. This is called being ecological. Hey, make my bed, too. Sure sure. Seeing me lay down in my futon, Fell went, that looks nice. Get me one, too. He kept pestering me about it, so I bought one for him too. It was kind of awkward to be the only one in a futon, not to mention Fell was the one earning most of this money anyway. That's why it was fine. Although Fell was so big I ended up having to get him three futons. I laid out some cardboard and spread out Fell's three futons on them. Here, I've finished making your bed, Fell. Good. Fell rolled sideways onto the futons. He seemed really sleepy now that he was full. Quayaho look, the legendary magic beast is yawning. Just remember to put up a barrier before you sleep. I know. 
It is done. I am going to sleep. Fell dozed off right after saying that. Wow, already? That was quick. Right then, I guess I'll sleep too. I can sleep soundly thanks to Fell's barrier. I'll have a great sleep in my personal futon. Tomorrow, we'd finally be in Rottle. Fell said that we'd be there before the afternoon, but I just hoped that they'd let us in without any trouble. Gossip, a certain adventurers. Reflection. Ha <laughs> ha. What's wrong, Vincent? Sighing like that. Nothing, just thinking about how I wanted to eat good food again. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking the same thing. That I want to eat Makoda's cooking again. I thought you'd agree, Rita. His food really is way too good. The other members nodded in agreement at Vincent's deeply serious comment. Honestly, I agree. I think back on the escort mission we took just recently. It was a mission that would be hard to forget for us, Iron Will, in many ways. The man they were introduced to at the Adventurer's Guild was a man with a flat face, unlike what you'd usually see in the area. He was of medium build, and I understood just from sizing him up why we would be hired to escort this man on his travels. He seemed completely unconnected from the concept of strength. The man introduced himself as Makoda. He said that he wanted to cross the border to the next country, and we ourselves were just talking about how untrustworthy this country had become, so we planned to leave soon ourselves. Thus, we decided to accept the request even though the reward of 8 gold was a little low. The road to the neighboring country was relatively safe, but the deciding factor was the fact that he would take care of all of our meals. The price of meals wasn't actually something to take lightly, with five members, it could cost quite a bit. Normally, meals on the road consisted of such fare as jerky or hard bread, stuff which was definitely not tasty, but one had to eat it to be able to exert their power as an adventurer. I completely expected that the food he would prepare would be no different, but the food ended up being on a whole other level of deliciousness. The food Makoda prepared was the equal of any famous restaurant in a big city, the soft bread, made from a special recipe from Makoda's homeland, the ham, which was salted just right, the juicy sausages, and the warm soup with lots of fillings. It turned out to be an excellent feast that no one would have expected during travel. We were overjoyed to realize that taking this request was the right choice. Of course it was. After all, we were able to eat tastier food than if we were in town. The only monsters that came out during our travels were small fries like goblins and grey wolves, and even the red boar we encountered wasn't that much trouble to us. Normally, if an adventurer hunted a monster while traveling, they only took the expensive materials like the hide or fangs, ate what they could of the meat which would otherwise spoil or be damaged if taken, and left the rest. However, Makoda had an item box, so we were able to take the meat too. The meat that Makoda cooked and flavored with something from his homeland was, again, a masterpiece. It was so delicious, I would go so far as to say it was the best thing I'd eaten in my entire life. I would have never thought it would be the reason for what happened next. Lured in by the delicious smell of Makoda's food, a Fenrir, a legendary magic beast, appeared. Even though, as a legendary magic beast, nobody alive had ever seen one, we instantly knew that it was a Fenrir and we understood that we could not oppose this absolute pillar of strength. I was really panicked then. I felt like I was already dead it was the first time I felt that cornered since I had become an adventurer. It wasn't surprising, we were facing the legendary Fenrir, something that was said to have destroyed entire countries, a force that mere humans could never hope to stand against. However, the Fenrir did not attack us at all. Instead, it looked at the food Makoda cooked and said, give me some, too. There was no way for us to oppose the Fenrir, so we told Makoda to do as it said. And once it ate Makoda's food, the Fenrir said something unbelievable, I shall form a contract with you. At first, I thought I misheard I had never heard of a legendary Fenrir becoming a human's familiar. Not to mention, the last time anyone had supposedly seen one was 300 years ago. Leaving aside the long-lived elves, we were probably the first and only people alive in the present who had ever seen a Fenrir. And he formed a contract with that Fenrir, which most people never even get to see. Not only that, but the Fenrir was the one that requested it. Given the impossibility of refusing the Fenrir, Makoda ended up forming a contract with him. And so Makoda named the legendary Fenrir, Fell. We witnessed that oddly historic moment. Just, the reason the Fenrir formed a contract was. To think that the legendary beast was lured into a contract by food, the thoughts of us five were in unison at that moment. Makoda, exasperated at that fact, stopped being so nervous and approached Fell normally, but there's no way any of us could have been as sanguine in his shoes. Makoda didn't really understand, but when someone got a familiar as powerful as a Fenrir, not just nobles, but entire countries would take notice. It was a rule that they would try to take in and keep the strong under them. When we made our worries known, Fell's answer was, if they lay a hand on us, they might as well perish. That put cold sweat onto my back, because Fell was clearly capable of making that happen. Hearing that, I could only pray that the nobles or countries didn't do anything stupid. 
Without even minding that, Makota just told Fell, who had a voracious appetite, if you want meat, hunt it yourself. When we heard that, we could only stare open-mouthed and dumbfounded. I give my respect to Makota, who could tell a Fenrir, a legendary beast, to go get his own food. I thought, it might not just be that he was lured in by food, but that, inexplicably, he might have perceived that quality in Makota already and formed a contract for that reason. Fell would probably never form a contract with those that would only think to use him, like nobles or countries. It didn't seem like Makota intended to use Fell's power one bit. Rather, there probably wasn't even a temptation to use his power. To Makota, the real problem was how much Fell ate, after all. Ha ha ha. And the prey Fell hunted after Makota told him to go get his own meat was none other than a rock bird. How could I not be shocked? Rockbirds were B-ranked monsters, the kind of opponent that we as a party would not be assured victory against even if we gave it our all. The last time we fought a rockbird, not only was everyone covered in wounds, but Vincent even broke his right leg. Makota tried to give us all the materials, other than the meat, from such a huge catch just because we butchered it. He said it was payment for the butchering and the red boar meat, but it was too much for what we did. But Makota insisted, so we reluctantly agreed to take it in spite of that. To hunt a rockbird in such a short time. We were vividly reminded that all the legends about Fenrir's were true. Thinking of that, the grilled rockbird was delicious. That sweet and spicy and salty sauce was one in a million. This is bad, thinking about Makota's food is gonna make me drool. Getting into Venon was also a piece of work. Of course, even the fort realized that Fell was the legendary Fenrir, and all the guards were already outside waiting for us. We got them to understand that Makota and Fell were contracted, so we were eventually able to enter, though. Well, either way, if Fell got serious the fort and its guards would be about as tough as air, and the country itself would be in danger, too. They understood that Fell listened to what Makota said because of their contract, and between opposing them and stirring the hornet's nest, or letting them into the country, they would probably choose the latter. Those two were immediately accosted by a messenger as soon as we got to Fallier's, but Fell sent him packing. I think it'll be busy around Makota from now on, but it'll all probably be solved by Fell. Thinking like this, those two, one human and one animal, might make a good pair. Ahh I wonder if Makota'll open up a restaurant somewhere for us. While I was basking in the recollection of that adventure, Vincent went and said that. Eh, oh, I'm hoping for that too. And we can immediately go there and eat. Rita, a bundle of appetite, agreed. I think so too, and I'm not really that particular about my food. Even Franca was of the same opinion. Truly. And the quiet Ramon. Honestly, I'm with them. But, more than that. It'd be nice if we could meet again, everyone nodded in agreement. The flat-faced man that didn't look strong at all but was great at cooking, and fell, the legendary magic beast that was lured into a contract by food. I hope that we can meet those two again. Chapter 4, This and That About Magic And Worldly Affairs Entering the town of Rottle was a chore, not just because Fell was around, but there was a huge line outside the gates to get in already. And then there was a scream when we lined up, too. It was a lot of effort to explain to everyone, he's my familiar, he's fine. As we got closer to the gates, we found, as expected, soldiers in full plate armor stopping us with pointed spears. Stop. Fell, stop for him. When Fell stopped, a soldier drew closer with his spear at the ready. Familiar. Yes. He's my familiar. Please confirm my adventurer's guild card. I handed my guild card over to the soldier. Certainly, it says you have a familiar. Is that a great wolf? Yes. It's amazing that you were able to tame an A-rank monster. Thanks. I think I just got lucky. I think it'll be fine since he's your familiar and tame enough you can ride him, but be aware that if something happens, you'll be the one punished as his master. If there is damage to the city, depending on the extent, you could be sentenced to death or be forced into slavery. Be plenty careful of how your familiar acts. I understand. I sighed in relief as he let me through. They really drove the point home, but they also let me in relatively easily. But still, death or slavery. What the heck? That's super scary. Or rather, there really were slaves here. There's no concept of human rights here in this other world. Other worlds are scary. First, I had to secure a place to sleep. Ah, it would have been faster if I asked the soldier at the gates. When I went back and asked him for an inn where I could stay with my familiar, he recommended the Elmira Inn. To get there, I had to go straight down the road from the gates and turn the third corner. Following his directions, I headed over. There really were a lot of people around, as expected of the biggest city after the capital. There weren't many of them, but I did see, here and there, beastmen with animal ears and tails. Almost all of them had collars on, so they might have been slaves. As Fell and I passed by, they were startled for an instant, but didn't raise a fuss. 
I did hear a whisper of, oh, a familiar, so, maybe there were quite a few adventurers around a town this size with familiars in tow like me. Reaching the Almira Inn, I found that the price for a night's stay with accommodations for a familiar was eight silver. Leaving fell in the shed for animals, I left in search of a bookstore that I heard about at the inn. Entering the bookstore, I found the inside buried in old-fashioned books. I wandered around looking for anything resembling a map, but found nothing. In seeming consolation for my efforts, I found an interesting-looking book instead. It was titled, Beginner Level Magic for Dummies. I think I might want this. I've somehow managed to learn Fireball on my own, but learning other magic too will only increase my options for self-defense. I heard that books are expensive, but I wonder how much this will cost? Excuse me, how much for this book? The owner glanced at me and said, Seven gold. Whoa, expensive. Seven whole gold? Never mind. I was told I could find a library in this town anyway, so let's just look at magic-related books there instead. It's only the map I was aiming for that I'd buy even if it was pricey. Speaking of which, when I asked about a map, he told me, there's no way a mere bookstore would have one. Apparently, only the Imperial Castle or higher-ups in the military would ordinarily have a map. Eh, I see. So maps fall under the category of military secrets, of course I wouldn't be able to get one, in that case. I tried brainstorming a solution to the map problem while I walked back to the inn. I didn't really need a detailed map. As long as I have a general world map that tells me roughly which country is where, I'll be happy. I could probably hear about each country's situation from bars where adventurers gather. Ah, I might be able to hear from adventurers which country borders which. Adventurers travel all over the place for their jobs, after all. If that was the case, would there be an old map in the library somewhere? Even an old one was fine. If I could just figure out the general shape of the continent, and ask adventurers for information so I can fill in the spaces myself, I should be able to make a map of roughly what I need. Right, let's do that. I'll head over to the library tomorrow and try to find an old map ah, and some magic books, too. Okay, today I plan to hole up in the library the whole time. When I told Fel that, he complained heavily about it, mostly about his meals, so I cooked a lot of meat for him in the morning and left him a ton of the sweet breads he seemed to like to hold him over. Well, he should be fine. There was an inn close to the library, too. Yesterday, I bought a college-ruled notepad for memos and a ballpoint pen. Now then, to the library. Let's start from the results. There were no maps. Even though I paid two gold to get in, sigh I spent quite a while looking through this and that, but there was nothing approaching a map in any book. I spent quite a while searching, but I finally gave up hope of finding one and moved over to looking for magic books instead. At least on that side, I learned a lot even though I only had a little time left over by then. What I learned was that everyone had magic power, but if you didn't know how to use it, this is referring to what I did with circulating magic power around my body, I think, then you couldn't activate any magic. The reason why only a certain number of people became mages even though everyone could use magic is because they either couldn't feel the magic in their own bodies, or, even if they could feel it, they couldn't control it. Circulated around their body, well enough. The basics of magic were fire, water, wind, and earth. There were also special elements like ice, lightning, healing, sacred, and holy, as well as race-specific types such as plant and darkness magic. Everyone had an affinity with a basic element, fire, water, wind, or earth, and as long as one knew how to control their magic, any of these basic elements were relatively easy to learn. However, the special elements like ice and lightning didn't even manifest themselves unless one already knew how to use all the basic elements. In the first place, mages that could use all four basic elements were low in number so those who could use ice and lightning as well were extremely few and far between. As for healing magic, one needed to have the affinity for it and have taken classes from the church for a certain amount of time before becoming able to use it. Sacred magic was even more special, and only certain jobs like heroes, holy women, and holy knights could learn it. Apparently, it had spells like light arrow, which shot spears of holy light and had high attack power, and the ultra-effective purifying light, holy light. As for holy magic, it was written that holy magic was rather more legendary than special. First off, one couldn't obtain it unless one had a blessing from a god. It was extremely rare to get a blessing in and of itself, so it wasn't well documented what specific kinds of magic pertained to holy magic in the first place. However, in stories, it was said to have wiped out vast armies of monsters in a single blow, or even to have destroyed entire countries. As for the racial magics plant and darkness, just as the name implied, they were unusable unless one was of a certain race, plant magic for the elves, and darkness magic for the demon folk. I stayed hidden writing notes on what I learned of magic at least until the librarian caught me. I didn't find the maps I was looking for, but I learned quite a bit about magic, so I guess it's okay. I'm home. When I came back to the inn and greeted Fel, I found him. Sulking. 
You are late. All the food I left him in the morning had disappeared without a trace. Sorry, sorry. Humph. You were so late in returning, I was going crazy with hunger. I'll cook now, so cheer up. I'll even go heavy on the meat. I want food from your world. Sigh, that. But if he eats too much of the food from my world, he'll start overflowing with energy. Still though, I was late. It should be fine if I give him a little. I used my skill to buy some yakitori and tonkatsu. Of course, I kept the amount on the lower side. That said, it's lower by fell standards. I took the yakitori off the skewers and put them on a plate, and the tonkatsu on a different plate. This will be it for now for food from my world. I'll cook the rest now, so wait. Fell started murmuring about the amount being small and stuff, but I ignored him and started cooking the meat. The flavoring was the usual steak sauces as well as yakiniku sauce. When I piled the meat on a plate and put it in front of Fell, he chomped down on it greedily. There was some place I wanted to go after this as well, so I didn't want him bothering me. Even though I didn't find any maps in the library, I still wanted to at least ask the adventurers about the states of all the different countries. Hey? Now that I think about it. I looked at Fell while he was eating and remembered something, the magic I learned about in the library. I heard about holy magic, and if I remember correctly, Fell was also able to use holy magic. I appraised Fell. Name Fell H1014 Race Fenrir Level 906 HP 9843 MP 9481 Attack 9036 Defense 9765 Agility 9684 Skills Wind Magic, Fire Magic, Water Magic, Earth Magic, Ice Magic, Lightning Magic, Holy Magic, Barrier Magic, Rending Claws, Body Reinforcement, Physical Attack Resistance, Magic Attack Resistance, MP Efficiency, Appraisal Blessings Blessing of the Goddess of the Wind, Ninrir. Holy Magic. As I thought, he had it. Well, it did say one wouldn't be able to use it if they didn't have a God's Blessing, so thinking about it the other way around, it wasn't unusual for him to have it because he had the Goddess of the Wind, Ninrir's Blessing. Fel really was a legendary magic beast, wasn't he? I couldn't really think of him that way normally, though. Hmm? Wait, the book said stuff about wiping out armies of monsters in one blow or destroying entire countries, but I feel like recently I heard something about destroying an entire country. Burp yes, that was good. Fell said, looking mighty satisfied now that his belly was full. Fell, 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 ah. It was you. I once again left Fell at the inn and found my way to a random bar in the town, in order to get information out of the adventurers here. This town was large, so thinking that there would be adventurers at any bar I went into, I just arbitrarily picked one. Apparently I hit the jackpot, though. It seemed this place was a favorite of adventurers, and there were a lot of them gathered here. I had my eyes on four adventurers that were probably in a party together, and approached them. Excuse me, I'd like to ask you something, do you have time? I promptly flagged down an employee and ordered all four of them ale. Haha, I see you know what you're doing. The brawny skinhead that looked like the leader of the group slapped my shoulder and led me to an empty seat. So what do you want to ask? I'm acting as something of a peddler while I travel around, but it hasn't been that long since I've started. That's why I was hoping to hear stories about different countries and their situations from adventurers who are chock full of experience. Oh, is that all? If that's the case, you asked the right people. When the leader said that, a beastman, is he a tiger, who was just as brawny as the leader, nodded and said, it's true, we've traveled to a lot of places. Oi, what do you think you're looking at? When I was caught gawking at the tiger, beastman, he turned on me threateningly. Are you stupid or something? There aren't exactly a lot of beastmen who aren't slaves walking around in this place. When he was told that by the other members, the beastmen relented, nodding in understanding. I see. It's true that if you think of a beastman in this place, you'd think of a slave. Even so, this country is one of the better ones. At the beastman's words, everyone else nodded in agreement, starting with the leader. Apparently, in countries like the Geisler Empire or the Holy Kingdom of Rubinov, or even the Kingdom of Solace, which was regarded as a vassal state of Rubinov, treatment of races other than humans, such as elves, dwarves, and beastmen, was particularly cruel. The Geisler Empire was a hard-in-the-paint military dictatorship, and anybody who didn't obey the emperor only had death to look forward to. Beastmen, elves, and dwarves were all treated basically like livestock with no hesitation. The Holy Kingdom of Rubinov was a religious country that preached human supremacy, where all the believers of the Rubinov Church decried non-believers as heretics, and proclaimed their destined death and destruction. As such, Races which believed in their own gods such as elves, dwarves, and beastmen were all branded as heretics and were the victims of casually committed atrocities. And it's said that treatment in the Kingdom of Solace, a vassal state of Rubinov, was much the same. 
Any elves, dwarves, or beastmen becoming slaves in these three countries had nothing but tragedy awaiting them. Compared to that, slaves in Venon were given wages, even though they were small, and were guaranteed a minimum amount of livelihood, so it was a good sight better. What about the kingdom of Rijzeger? I've passed through there, but I feel like I didn't see any beastmen at all. Ah, that place, too. Just like Rubinov, Rijzeger believed in human supremacy, and so from the start did not allow entry to elves, dwarves, and beastmen. However, the current king was rushing recklessly in his desire to expand his territory, and was constantly fighting something. It seemed to be an open secret that there were elves, dwarves, and beastmen being press ganged to fight in those wars that shouldn't have been there. It was also famously rumored that Rijzeger nobles liked to keep elf, dwarf, and beastmen women as sex slaves. This world, it's not kind. The kingdom of Marvale, which bordered Rijzeger, was the home country of these four adventurers, and they said that it was a good country that does not discriminate between races, so it was safe to live there without worry. The only problem was, they weren't blessed with good neighbors, and had to constantly be on watch for those that would steal their territory. To their north was demon folk territory, to their south lay the Geisler Empire, and to their east, Rijzeger and Rubinov. In truth, there had been several border skirmishes between Marvale and Rijzeger recently, and with both sides' armies glaring at each other from across the border, it was rumored that war was just a matter of time. Now that I think about it, I'd already heard that Rijzeger and Marvale were close to war at Kiel's. Apparently, these four adventurers saw that their country was close to war and decided to cut and run. If we had family in the country, we wouldn't have done that, but all four of us are orphans, you see. I was told that all of them were raised in the same orphanage and just became an adventurer party like that. It seemed that the Adventurers Guild had told countries not to stop C-rank adventurers and above from moving between countries, and because said countries couldn't afford to upset a gigantic organization like the Adventurers Guild, they had to grudgingly accept. We had to pass through Rijzeger to get here, but their stares when they saw me were disgusting. The Beastman member said that as if he were spitting something out. Hmm, from what I've heard, is this world okay? I feel like I've come to a whale of a world, here. Continuing our conversation, next up was the country to Rijzeger's east, the kingdom of Clerson. This country had always had a certain kind of history to it, but right now it seemed there was strife within the royal family. And it was tearing the country apart. Next was the space from the south to the central area of the continent, but apparently it was occupied by a large amount of small countries with various names. The area was ruled and fought over by various warlords, and it seemed not even adventurers went that way too often. But weren't there a couple of countries that allied together near the coast five or six years ago? What were they called? The Quine Republic. Right, right. There was a Quine Republic, but they are on the verge of splitting, it said. Right, let's not go there. After that, it was the kingdoms of Ermin and Leonhardt to the east of the continent. Neither kingdom discriminated between races and were comparatively free countries. And, apparently, both their armies were super strong, so there wasn't much worry of them getting invaded. Not to mention, the two kingdoms were allied and their internal political landscape was stable. We're currently heading for Leonhardt ourselves. We'll go to Ermin eventually as well. Apparently, there were a lot of dungeons in both countries, so being an adventurer in either one was a pretty tasty prospect. There it is, dungeons. As I thought, they existed. I'm a little interested, but I'll probably never enter one. After all, it's gotta be safety first. Life is important. But, hearing about all this from the adventurers, I've figured out my destination. It's gotta be either of the kingdoms of Ermin or Leonhardt. They're both stable, so either way, it doesn't matter which one I go to. The problem is whether Fell would understand the route if I tried to explain it to him. This is the exact situation where a map would be great. If only I had a map. Hmm? What, you want a map? The leader seemed to have heard me muttering to myself. Eh, eh, yet. Yeah. It doesn't have to be too detailed, but I was thinking it would really help if I had one. When I said that, the four adventurers looked at each other, and then started whispering. Hey, to tell you the truth, we have a map. What, really? There was a senior adventurer that treated us kindly, and he gave it to us when he retired. Oh, that's great. I'm jealous. I want a map, too. Of course, it isn't detailed like a higher up in the military would have. And only just shows which country is where, yeah yeah. It's not like I really need anything that detailed. It's fine with me, as long as I know where countries are in relation to each other. So here's the thing, if you want it, we can give it to you. W wait, really? We've already memorized this map, you see. We'll get by even without it. So what do you say to one gold for it? One gold? Hmm. I want a map, but one gold is a lot. I do understand that paper is expensive, though. One gold, that really makes it hard to make a decision. Is it all right if I see it? I asked. 
it should be easier to decide after I see it. Sure. The leader took a folded up map from his pocket. Here it is. I unfurled the map and took a look. Yeah, this really is rough. But I'll be able to understand the positions of countries with this. I wanted it, but the price made me hesitate. I'm telling you this now, but this is pretty valuable. I knew that, the bookstore didn't have it, and there weren't any in the library, either. But since you've treated us like this, I'll make it a little cheaper. How about eight silver? Eight silver? I do want a map, and paper is expensive. HRMMM. Okay, let's buy it. It's better to have one, and at eight silver it's cheap enough that I can internalize it as an expense. I'll take it for eight silver. Great, it's a deal. I handed eight silver over to the leader and pocketed the map. Now then, we have to be up early tomorrow, so we'll be going back now. Sure. Thanks for telling me all that stuff. For the map, too. No problem. Later. Saying that, the four of them left the bar. Who? I got a map. The bookstore didn't have one, and I went to the library thinking that if I had an old map, I could just renew it by asking adventurers, but in the end the library didn't have one either. I was already thinking of giving up on a map, but to think I would get one here I lucked out. Asterisk PFF. Asterisk. Snicker, what? There's a bunch of people that look like adventurers glancing. At me and laughing. PFT. Hey, you guys shouldn't laugh. One of the adventurers said to the others. You're saying that while you're laughing. Uh huh, did I do something? Is it okay if I get mad? I said that to the man while still sulking a little from being laughed at. The man replied, sorry, sorry, while not looking sorry at all. Earlier, you know, we were listening in on your conversation. You were tricked. Hey? What's he saying? Tricked. What does he mean? You bought a map from them, didn't you? I did, but what of it? The Adventurer's Guild sells those. What? No no no, W wait a minute. The Adventurer's Guild, sells. Maps? Wait a a a a a a a a a I've got one too. See. The map he showed me after saying that was exactly the same as the one I just bought from the Adventurer's for eight silver. While I was at a loss for words, staring numbly at the map, the man dropped another bomb. By the way, that map, it's one silver at the Adventurer's Guild. One, silver. One silver into eight silver. Gah, I was tricked. They sure fleeced you, turning one silver into eight. Gah ha 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 ha. The rest of the adventurers in the bar joined in on his laughter. Damn it, this isn't funny. It's actually making me want to cry. This map is something the Adventurer's Guild makes themselves by talking to adventurers. So it's set at a price where we can easily buy it even though it's made of paper. He's right. Well, there's also adventurers that don't buy one and get around with their own memory, but most people buy the map. And they fill in the topographical details of places and villages they've been in themselves, like, here's a lake, or even what monsters appear in an area. At any rate, they write down extra details on the map and make it their own. There are also adventurers that stay in one country, so they make a copy of just the one country and write more detailed maps of that place, too. Naturally, such maps are an adventurer's treasure, so they wouldn't go around showing it to other people so easily. Now that I think about it, I think the Merchant's Guild also sells a similar map. Well, both adventurers and merchants travel around a lot. The adventurers that were laughing each chimed in with their own piece. So not only the Adventurer's Guild, but even the Merchant's Guild sells these maps. The owner of the bookstore didn't say a word about that, though. The bookstore is also a part of the Merchant's Guild, but since it's a bookstore it doesn't seem like the owner would have to travel across countries or even different towns, so he might have just not known about it. At any rate, to all of these adventurers who are laughing, please tell me this sort of thing beforehand. That's because you're in the wrong for being tricked, they were all quite correct. Grrrrnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnn
even though the way I got it was, something. I still managed to get the map I wanted. Yeah, that's good. After I eat breakfast with Fel, let's hurry and prepare to leave. Right then, let's go. Are we done already? Yeah, let's hurry up. Leaving the town of Rottle, we steadily made progress along the road. Fel, about where we're going, I'm thinking either the Kingdom of Ermin or Leonhardt. Even if you tell me the name of the country I would not understand. Which direction is it? Both Ermin and Leonhardt are to the east. They're on the eastern coast. Oh, the eastern ocean? There are sea serpents and crocans there. Those are all delicious in their own way, I is that an ominous name I hear? I mean, sea serpents sound like underwater dragons, and isn't the crocan a ginger mouse squid? I think both of them are boss level monsters. No way no way no way, let's pretend like I didn't hear that, yet. Actually, Fell is okay with fish? Of course I prefer meat, but every once in a while I eat fish, too. I see. Now that I think about it, he eats snack bread and says it's good, so I guess he can just eat anything. Hmm, talking about fish has made me hungry. Cutting through the forest will lead us to the same road leading east, and there is a lake in the middle, too. Oi, we are moving. Hey? Is that a done deal? H hey, will we be okay cutting through the forest like that? Like, aren't there dangerous monsters and stuff? Humph, who do you think I am? There is no need to worry about that. Eh, uh, is that so? But still, it's fine for Fell because he's strong, but there's no way for me to do that. I will keep a barrier around you permanently because you are weak, do not worry. Weak, I mean, it's true, it's all fact, but it still hurts to hear out loud. Hurry up and get on my back. Yet, yeah, yet. Yeah. When I climbed onto Fell's back, he leapt off into the forest. Let's go. F fast, fast. Too fast. Go slow or rrr I screamed while clinging onto Fell's back for dear life as he fairly flew through the forest. Hang on tightly so you are not shaken off. I will be going at this speed until we reach the lake. A victory for his appetite. God damn it, why did his gluttony have to assert itself now? Kya a a a a a a a a a my screams echoed through the forest. Thanks to Fell putting me through hell, we reached the lake. Ha, 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 I thought I'd die. Running through the forest at that kind of speed, even just remembering it, shivers it took everything I had just to cling on to Fell for dear life. Flopping onto the ground, I felt painfully well just how reassuring hard earth was until Fell's face popped up above me. Oi. We are eating fish, come on, Fell, at least let me rest a little. Man, Fell's appetite never stops, does it? Still, if you want to eat fish, how do you plan on catching them? We don't have a fishing rod. Don't tell me you plan on going into the lake yourself. This is best for catching fish. Saying that, fell. Crackle 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 lightning danced across the lake's surface, and fish popped up to the surface one after another. Soon, the lake's surface was covered in fish. Fell, dude, that's too much. That was probably just lightning magic, but what do you plan to do with all those fish? I used magic to gather them at the shore, so take what you like. Take what I like? Are all of them dead? They are all stunned into a death-like state from my lightning magic. They will revive eventually. Eh, uh, I see. That must be tough for the fish. Well, I'll go pick some out I guess. Oh, there are a lot of purple fish here. From appraisal, I learned that they're called violet trout. They're about 30 centimeters long, so they might be good grilled with salt. I shoved the violet trout into my item box. Of course, I don't plan to put all the fish in there, but taking a little extra to save for later should be fine. Even I wanted to eat fish since it's been all meat lately, so leaving some extra fish in my item box so I can eat some whenever I want wasn't a bad idea. Hey, what's this pretty big one? There was a silver fish around 80 centimeters long. From appraisal, it was called a king trout. If it was this big, even I might be able to fillet it. Let's take a lot of this as well. Ooh, and that is? In the middle of the violet and king trout, there was a giant fish around 3 meters in length. Wow, is that not a lake shark? How rare. Asking about it, it seemed to be a rare shark that even Fell had rarely seen in his long life. Although it doesn't seem to be fit to eat. Well, even if we couldn't eat it, it was still a large monster. Not to mention, if it was as rare as Fell said, I should be able to sell it. For now, I stowed it in my item box too. Take some of this, too. It tingles the tip of your tongue and is. Delicious. Fell said, and used wind magic to gather some fish around me. Whoa, what the heck is this? It was a shocking pink fish with blue stripes around 50 centimeters long. It was the kind of color that screams, I have poison in me, though. Appraising it, I found out that its name is Poison Lake Fish, and it's inedible. Actually, 
This thing clearly had poison in it. Is Fell okay? Fell, you've been eating these, right? Yes, several times. It was delicious and left a tingling sensation at the tip of mine tongue. I think that tingling was poison. It looks like this fish is called the poison lake fish. Did you not appraise it before eating, Fell? I would not do something as annoying as that. Since I have a God's blessing, something like poison would never work, anyway. Eh right, God's blessing. Man, being able to invalidate status ailments must be great. I'm so jealous. It might not work on you since you have a God's blessing, but it's still poisonous to me. I can't take these. Not to mention, you don't have to eat something poisonous like this. I've been making your meals properly, haven't I? Mm, that is true, but this is still pretty. I can't put something poisonous with other ingredients. I'll make something with the violet and king trout I got, so hold it in. Mmrmrmm, fine. Now then, it's the first fish I've had in a long while. How should I cook it? I can grill the violet trout whole with salt, and then fillet the king trout. Hmm, roasting the king trout in foil as well as cooking it a la muniere would be good. If I do that though, I'm out of butter, and I'd need to buy flour as well. I'd also like mushrooms for the foil roast, so let's go shopping. Opening up the online supermarket, I bought butter, flour, and mushrooms, as well as the usual spices and seasonings I used frequently. I also didn't forget the foil I needed to foil roast the fish. Next is. Oh, this is good every once in a while. Once I'd got everything I needed, it was almost time to start cooking. I'm going to grill the violet trout whole with salt, so it would be best to have an open fire. First up is gathering firewood, then. I quickly gathered enough firewood from the surrounding forest, and set. Fire to it. Of course, I used magic. I'd done some training in it, so I'd become quite good at controlling fire magic. With this, I'm prepared to grill. Start off by removing the violet trout's innards. There are people that like the bitterness of the innards, but I'm not one of them, so I take them out. Use some sticks found while gathering firewood to skewer the violet trout and sprinkle them with salt, then stab the sticks into the ground by the fire and grill them. While that's happening, move on to the king trout. Start off by filleting them. Whoops. Too much of the meat got stuck to the spine while trying to remove it. Well, it'll be fine even if the meat is a little lopsided as long as the spine is removed. Next up is the foil roast. Coat some aluminum foil with butter and sprinkle the coating with onions. On top of that, place an appropriately sized cut of king trout onto the foil and season it with salt and pepper. Layer some shimmeji mushrooms and Japanese hackberry onto the fish and lightly douse it with Japanese sake before adding a pat of butter, and then close the foil. Leave it at the edge of the fire to steam and cook. Now, the munier. Season a cut of the king trout with salt and pepper and let it sit for a little before wiping away excess moisture. Then, coat it with a thin layer of flour and cook the surface in a frying pan. Oh, the violet trout's done grilling, and the foil roast has swelled to bursting so it looks like it's steamed nicely. Take the well-done violet trout off the skewers and line them up on a plate. Open up the foil of the foil roast, add some ponzu, and it's done. Ponzu was used today on a whim. By the way it's also good to add soy sauce with the butter to make soy butter flavored foil roast and it's even delicious with just salt and pepper. Plate the cooked munier and add pre-made tartar sauce to finish it. The usual soy butter munier is also good, but butter is being used for the foil roast as is, so tartar sauce is a good substitute this time. Fell, food's ready as soon as I said that, Fell came flying. He bit straight into the whole grilled violet trout. Hum, HRMM, fish after a long while is delicious. That's nice to hear. Now then, I should eat too. Accompanying that, I had canned beer that I saw on the online supermarket and suddenly wanted to drink, because it's been a while. I'm not that fond of alcohol, but I do feel like drinking every now and again. The skin on the whole grilled violet trout was crispy and delicious. The mushrooms umami had soaked into the foil roasted king trout, so it paired well with the refreshing taste of the ponzu. As for the munier, the light white meat of the king trout went great with tartar sauce. I've done pretty well here, in my opinion. It had great synergy with the beer, too. Gulp, man the beer is great. It'd been a long time, so the fish was satisfying, too. There is no more. I want seconds. This one wrapped in silver, and this one with the white on it. This white stuff has a strange taste but it is good. Ah, sure sure. Foil roast and munier, right? So Fell took a liking to the tartar sauce, hey? It is tasty. I made more of the foil roast and munier while sipping on my beer. I made some soy butter and simple salt and pepper foil roasts, but kept the munier with tartar sauce because Fell seemed to like it. I made more and more food and brought it out for Fell. Sigh that was delicious. It has been a while since I have eaten fish. Of course Fell likes meat the most, but it looks like he's cool with fish too, so I'll cook some every now and again. 
Luckily we got a lot of fish today, and even an extra large one. Let's have the Adventurer's Guild butcher it the next time I go to one. Stone bullet. One small stone projectile flew with a whoosh, before losing speed 20 meters away and dropping to the ground. Sigh. I was practicing earth magic now, but it wasn't going so well. I'd become able to throw some pretty respectable fireballs, so I was testing if I could use other magic. Thinking it an obvious water spell, I tried chanting, water. Ball, but nothing happened. Next, I tried wind with wind cutter, but that also turned up nothing. Lastly, I tried earth with stone bullet, and a stone so small it might have been a grain of sand popped out of the palm of my hand. While I was happy to disocker I had an affinity for earth magic, Fell, who was watching me, laughed out of his nose again. Frustrated, I started practicing earth magic hard, but just like before, it wasn't going well, and I had no idea why. I think I'm properly circulating the magic power in my body, though. I tried testing this out with a fireball and it worked out. Why doesn't stone bullet work, then? It's a little pathetic but it does activate, so I guess there's nothing else but to practice a lot. I am amazed at how bad you are at learning. Growling. Not everybody's an amazing cheater like you, you know. How about another battle? It worked the last time when you were trying to learn fire magic, did it not? Just that one sentence from Fell brought memories of that swarm of goblins to my head. Nightmare, it's a nightmare. Shiver don't joke with me. I never want to go through that again. I couldn't deny that I learned how to make a proper fireball, but the fear that came with being left alone in the middle of that swarm of goblins was not trivial. But at this rate you will never learn earth magic. Sigh. This is why geniuses suck. If everyone learned everything right away there would be no strife in the world. Normal people like me have to practice. With dinner finished, I was thinking it was about time to sleep, so I started to ready the sleeping spaces for Fel and I. That's when I noticed, at my feet, when did that get there? Whoa. It was jiggly, transparent, a bit larger than a soccer ball, and it was slowly moving. Is this a slime? It is. Eh? Fell, didn't you put up a barrier? Of course I did. It might have already been inside the barrier when I erected it. What's the point of a barrier if there's already something inside? Humph, is there really a need to be so scared of such a puny thing that does not even qualify to be called a small fry? You really are a coward. Yeah, yeah, I'm just a huge wimp. At any rate, are slimes really so weak as to have Fell say that? Won't slimes attack us? Evolved forms do, but a slime of that level is just feed. Not to mention from its size, that slime has probably just been born. I see. In my world, slimes were treated as easy beginner class monsters, so I guess in this world slimes are the lowest class of monster, too. So this thing won't attack me? Interested, I tried poking the slime at my feet with my finger. Jiggle jiggle it's cool to the touch and jiggling form reminded me of gelatin. It was fun, so I kept poking at it. In reaction, the slime formed a tentacle and poked my finger in what felt like a fearful manner. Hey, it might be kinda cute. At any rate, what a friendly slime. Hey, fell, are slimes usually this friendly towards humans? That is probably just because it is a freshly born slime. Normally, if it were to see anything other than another slime, it would run or hide. I see. A newborn slime, hey? How's its status? I appraised the friendly slime at my feet. Name age 3 days race baby slime level 1 HP 2 MP 1 attack 1 defense 2. Agility 2 skills. So weak. 3 days old, he really was just born. His race is even baby slime. From now on, he was going to steadily grow from a baby slime to a regular slime, is how it feels, definitely. But right now, as a baby slime, he was so weak there was no way he'd survive meeting another monster. Even though he was pretty cute and friendly. I want to at least feed him something. Slimes had the impression of being able to eat anything, but I wonder if that was really true? Hey, do slimes eat anything? They even eat pebbles on the ground. So they even eat pebbles. They really are true omnivores. If that's the case, would that be okay? Thinking that, I removed something that was piling up in my item box, the trash that was left over from everything I bought so far from the online supermarket. The cardboard boxes were for putting under our futons, so those were being used, but everything else. Like vinyl bags that had vegetables in them, or boxes of instant soup, empty spice bottles, empty cans and pet bottles, a lot of stuff had been piling up. I tried putting an empty can in front of the slime and asking, is it okay? After poking at it with a tentacle, it enveloped the can whole. The slime was transparent, so I saw the can dissolve in a matter of moments. Whoa, that's impressive. The slime wrapped a tentacle around my leg like it wanted more. More, hey? Wait a second. I put more and more of the trash that had been piling up in front of the slime. And the slime enveloped more and more of the trash, and dissolved it. Whoa, 
I'm all empty. All the trash that was piling up is completely gone. The slime ate all of the trash from my world that I'd been accumulating. Honestly speaking, I was having trouble figuring out what to do about the trash. I couldn't just throw it away without a care, so until now I'd just been leaving it in my item box. From that perspective, this slime did a good job. You're amazing, aren't you? When I said that, the slime started bouncing up and down like a bouncy ball. Hmm? Do you understand what I'm saying? The slime that was bouncing. Up and down jumped up onto my chest. Whoa. Supporting the slime with my arms as I held it, the slime jiggled like it was satisfied. Wow, you really are friendly for a slime, I said while petting it. Hey, that thing has become your familiar, you know. Hey. I am saying that that slime has become your familiar. What? I haven't done anything to form a contract with it, though. As long as that slime wants to contract with you, and you accept it, the contract will be completed. Eh? But I haven't accepted anything of the sort. Whatever you say, the contract is already finalized. You can check your status. I checked my status at Fell's suggestion. Name Makota, Tsuyoshi Makota, age 27 job victim from another world level 3 HP 110 MP 110 attack 83 defense 82 agility 78 skills appraisal, item box, fire magic, familiars, contracted magic beasts Fenrir, baby slime unique skill online supermarket. What? When did baby slime get added to my familiars list? I decided to name it Sui. I won't hear any comments about how I've got no naming sense. A few days after Sui became my familiar. Now, Sui's status was like this. Name Sui age 6 days race baby slime level 8 HP 24 MP 21 attack 18 defense 20 agility 21 skills. Somehow, its level had risen drastically. It was probably because it had eaten so much trash from my world. Nothing happened when merely using something bought from my online supermarket, for example, sleeping in a futon didn't raise HP or MP or anything like that, so it must be happening when one takes something from another world into their body. By the way, that effect where the person's HP or MP or whatever gets buffed for a limited amount of time doesn't happen to Sui. Thinking about it, it might be because Sui's weak so it just actually leveled Sui up. And, it gives temporary buffs to those who are a certain level or above. If that isn't the case, then it's a question of if the food is causing Sui's level ups. However, testing that was fairly hard. After all, only a slime would eat trash. I'd like to test it out if I found another slime, but I hadn't seen any at all. When I tried asking Fell, he said that, since slimes are so weak unless they're evolved forms, they fundamentally always hit or ran, so it was rare to see them. Well, it wasn't a bad thing for Sui to level up, so it was all good. I was really thankful for Sui's presence, too. It not only ate our trash, it even cleaned the utensils and cookware and stuff. At first it ate the plate too, but when I said to not eat the plate and just eat the rest of the stuff I wanted to clean, it did as I said and cleaned the plate. Thanks to Sui, even the tough stains that were left on the frying pan had been scoured completely off. I'd been using soap bought from my online supermarket to clean my cookware and utensils up until now, but that took quite a bit of water to wash away all. The bubbles and foam. It was fine if there was a river or other source of water nearby, but if not, things got pretty tough. Thanks to Sui, that gets done with only a minimum of water. It even happily eats other world trash Sui's a really good kid. Sui's favorite spot was inside the cloth shoulder bag that I got from the clothing store where I sold my suit in the capital of Ridge Seizure, which I'd completely forgotten about by now. Is it because it likes the spot? But it's well behaved when he's in it. As for me, I was on Fell's back. Right now, we were in the middle of running through the forest. That said, I was fine because Fell had dropped the speed compared to before. Fell, the sun's gone down, so let's make camp around here for today. I called out to Fell, and he gradually dropped his speed before coming to a gentle stop. I want meat. Yeah, yeah. I gave Fell a lot of meat, and had some myself with vegetables, while Sui ate the other world trash that was left over. After dinner, I felt a sudden craving for something sweet. It really does happen, sometimes, it's just gotta be something sweet. Looking over my online supermarket, I found something that looked great. That Doriyaki looks delicious, when Fell heard me whisper that, he slowly got up and came over. What looks delicious? I will not forgive you if you keep it to yourself. I get it, I get it. Wait, is Fell okay with SW, right, that's a stupid question. There's no way he's bad with sweets after eating all those snack breads I got him. Sui was also jiggling like it wanted to try. One each should be fine for Sui and I, and five should be enough for Fell to get a taste. Thinking that I'd want tea if we were gonna eat seven doriyaki and some other Japanese sweets, I bought some green tea bags as well. I removed the wrapper from the doriyaki and put it in front of Fell on a plate. I also took the doriyaki out of its package for Sui, but I placed them both in front of it. As for me, 
I started boiling some water for the tea first. Man, dorayaki is good. Slurp tea, too. Japanese sweets really are best with green tea. Ah, uh -huh, this outer skin pairs well with the black insides. This is delicious. Just like I thought he would, Fell put down his share with a single gulp. Sui was also jiggling constantly like it was excited, I guess Sui liked it too. It even properly ate all the packaging. HRMM, I feel a little guilty for eating sweets before bed, but there really is nothing more delicious. Yawn crawling out of my futon, I found that Sui had woken up with me. Sui slept with me in the same futon. Sui must have liked it when it got into the futon with me on the first day, now when I go to sleep, it always crawls right in after me. Fell who almost always woke up around the same time as I did, was already awake. Hmm? He somehow seems different than usual. Hey, does your stomach ache or something? It does not. In the first place I cannot get sick. That does not matter right now, anyway. I have to tell you something. Fell was acting really formal, or rather was speaking rather meekly, so I fixed my posture. Last night, the goddess of the wind, Ninrir, passed an oracle down to me. What? Does that sort of thing also happen when you have a god's blessing? I asked Fel, and apparently it did happen every once in a while. Fel said that in his case, Ninrir appeared in his dreams. Ninrir's oracle was about you. Hawa? Me? Thanks to Ninrir's magnanimous consideration, she has decided she would be okay with giving you her blessing. However, once a week, you must offer unto her sweets from your world by putting it on an altar and praying. Why sweets from my world? No way. Did she start wanting to try some after seeing us travel and eat the snack breads and dorayaki I bought? No, no. There's no way that could be true. This instance is due to Ninrir's mercy after hearing your wish for a blessing, but of course she cannot give you the same level of blessing as I have. However, if it's a god's blessing, small, she is able to grant it to you as long as you offer her sweets from your world once a week, isn't this just because she wants to eat sweets? Goddess, what are you doing? It seems that with a god's blessing, small, you do get the benefit of invalidating status ailments so long as it is not an extremely strong curse or an instant death effect, not to mention that it will become easier to activate magic. Hey, really? Even if it doesn't work against instant death or strong curses, invalidating status ailments and improving the activation of magic is nothing but good. I shouldn't be looking a gift horse in the mouth, but is it really okay for me to receive a blessing? This is Ninrir's mercy. Take that to heart and accept it. Yes sir. If I can get a god's blessing, small. I'll offer sweets or pray or whatever. To be able to invalidate status ailments and improve my magic, I'm nothing but grateful. Of course, if it means receiving a blessing, I'll offer gifts and pray. But, if I have to offer the sweets on an altar and I don't have an altar, what do I do? I mean, we're in the middle of a journey, you know? I have to offer prayers once a week, but it's not like there's a neighborhood temple or anything like that. Anything will work as an altar. Speaking in extremes, you can even use that rock over there as an altar. The most important thing is to put your feelings into your prayer. Close your eyes and put your thankful feelings to the goddess Ninrir into your prayer. By doing so, your prayers will reach the goddess Ninrir. Ho ho ho, I see. Well then, let's get a head start and offer a prayer to Ninrir now. Uh huh, what to use as an altar? Uh huh, a cardboard box should do fine. That way, there'll always be one in my item box anyway. Putting the offering inside a box that I hadn't flattened yet, I used it as an altar. There is something I forgot to tell you. Ninrir requests red bean buns, jam buns, and cream buns as her first offering. To use your oracle to order food, goddess, you sure know your stuff. The goddess must have been watching us at least starting from when we ate the sweet bread. Women go crazy for sweets, after all. Even the women at work outright stated that sweet things go in a different stomach. Most likely, she was wondering what she should do while watching us eat the bread, but the dorayaki yesterday broke her patience. I used my skill to buy the breads that the goddess requested as well as coffee milk to go along with it. I placed them all onto the cardboard box I was using as an altar. Rather than an offering, it's more like a tribute. Putting my hands together, I closed my eyes and prayed. O oh goddess of the wind, Ninrir, I am offering what you have requested. As well as coffee milk, which goes well with it. Please grant unto me your blessing. I am humbly in your care. I opened my eyes and found the offerings I had placed atop the cardboard altar gone. Whoa, they really disappeared. I wasn't sure how gods in this world worked, but it looks like she received it. Do I have a god's blessing now? I checked my status, A and D. Blessings blessing of the goddess of the wind, Ninrir, small. I now had a blessings entry at the end that told me that I had the blessing of the goddess of the wind, Ninrir, small. I am forever thankful for thy blessing, O goddess. Thank you, O great Ninrir. 
Next time, I'll offer Doriyaki as tribute. Who, got me a god's blessing, small. I'd been trying to find a slime in order to get to the bottom of Sui's level ups, but I had a thought. If the question is whether or not the food levels it up, why not just give it regular food and see what happens? Man, I'd been so focused on having it clean up our trash I had completely overlooked this simple experiment. I'm such an idiot. Thinking about it, Sui had no problems eating the Doriyaki. It was P.A.R. for the course, seeing as how Sui was a true omnivore that ate anything, though. It would have been great if I'd realized it sooner, but it was such a normal way to do things that I'd gone right past it. That being the case, I'd decided to make a portion for Sui from today's meal as well, so that I could test things. I'd save the trash I would have fed it, and will just give it to Sui tomorrow. First, I appraised Sui before I gave it food. Name Sui age 8 days race baby slime level 10 HP 28 MP 27 attack 25. Defense 28 agility 27 skills. Sui was already level 10. Its stats were all still really weak, but it was leveling up way too fast. I guess the rest will have to wait until after it eats. For today, I had already prepared something that went well with rice, so I was going to cook that, a miso roast pork bowl. I started making it yesterday with orc meat. Cut the orc meat thickly, and pierce it several times with a fork to allow the flavor to seep in. Miso, sake, myron, and sugar is what the miso marinade was made from. Put the orc meat in a ZLOC bag with the marinade, and leave it to marinate. By the way, adding grated garlic or grated ginger to this mixture to your taste is also nice. I had it in my item box so time wouldn't pass, but before I put it in I let it sit for around 2 hours to let the flavor sink in. Before I cook the meat I should make the rice, so I do that with the usual clay pot. And this is important the cabbage to be laid under the meat. Having this will add a refreshing element to the richness and heaviness of the miso flavor. The cabbage must be chopped finely, though having the occasional thick one will add to its charm. Cook the main part of this dish, the orc, in the frying pan. Miso burns easily, so be careful. Once the rice is finished, put it in a bowl, and put the finely chopped cabbage on top of it. Then, once the meat is cut into easy to eat pieces, place the miso roasted orc on top, and it's finished. For fell, Prepare a deep dish rather than a bowl. Fell, suey, food. Oh, what a smell to whet the appetite. Wet his appetite. Isn't Fell's appetite always at full blast? Just like always, Fell bit into it with huge chomps. Suey, you can eat this for today as well. But you can't eat the bowl, got it? After I said that, Suey jiggled a bit and then enveloped the bowl. I started eating as well. Orc meat is delicious as usual. Why is it so good? This other world really is a wonder. The miso seeped in well. This dish is well done. Eating some meat and cabbage with rice all at once is the best. More. Make it with extra meat. Yeah yeah, of course you'd want meat. I made another miso roast pork bowl, extra meat, for fell and gave it to him. Sui also looked like it wanted more, so I obliged it. It seemed the miso roast was popular with both of them. Putting in grated garlic and ginger, using honey instead of sugar, or putting in shiokoji all seem like fun ways to enhance the taste so let's make this again later. I sliced the orc meat thickly this time, but cutting it thin also seemed like it would be good. Right, let's prepare some more miso marinade. Now then, let's see what's up with Sui's stats since it's eaten. I appraised Sui as it swayed back and forth, evidently satisfied. Name Sui age 8 days race baby slime level 10 HP 28, plus 1, MP 27, plus 1, attack 25 defense 28, plus 1, agility 27 skills. Oh. Sui's been buffed. In other words, food buff stats for a period of time, while what normally wasn't food raised levels? But who would benefit from this? In the first place, aren't slimes about the only things that could eat stuff that isn't considered food? In other words, it's for slimes? For just slimes to be able to level up as much as they like what the heck? I don't really understand this system. In the first place all this stuff was from a different world, so rather than a system, didn't it just become this way after coming over to this world? Well, at any rate, it all just meant that Sui was the only one that could easily level up. It was still weak as hell right now, but I did want to level it up a lot by feeding it other world trash. Then it could contribute to assuring my safety along with Fell. Safety first, this is important. Stone bullet. A small pebble flew off with a whoosh and hit the tree that was the target, hard. Hurrying to check the damage, I found that the trunk had been gouged by the rock, if only slightly. Awesome. I've gotten better. As always, I'd only managed to make one stone bullet but the speed and power had increased. That was probably thanks to my blessing from the goddess Ninrir, small. It was, small, but it still did good work. Goddesses really can do anything. Right now, we were taking a small break to digest our last meal. I was using that time to practice earth magic. 
Right after eating, Fel said, there is something I want to go check on, and went running off into the forest. He said he'd come right back and not to worry before putting a barrier up for Sui and I, so it was fine, though. Sui was jiggling at my feet. By the way, it was leveling up steadily, Sui's leveling up just from eating the trash from my world, after all, and was now level 13. I was really looking forward to seeing at what level it would finally evolve. Now then, back to practicing earth magic. A normal person like me really does need to put in the work. Stone bullet. I continued practicing earth magic for a while. Woo, I'm tired. I used a little too much MP. I needed to practice, but it was troubling that using too much MP left me so exhausted. If only I had more MP. Well, it was no use lamenting what I didn't have. I should eat something sweet to help with the exhaustion. So, I ordered a chocolate bar and some canned coffee from the online supermarket. The coffee was black, the combo between the chocolate and black coffee was greatly effective because of the contrast between sweet and bitter. While I was eating the chocolate, Sui wrapped itself around my leg. What, do you want some too, Sui? Sui jiggled in response. I broke the bar in half and put it on Sui's tentacle, and watched it go to town, the bar was instantly dissolved inside Sui's body. Sui seemed to like the chocolate, and it jiggled as if asking for more while rubbing against my leg. You're really good at begging for stuff, aren't you? Wait a bit. I got some more chocolate and gave the bar to Sui. It jiggled happily while eating. I was way too sweet on this slime. I couldn't help it though, it was so cute, how friendly it was. Still though, Fell's late. He said he'd be back right away, but quite a while had passed since then. While I was resting leisurely with Sui to recover my MP, Fell finally came back. You're late, Fell. Did something happen? It is fine. There was nothing serious. Hmm? Sniff sniff, Fell sniffed the air around Sui and I. W what? You too, did you eat something delicious while I was away? Grk. This is about the chocolate, isn't it? Is the smell of chocolate that distinctive? And no, not really. I replied, and Fell stared at me hard. You cannot fool my nose, you know. Gghh. Damn it, he knows. Fenrir's really did have a strong sense of smell not sure whether he's a dog or a wolf, but he's definitely in that family. It was a candy called chocolate. I was tired from practicing magic, and sweets are good for when you're tired. I am also a little tired from running. Give me some of that so-called. Chocolate. Tired my ass. There's no way someone with nearly maxed out stats like you would get tired just from running a little. It is unfair that only you and Sui get to eat it but I do not. Erk, if he says it like that. Ah fine. I get it, I get it. Losing out to Fell's stare, I bought another chocolate bar for him. Sui was also looking at me like it wanted another, Sui doesn't actually have eyes, but it felt like that, so I bought another one for Sui, too. Here, this is chocolate. Peeling the wrappers off the chocolate, I handed it all over to Fell before he wolfed it down. Hmm, this is my first time experiencing this taste. I do not hate it. Ha is that so? Wait, this guy just ate ten bars of it. Won't he get cavities if he eats that much? Ah, right, he invalidates status ailments, so he won't. I was jealous for a second, but I also have a, small, blessing, so I won't get cavities either, right? Well, even if I wanted to eat sweets, I wouldn't eat nearly as much as fell. By the way, Sui also happily ate the chocolate. I speak unto thee, for I am the goddess of the wind, Ninrir. Offer unto me a bar of chocolate right now. Ah and do not forget to offer some Doriyaki as well a woman's voice reverberated in my head. It resembled having telepathic communications with Fel, but I could hear this voice more clearly. The voice said that she was Ninrir, but, this is just begging for sweets, right? Is this really an oracle? It is. This is an oracle. Hurry up what the heck is up with this demand? Goddess, to use an oracle to beg for sweets, is that okay as a divine being? I shouldn't be saying this, but what a bad egg of a goddess. There's no dignity or anything in this. Shut up. Even gods need something to enjoy Whoa, she laid her true intentions bare, there. Really, what a hopeless goddess. Though I already thought she might be a disappointing goddess from the moment Fell told me he received an oracle to offer her sweets. Actually, couldn't she just use her privilege as a goddess to get stuff from my world herself? That way, she wouldn't have to tell me to offer her sweets. Well, I've got the blessing, so I'll offer her sweets anyway. I bought some chocolate and doriyaki to offer to Ninrir. Hmm? What? Are you giving me more? No, no. This isn't for you, Fel. I just received an oracle from the goddess Ninrir. She wants me to offer her chocolate and pray. Mm, is that so? If it is an oracle from Ninrir make sure you pray properly. 
I placed the chocolate and dorayaki onto the cardboard box altar and prayed. When I opened my eyes, the offerings were gone. Good job, what do you mean, good job? Where did you even learn an English phrase like that? You really are a disappointment of a goddess. Right, you have finished praying, no? Then we are moving. Hurry and get on. I get it, but are you in a hurry or something? And no, not really. More importantly, how is your earth magic? Hey? Did he just change the subject? I still only get one stone out of it, but thanks to the goddess Ninrir's blessing, the power and speed has improved. Stone bullet should be a magic that shoots several pebbles. That you still only manage one is, GNNRRN, I can't help it, can I? It just doesn't happen that way. Like this, there really is no choice but to take you there, Fell whispered softly to himself. Hum? Did you say something? Nothing. Rather, get on already. Yeah, yeah. Sui's already in the bag, right? Okay, I'm good. Then we are off. Gossip, the disappointing goddess. The divine realm, the place where gods reside. The goddess of the wind, Ninrir, a beautiful woman with long, silvery white hair, and deep, clear blue eyes, truly fit a goddess image of divinity. Ninrir was in her own palace, before a mirror pool that could view the world below, or even other worlds, if she were to put her divine power into it. Nwaaa. Th that, isn't that a red bean bun, something that I've only dreamed of. I saw humans enjoying that delicious treat when I first used mine divine power to peek into another world named Earth. Seeing humans eating while saying, it's delicious, left a strong impression on me. I wondered just how it would taste. Red bean buns. All I knew about them was that they were sweet. I did not get many chances to eat sweets, so they interested me all the more. However, even if I could see other worlds with my divine power, I could not obtain items from them. They were other worlds, in the end. Even between gods, there were rules. Even if one could view another's world, one could not interfere. That is why, no matter how much I desired a red bean bun, I thought I would never get to lay mine hands on one. When I decided on a whim to check in on the Fenrir I gave a blessing to and made mine servant, I found that he had formed a familiar contract with a human at some point. Wondering why he would do such a thing, I came to know that the human he formed a contract with was an otherworlder. Not only that, he was from Earth. And he even had a mysterious skill, online supermarket. I somehow managed to figure out that it was a skill to summon ingredients and other things from his world. As soon as I learned that, I took an interest in the otherworlder and the Fenrir's journey, and would check in from time to time, but... To think that he could summon a red bean bun. And that number. I want. To try one too, but, even though he was in my world, I could not lay a hand on him so easily. It would go against a god's discipline. However, red bean buns. GNNRNRNNHH, I must be patient. But, red bean buns. When I looked in on the lower world as usual, I found my blessed servant Fenrir eating a delicious sweet. W what is that, that Dora Yaki? It's not fair, he even got to eat red bean buns before. I want to try some too. Try some, try some me, I like sweets. But sweets were a limited delicacy in this world I presided over. For sweets, you could just about only pick between dried fruits and honey. And he is. Unfair 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 it's unfair. I also wanted to eat sweets. Ah, Fenrir was one that I had given my blessing to and made my servant. If he was my Fenrir's master, did it not follow that he should also pray and give me offerings? Yes yes, that was true. The other worlder did say that he wanted a blessing, so giving him my blessing, small, or something should make it so he won't complain. I hurried to send Fenrir an oracle and to tell the other worlder to pray and give me an offering. Offerings to be made once a week. Because the other gods might find out if it happens too often. There'll be trouble if they find out. My fellow goddesses of fire, water, and earth would tell me to hand over the sweets, and the gods of war and blacksmithing would demand other world alcohol, it did seem as though that online supermarket could buy alcohol from his world as well. Of course they would gather here if they found out. Otherwise, they would attempt to give the other world their blessings themselves and obtain sweets or alcohol directly. If that happened, wouldn't my share decrease? Shiver. I needed to be careful not to get found out. Ooh, Fenrir was telling the other worlder of my oracle. HMHMM, as I thought, my offer of a blessing, small, worked. Red bean buns would be perfect as a first offering. I have also told him to offer the other buns the jam and cream ones that they were eating at the time as well. Ooh, he is already giving me an offering and a prayer. Now then. I used my divine power to transport the red bean, jam, and cream buns he had offered as well as that drink he called coffee milk he offered along with them for some reason, to the divine realm. Oh, so this is the red bean bun I've been dreaming of. And there is also a jam bun and cream bun. Now then, 
let's immediately try the red bean bun. Mhaya, it's delicious, it's delicious, it's delicious. So this black stuff was sweetly boiled beans? It's got this perfect amount of sweetness. To wrap these sweet beans in bread, the person who invented this red bean bun must be a genius. Yeah, yeah. Mm, I'll try that drink the other worlder offered that he called coffee milk. Let's see, stab this here? Suck suck I see, this faintly bittersweet drink went well with the sweet buns. That other worlder had good taste. I commend him. Next was the jam bun. Mihuu, this jam bread is also delicious. This red boiled fruit juice is sweet and sour and perfectly tasty. To wrap it in bread, the person who made this jam bread must also be a genius. M, tasty. It's so tasty. Ah there was no more. I still wanted to eat, so I ate the cream bun next. Mm hat, this cream bun is also good. This sweetly distilled milk is thick and tastes great. The person who thought to wrap it in bread is also a genius. Tasty. Delicious. It's all so good. The combination between this red bean bun, jam bun, cream bun, and coffee milk is the best. Hawa. Sea crab. I. I ended up eating it all. Even though I was planning on savoring everything slowly one by one. It was this food's fault for being so delicious. It really was delicious. But now, all my enjoyment was gone. To think I had to wait until the next offering. I was about to cry. And it was all because the sweets from the other world, Earth, were so good. Chapter 6, Fell's Boot Camp Fell suddenly stopped. Hey, what's wrong? Get off. If you tell me to get off I will, but it's not time for food yet, I think. We are going to have a battle. Hey? Why all of a sudden? You became able to use fire magic through overcoming a real battle, did you not? Now it is time to train your earth magic. Now? You can't just decide that on your own. What are you thinking, deciding things on your own like that? I'm not doing it. No, you are. At this rate, who knows when you will ever obtain the earth magic skill. Rather than wasting time, it is better to succeed through a single battle. This method has been proven with your fire magic. Damn it, I'm working hard on that, you know? It was sad, though, that I wasn't getting much out of it. It happened with fire magic, so it wasn't like I didn't understand what Fell was talking about, but I'd just like him to not throw me into a huge village of goblins all of a sudden. Leaving aside whether or not I'll do it for now, what are you trying to make me do? That. When he said that, I looked in the direction that Fell indicated, and found the entrance to a cave. What about the cave? That is not a simple cave. It is a dungeon. What? D dungeon. By dungeon, did he mean that kind of dungeon? Why was something like that here in this forest? It is still a young dungeon that has just been formed. Sometimes things like this occur naturally in places with thick base magic. Just as it sounded, base magic was the origin of all magic power. Magic was formed by taking in base magic and changing it to magic power. It was like I kind of understood, but not really. According to Fell, places with a high ranking monster's corpse, those with a magic stone, or with terrain that easily trapped and stored base magic, sometimes gave birth to dungeons. Springing a dungeon on me all of a sudden you spew some pretty insane stuff. There's no way I'd be able to take down a dungeon. I'm not going in. It is not impossible. I investigated inside, and all you will find are weak monsters like slimes, horn rabbits, goblins, and kobolds. No way. No, no. From my point of view, they're plenty strong. Wait a minute, by investigated, does that mean he went inside? I thought Fell was late, but it turned out he was in a dungeon. It is a shallow dungeon with only five floors. Even a beginner like you should be fine. You may think five floors is shallow, but it's not from where I'm standing. In the first place, there's no way I'm going into a dungeon. Now then, let us go. Wait wait wait. There's no let us go here. Why are you trying to enter a dungeon like it's no big deal? I'm not entering. My god. Why are you such a spineless coward? Fell, I'd appreciate it if you said cautious instead of spineless. I'm just on the careful side. It's too much to try to conquer a dungeon all of a sudden. Humph, what a smooth talker you are. If your way led to proper results, I would not say anything. However, is it not true that, doing it your way, it would not be certain that you would have even obtained fire magic? Ghh. That is true, maybe. So now you understand. What I say is correct. I will lay a barrier around you and Sui, so there is no need to worry. Let us go. Fell intended to drag me into the dungeon no matter what, didn't he? If that's the case. Wait a little. If I have to go, then I'll need to prepare. It's your time to shine, online supermarket. My plan was to use ingredients from my world to boost my stats. I didn't want to get hurt, 
and dying was out of the question. I'd be entering a dungeon, which was basically an unknown world, so I needed to be even a little bit stronger. I haven't told you yet Fel, but eating other world food makes you stronger. What? I told Fel about how eating food bought with my skill, from the other world, raised one's stats for a limited time. I didn't understand it well, but I also explained that the type and amount of food changes which stat gets raised and for how long. Remember? I treated you to a feast of food from my world before. At that time, you felt like you were overflowing with energy, right Fel? Your stats were raised so high back then, even I was surprised. Ha, is that how it is? Fel also felt that eating food from my world improved his condition. In other words, you intend to eat right now in order to raise your abilities. Exactly. I didn't have time to cook, so I bought mainly prep rep hard side dishes from the online supermarket. Fried chicken, croquettes, mince cutlet, thick cut pork cutlet, yakitori, sweet and sour pork, deep fried horse mackerel, kairashi sushi, smoked salmon marinade, potato salad, pizza, show cream, cake, etc. I bought anything that caught my eye. I had no idea which one raised which stat, so for now, I just tried a little of everything. That said, it would be impossible to eat everything, so I'd just eat a little of each one, and then let Fel finish off the rest. It was a bit sad to leave leftovers, but this was all Fel's fault anyway. Ah, I should give some to Sui too. In addition to leveling up off of the trash, he needs to raise his stats too. Add some drinks in, A and D. Okay, this looks good. I lined up all the food I bought just now. It was a heap of other world food. I don't know which one raises which stat so I just bought a lot of it. But there's a limit to the size of my stomach. I'll just eat a little of each, so can you guys finish off the rest? I don't like leaving leftovers, but it's to go into the dungeon. Yes, I understand. Fell, my friend, I can see the drool on your mouth. Sui, stop vibrating in excitement. Right then, let's eat. I ate one bite, and gave the rest to Fell. The packaging itself went to Sui. Eh, I forgot to tell you but it seems eating stuff that isn't food levels you up. Like this, and this. Pointing out the plastic packaging and whatnot the food came in, I explained things to Fel. Hmm, I see. If that is the case, then Sui gets to level up as much as it. Wants, no? Things from your world sure are mysterious. Mysterious? This stuff didn't happen back in my world, either. It became like this when they came over here. It's mysterious to me, too. Rather, I'm the one who wants to know what kind of principle it is that is doing this stuff. Well, it's already plenty mysterious that I got teleported here in the first place, so I guess anything goes. I kept eating. While Sui leveled up by eating the containers and trash, it also slowly boosted its stats by eating some of the food as well. Fel was also digging into what I left for them. Wee-oo, I sure ate. Last is dessert. Lastly, one bite each of a show cream and a cake. The rest was enjoyed by Fel and Sui. Burp no more, now then. What's up with my stats? Name Makota, Tsuyoshi Makota, age 27 job victim from another world level 3 HP 110, plus 24, MP 110, plus 23, attack 83, plus 19, defense 82, plus 17, agility 78, plus 16, skills appraisal, item box, fire magic, familiars, contracted magic beasts Fenrir, baby slime unique skill online supermarket blessings blessing of the goddess of the wind, Ninrir, small. Ahem, uh -huh, so about 20% up, hey? Huh? It would have been nice to have had larger buffs, but beggars can't be choosers. What about Fel and Sui? Appraising the two, I found that Fel managed about a 30% buff, and Sui was now level 16 with a 20% buff, same as me. Just as you have said, my stats have gone up. It seemed Fel also used appraisal. The dungeon will be no problem like this. Let us go. It's no problem, actually, it was a huge problem but even if I'd said I'm not going in at this point, Fel would just throw me in himself. I drew my short sword from my item box. I guess I just have to steal my heart and do it. Ah, Fel, make sure you put up that barrier. I wasn't being a wuss. I was just valuing my safety, that's all. Fel, Sui, and I entered the dungeon, and the first thing we encountered was a slime. While I was hesitating because I was taking good care of Sui. Had. The slime slowly dissolved. Eh? What happened? Sui, that was a pretty nice attack, there. Hey? Sui attacked? Rather, wow, no hesitation even though you're both slimes. Sui shot acid at it. Sui gave a demonstration as Fel explained it. Acid shot out of Sui's tentacle like a water gun. It must have been quite strong the rocket hit started smoking and melting. What the heck is that high-powered attack? Hey? Was Sui always that strong? 
To be able to launch an attack like this, Sui might already be a special individual. Special individual? Are really? If Sui kept leveling up like this, just what kind of evolution would happen here? Well, there was nothing wrong with Sui being strong, though. The next one is here. You should defeat this one. I did as Fel said, and hit the slime with my short sword. The slime was squished flat, and was absorbed into the ground after a while. Are there no dead bodies left in a dungeon? Yet. Dungeons are like living things that absorb base magic to live. Those who enter the dungeon, whether they be monsters or humans, if they die, the dungeon will absorb them. Eh, uh, so this world's dungeons are that type. I definitely don't want to die in a dungeon. Next. Use your magic this time. I nodded and shot a fireball, which hit a slime and exploded. Ooh, I feel like that one was more powerful than usual. It must be an effect of the... Food. Sui and I continued defeating slimes as they gushed forth. Good, let us head to the next floor. The next one is horn rabbits. Be careful of their horns. Going down a level through what looked like a set of stairs, we were quickly beset by horn rabbits. The sharp horns on their heads came flying like weapons. Whoa. I swung my short sword in the confusion, but it didn't turn into a fatal wound. Whoosh Sui's acid shot dissolved it. Ooh, well done, Sui. Sui happily jiggled when I praised it. More are coming. Do not get careless. Right. This is a dungeon. Also, use your earth magic. If you refuse, you will never be able to obtain the skill. GHH. Right where it hurt. From then on, I used stone bullet to defeat the horn rabbits. But still, in the end, it was only one pebble. Sui and Fel finished off the ones that I couldn't kill with the spell. You are not improving like I thought you would. Ha, 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 of course I wouldn't just get the skill immediately. Whoops, stone bullet. I hit a horn rabbit that jumped at me with a stone bullet. It really is still one pebble. Does the monster have to be stronger? I'm having a hard enough time now, what kind of ominous things are you letting out of your greedy mouth? Actually, why are these things attacking us with you here, Fel? They didn't come at us in the forest because you were too strong, right? Why does that not matter here? Usually, Fel was too strong, probably, so no monsters even dared come close. They might approach if Fel erased his presence but they all ran away as soon as they saw him. That's why we basically never met any monsters at all when traveling. Even so, inside a dungeon, even so-called small fry like slimes and horn rabbits came running even while Fel wasn't hiding anything. Monsters in the dungeon, you see, always view those who intrude on the dungeon as an enemy, no matter how strong they are. I is that so? Dungeons are scary. I don't get why people would go at all when they know they'll be attacked. I'm never going into a dungeon again. Hey, stop spacing out. More are coming. Aik. Stone bullet. I really shouldn't have come into this dungeon. We finally reached the next set of stairs down while defeating horn rabbits along the way. This floor is goblins. Erk, goblins? I didn't want to be reminded again of what happened last time. They are here. Uh. Three goblins came running this way from the end of the passage. F fireball. The fireball hit and burned the goblins to a crisp. Did I not tell you to use your earth magic? No matter what you say. Goblins are scary. If they come running at me all of a sudden like that of course I'll react with the fire magic that I'm better at. The next ones are here. Kayaha. More. Not to mention, there were more of them this time. Stone bullet, stone bullet, stone bullet. My stone bullet, which only launched one pebble, didn't shave away their numbers at all, and all the goblins attacked me while alive and healthy. Oh wah, go away. Stone bullet, stone bullet, stone bullet. I shot more stone bullets but one goblin, still stubbornly clinging to life, swung his club at me. H-I-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-
I will leave you here. Fell's merciless words came right as I was about to fireball their evil little faces off. Fell, you brute. You devil. Damn it, I've got no choice but to keep shooting the hell out of these stone bullets. I became able to use a pretty good fireball, so there was no choice but to believe here. Stone bullet, stone bullet, stone bullet. The pebbles went flying with a whoosh. The two kobolds running at the front of the pack fell, but the ones behind kept coming with no damage at all, as fast as dogs. A kobold opened its mouth right in front of my eyes, like it was going to bite me at any moment. Kia HH. I'm done. The moment I closed my eyes because I was convinced I was going to die in this dungeon. Claw. Something stopped the kobold's bite. Fearfully opening my eyes, I saw a foolish looking kobold with its mouth stuck open, stopped by something hard and transparent. How many times have I told you it will be fine? As if mine barrier would be flimsy enough to be broken by a kobold. I get it in my head, at least. But still, Fell's barriers were invisible, so the feeling of danger was no less real. It was still scary to be attacked by a kobold with such a violent face. Hwoo, calm down. Just as Fell said, this barrier was extremely durable, it seemed. It was truly scary to see a group of kobolds bearing down on you. But, since I did have Fell's barrier, of course I was fine. Anyway, earth magic. I needed to shoot my heart out and get the skill. Otherwise, there wouldn't have been any point in coming into this dungeon. Right, let's do it. That is the spirit. More kobolds are coming. Stone bullet, stone bullet, stone bullet. I continued shooting at the kobolds without mercy. After defeating many kobolds, we finally reached the stairs down to the next floor. Ha, 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 how's that, fell? My stone bullets become better, no? I shoot three of them now, you know. You still have a ways to go. Do not get full of yourself over just three pebbles. Kerr, how harsh. The next floor is the last. It is just a huge cavern, and most likely there will be a lot of kobolds waiting for us. Keep that in mind as we descend. Nodding, I followed Fell and descended the stairs slowly. The bottom floor was a cavern shaped like a rounded dome, and just as Fell said, it was overflowing with kobolds. I isnt this too much. Hmm, it certainly is a lot. There were not this many when I last came. There is a king in the back. K-king? A superior species. That is correct. For now, you two should try defeating it yourselves. You have a barrier so there is no need to worry. I will be here just in case. No no no, don't try defeating at me. Why do you keep saying these impossible things? Sui seems motivated. You should learn from it. I looked at Sui after hearing Fel's words. It had a tentacle out, fully ready to fire acid. S Sui why are you so motivated? Could my sweet Sui actually be a battle maniac? Compared to you, Sui is much braver, no? Now, go. Fell said before pushing me. Way, my staggering step towards them was the signal for all the kobolds to attack at once. You a wah ha Squirt 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 Sui was also crawling along at an amazing speed, shooting acid. Kobolds that were hit with the acid writhed in their death throes as they melted. S Sui. When did Sui get this aggressive? In any other situation, I'd barf at this gruesome scene. Hey, you go to. Remember to use your earth magic. Fell pushed me again, and a huge number of kobolds bore down on me. Damn it. Stone bullet. Stone bullet. Stone bullet. I shot my stone bullets desperately. At any rate, just shoot, shoot shoot. Shoot everything. I didn't want to just admit to Fell being right, but I became able to use stone bullet. All that was left was the kobold king, which was one size bigger than the rest. It was just standing back calmly before but it must have been angered seeing its comrades die one after another, as it bared its fangs and let out a cry. Ha, 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 he's the last one, the kobold king howled as it hoisted its axe and came our way. Ha, 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 stone bullet. Stone bullet. Stone bullet. The stone bullets, wrung out from the last of my power, hit the kobold king. It bled, but was not defeated. The kobold king kept coming with an angry expression, and made it all the way to my side. Shit, out of MP. Fell, the rest is up to you. As I said that, a quivering Sui came between the Cobalt King and I. Right before I lost consciousness, Sui bathed the Cobalt King in a large amount of acid with a splurt. The Cobalt King didn't even have time to scream before it melted to the ground. Hey? What's with this ending? Did Sui just hog all the good parts? S. Sui. That was when I lost consciousness due to a lack of magic power. Splat splat. MNN. Who is it, slapping my face? Splat splat what do you want? MN, MNNNN. Ah. Uh, dungeon. I jumped up. Sui was on my stomach, 
looking worried with a tentacle out. So you were the one hitting my face. Sui, I'm all right. What about you? I am fine a young voice rang in my head. Whoa. W was that you just now? Yeah, it's me th this is telepathy, right? Fell did say that telepathy was possible between contracted masters and familiars, so it's not that impossible for Sui to be using telepathy. But, why now? Ah, maybe he finally became able to use telepathy due to leveling up? I looked at Sui, who was currently jiggling away on my stomach. I remembered the fight with the Cobalt King. In the end, Sui came between us, A and D. Somehow, Sui was super strong, though. Sui had definitely leveled up while fighting in the dungeon, right? I could remember his movement getting steadily sharper, too. He might have become able to use telepathy due to fighting in this dungeon. I appraised Sui. Name Sui age 14 days race slime level 7 HP 157 MP 151 attack 149 defense 152 agility 153. Skills acid bullet. Sui, just when did you evolve? Sui not only leveled up, it even evolved from a baby slime to a slime. Not only that, it was already level 7 after evolving. There was even a skill. That's the acid bullet, right? The one where he shoots acid around. That's an extremely strong attack. I mean, it was shooting ridiculously strong acid. All the ones that got hit by that turned into a gory mess that would basically be guaranteed to be rated R18. Actually, this just came to mind when I saw its stats, but wasn't Sui stronger than me? Hurriedly, I checked my own stats. Name Makota, Tsuyoshi Makota, age 27 job victim from another world level 7 HP 142 MP 141 attack 123 defense 122 agility 118 skills appraisal, item box, fire magic, earth magic, familiars, contracted magic beasts Fenrir, slime unique skill online supermarket blessings blessing of the goddess of the wind, Ninrir, small. GHH. I I am weaker than Sui. B but still, I'd leveled up to 7 now. I even had the earth magic skill. If I went through all that in the dungeon and still didn't have a level up to show for it, there would definitely be a man crying here right now. But it was still sad. Sui's stats were better than mine. To be losing to Sui, who's only 14 days old. Sigh just what was Sui? Fell did say it might be a special individual. Is this what a special individual is? Even so, I feel like its growth is extremely fast, and it's also just really strong, I mean, Sui's already a slime, and its acid bullet skill is way too strong, right? Looking at Sui, who was even now jiggling on my stomach, touching my face all over with its tentacles like there was something fun about it, I tried conversing with telepathy. Hey, are you a special individual, hmm? Dunno. Sui is Sui W well, Sui is only 14 days old, guess it wouldn't know. And there was nothing wrong with Sui being strong, for the sake of my its master's safety. Oh wait, I don't see Fell. Where is he? I looked around my surroundings, but didn't see Fell at all. Hey, Sui. Where's Fell? Um, he said he was hungry and went somewhere. But he also said he'd come back soon I I see. Wait, hi? Can Sui converse with Fell telepathically? Sui, you can talk with Fell through telepathy, yeah, I can it looked like familiars could converse between themselves, too. Fell must have returned to the wild temporarily because he was hungry and couldn't wait. After a while, Fell appeared out of the forest. M.M.? So you are finally awake. F. Fell, I don't mind if you go back to the wild but could you at least make it harder for me to tell? I can see the redness sticking all over your snout. You were not waking up, so I went out and got a snack because I was hungry. Yep, he went wild and ate raw meat. The red around his mouth seemed raw as heck. However, the things you cook really are better. Make me something. Wait, didn't you just eat a whole bunch of raw meat? As if I could be satisfied by something other than your cooking. Ha <laughs> ha, is that so? But I've just woken up from being passed out. It is thanks to me you have safely learned earth magic. It would not be wrong to even treat me to food from your world, you know. Could you not beg for other world food, please? It's true I've learned earth magic, but this dungeon was mega scary. I never want to go through this. Again. Kuruuu, my stomach rumbled. It seemed like I'd been out for quite a while. I hate that it looks like I'm following Fel's orders, but I guess we should eat. HRMM. What to make? Another world feast like Fell was hoping for might make him lose control again, so it was definitely not happening. I was still sluggish from using up all my MP, so something nourishing would be nice. What comes to my mind right away when thinking of something nourishing, is the super nutritious egg, right? Eggs, hi? I hadn't had any recently, so that might be a good idea. Eggs, eggs, eggs. Let's make that. It can be done quickly, and I still have rockbird meat, after all. 
With that decided, it was time for shopping. I bought eggs and dashi soy sauce. I already have myron and sugar, and onions as well I think. Ah, I also need the all-important rice. Start off by thinly slicing the onions, and cutting rockbird meat into large, bite-sized pieces. Next, crack open an egg, and lightly scramble it. Then, after making a stock in the frying pan with water, dashi soy sauce, myron, and sugar, heat over a fire. I find this step annoying, so I always end up using dashi soy sauce. Dashi soy sauce is super convenient. When the mixture starts to boil, throw in the onions and rockbird meat. Once the onions and rockbird meat are thoroughly heated, throw in half of the scrambled egg and cook over low heat. Once the egg has solidified, add in the rest of the scrambled egg, and turn off the heat. After the residual heat has passed through the rest of the egg, the soft-boiled gooey oyakodon is complete. All that's left is to heap it on a bowl of freshly cooked rice. Effie, I tried to call Fel and Sui over, but they were already waiting, staring at the food. Here. I gave Fel an especially huge serving. Good. Saying that, Fel voraciously bit into the food. I gave Sui a more normal serving, as well as the eggshells and onion skin. Master it's good, Sui told me via telepathy. I see I see, that's good to hear. Petting Sui, I turned to my own meal. Yeah, it turned out pretty good. More. Fel, my guy, you eat way too fast. Wait, how are you this hungry after eating raw meat? It couldn't be helped I made more for Fel. Sui also looked like it wanted more, so another for it, too. Man, my familiars sure eat a lot. During the post-meal break, I remembered something, so I talked to Fel about it. Ah, right right. So you can speak with Sui through telepathy. Yes. Sui was talking with Uncle Fel. PFFF. You uncle, F Fel's an uncle. Sui must not be afraid of anything. Well he's over 1000, so Fel's more of a grandpa than an uncle, probably. MHH, do not laugh. Sui, I have already told you not to call me uncle. Eh why not? Uncle Fel is Uncle Fel, right, like I said, do not call me that. Pfft. I it's fine, isn't it? Sui's only 14 days old, after all. Compared to that, you're an uncle, aren't you? Uncle Fel. Grrrrnnn, do not call me that. I will bite you. Ha ha ha, sorry, sorry. If I am an uncle, then so are you. No no no, I'm still 27. I'm no uncle. Master is master. See? Sui says so too. Grrrrr. Sui, listen here. Call me Fel. Do you understand? Fel faced Sui and said that in a growl. You you you, Uncle Fel is Uncle Fel, Sui started quivering minutely. What do you think you're doing? Don't make Sui cry. I hugged Sui, comforting it. Wow, Master I comforted Sui as it quivered. Come on, don't cry, don't cry. Sui is a strong child. Yeah, Zwijdrig, ah, there, there. At any rate, I can't believe it. Growling like that over a name, Uncle Fel sure has a small heart. I said, sarcastically. Growling in frustration, Fel turned away with a sullen humph. Mine heart is not small. I will allow Sui to be the only one to call me that. Ahaha, Fel lost to Sui. Sui, he's saying you can call him Uncle Fel. When I said that, Sui trembled happily. Thank you, Uncle Fel Sui continued to jiggle happily. Eh, how lovely. Our Sui sure is cute. Gossip, the goddess is captive too. Sweets from another world. Ha ha, I couldn't help but sigh. There was still time before the other worlders next offering. Until then, there would be no sweets for me. The red bean, jam, and cream buns sure were tasty. The tastiness of the sweets from the other world, Earth, exceeded my wildest dreams. They were so good, I ended up eating all of them on the first day. I should have told him to offer a little more at a time. Ha <laughs> ha, if only the next offering would come right now. While I was waiting with anticipation for the next offering, I used the mirror pool to peek in on the lower world as usual. Hum. W what's that? What is that brown bar the other worlder summoned with his online supermarket? He said it was a sweet, right? Is that a sweet? It doesn't look like it. What what? So that's a candy called chocolate. The familiar slime was begging for it. Those things could eat basically anything, so it was rare to see them beg for anything. Is it that delicious? Growling, I want some too. It was from the same world that made red bean, jam, and cream buns. There was no way it could be bad. That was what my instincts told me. However, now is not the time for offerings. But I want to eat that chocolate. To hell with it. I'm a goddess, this much should be allowed. It's fine as long as no one notices. 
That's right, that's right. Let's do that. I hurriedly sent an oracle to the other worlder. I speak unto thee, for I am the goddess of the wind, Ninrir. Offer unto me a bar of chocolate right now. Ah, and do not forget to offer some dorayaki, as well. At this point, I requested both the chocolate and the dorayaki they were enjoying so much before. The other worlder was surprised at my oracle. Is this really an oracle, he was asking. It is. This is an oracle. Hurry up. Goddess, to use an oracle to beg for sweets, is that okay as a divine being? Hey? Of course it's all right. Sweets reign supreme. There's no dignity or anything in this, hey. Damn other worlder, running his mouth like that. Shut up. Even gods need something to enjoy. Stop quibbling and offer up the chocolate and dorayaki already. The other worlder summoned some chocolate and dorayaki from his online supermarket. He'd put the chocolate and dorayaki on the altar and was praying right now, wasn't he? Good, good. I'll just transport that chocolate and dorayaki here in the divine realm. The other worlder has done well. Good job. I'd learned from looking at earth through this mirror pool that when someone does something good, they said this. Wow, so this is chocolate and dorayaki, now then, first was the chocolate. The other worlder took off this wrapping before eating it, right? Okay, peel off the wrapping, just like the other worlder did A and D. Inside the wrapping is a brown bar. I see, so they ate this? At the very least, this chocolate or whatever smells nice. It's a sweet smell that I feel like I want to go on smelling forever. Now then, a bite. Snap the brown bar split with a satisfying sound. Whoa, whoa, I it melts in my mouth. It's sweet, and has a very slight bitterness to it. What a unique taste, this is good, too good. Nothing like this exists in my world. The one who invented this chocolate is a genius. Those red bean, jam, and cream buns were way too delicious, and this chocolate is as well. No matter which sweet you choose, the deliciousness is out of this world. I wonder if the other world, Earth, is just crawling with sweet geniuses? I was nothing but jealous. If even one of those geniuses had been born in my world, the development of sweets would have taken a great leap. As of right now, with only dried fruits and pickled honey, it made me a little sad. Ha <laughs> ha. The chocolate was delicious. Next was the dorayaki wait, I can't. No, no. Otherwise, this'll just be a repeat of the first time. I'm going to save this dorayaki and eat it tomorrow, gulp th the dorayaki, it looks so delicious. Ah, I forgot to tell the other worlder to offer larger amounts. I must tell him that in the next oracle. If I do that, there shouldn't be a problem if I eat the dorayaki now. Yeah, that's right. There should be a lot of offerings next time. Right. The Dora Yaki. Chomp dee dee delicious. This was the same sweetly boiled bean filling as the red bean bun, wasn't it? And it was sandwiched between something that seemed like bread, but was soft and gently sweet. Even though they were both sweet, it didn't make it taste too heavy at all, in fact, the balance was exquisite. The one who came up with this Dora Yaki is a genius. Once someone's eaten sweets from this other world, Earth, they'll never be able to eat any other sweet, hey? I've become a prisoner of the sweets from the other world, Earth. Ha oh, I'm excited. I wonder what kind of sweets I'll be able to eat next time? Chapter 7, I was taken to a forest with boss class monsters in it. While riding on Fell's back, I decided to ask him something that was on my mind. By the way, Sui was quietly sleeping in my shoulder bag. Hey Fell, how long is it going to take us to get out of this forest? When I told Fell I wanted to go to either the Kingdom of Ermin or Leonhardt, he said that cutting through the forest would get us to the eastbound road faster, so I just went with him but it's already been three weeks since we've entered the forest. It will still take some time because I am slowing down as per your orders. It would have been faster if I could go as fast as I liked, though. Ah well, if that's the case, I'm happy to go slower. Going at fell speed was out of the question if we went at that speed, I'd be thrown off. Even so, this is still faster than going through the road you humans have made. Ah? Is that so? This forest contains the territories of both the Orthrus and the Griffin. Due to that fact, the road the humans made takes a large detour around the area, and thus takes a lot longer to travel. Hey? Have my ears gone bad? I felt like I'd just heard him say something I shouldn't have. He said, Orthrus, right? He said, Griffin, right? Wasn't the Orthrus that two-headed dog monster? And if I recall, Griffins have the front half of an eagle and the back half of a lion, right? I thought back on the illustrations of the Orthrus and Griffin from games and novels. Those are both boss-class monsters. Why are we even going through this forest if you knew that this was the territory of both the Orthrus and the Griffin? Wouldn't it make sense to avoid this area like the plague if monsters like that existed? You are being annoying. 
neither Orthruses nor Griffins are worthy to be mine enemies. I don't care if they're your enemies or not, it's an Orthrus and a Griffin. I remember telling you this before, but the only thing that can fight on equal grounds with me are beings on the same level as ancient dragons. Both Orthruses and Griffins fall short of that. Not to mention, those monsters know this fact. If any were to come and challenge me, they would have to be young and fearless. Hum. Wait a second. Wait, from the way you talk, it's almost as if there's more than one Orthrus and Griffin. What are you saying? Both the Orthrus and Griffin territories are also their breeding grounds. Of course there would be several. Way aat. You should say these important things first. Of course, this wouldn't be an option if there were multiple boss class monsters around. Even if there were only one, normally the option would be right out. And there were several. No good, this is no good. H hey. Let's avoid their territories, okay? Yeah, that way is best. For my sanity. Why must we avoid them? Of course we are going to keep going. Also, we are already in the Orthrus's territory. What? S say those things first. That is why I told you now. Really, just what are you afraid of? Saying that, Fel kept proceeding forward. Ha <laughs> ha I couldn't help but sigh. Well, it was Fel, I guess there was no helping it. He was too strong. So from Fel's point of view, neither Orthruses nor Griffins could even raise a fang against him. But for me, just thinking that I might meet an Orthrus or a Griffin made me want to piss my pants in fear. I mean, it's an Orthrus or a Griffin, you know? A wimp, you say? That's fine with me. Most people would be scared if they came face to face with one. The only ones who would be fine being near something like that would be strong ones like Fel. I continued to turn it over in my head. It might just be true that with Fel around, they wouldn't come attacking, but even still, I didn't even want to see them. And from what Fel said, we were already in Orthrus territory, too. Don't you dare come out, Orthrus. It seemed that the Orthruses understood that Fel was stronger, at least. Ah. But didn't Fel say that young Orthruses might come to challenge him? No, no way. Just stay quiet like this, Orthrus. I could faintly hear a dog's baying. W, woof, woof, guh. I. I think I hear the sounds of dogs getting closer. A are they coming? The Orthruses. Woof. Woof, 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 woof. Woof. A two-headed, violent-looking Orthrus with black fur burst forth from the branches and trees to stand before us. It was comparable to Fell in size, not to mention, there were five of them. F Fell. This is bad, this is bad, so bad. It's an Orthrus. It is fine. They are not worth your fear. And no way man, you say that but there's five very dangerous-looking reasons to be afraid right there. The one in the middle looked especially vicious, it was baring its teeth with drool coming out and everything. Hmm? Hey? Something seemed weird. The one in the middle was growling and howling, and looked like it had been trying to provoke Fell the entire time, but if anything, the other four looked like they were trying to dissuade the first one. So the one in the middle is an idiot that does not know fear, I see. W wait a second. It looks like Fell is accepting the provocation. I thought, worriedly, F. Fell, friend, could you possibly be raring for a fight? You should take Sui and back up a little. Oh okay. Yes of course I'll be taking this opportunity to get somewhere safe. I hurried to get off of Fell's back, and hid behind a tree. I peeked around the side of the tree, to see Fell facing off against the Orthrus. What is with this super dangerous atmosphere? Do you understand what it means to oppose me? Just so you know, I cannot hold back. If you are prepared for death, come. After Fell said that, the Orthrus in the middle replied with a roar. Then, after another loud and piercing bark, it jumped at Fell. In response, Fell did not even try to dodge, he simply swung down his right front paw in a large arc. Jun, the Orthrus yelped. At the same time that Fell slashed down his right front paw, sharp claws of light appeared and cut apart the Orthrus. WWW what the heck is that, was that a skill? It looked like an attack with some magic power mixed in. I thought back on Fell's status. Now that I think about it, I do recall a skill named Rending Claws. Scatter. In response to Fell's command, the remaining four Orthruses ran like scared bunnies. Hey, it is over now. At that statement, I came out fearfully while holding Sui and approached Fell. At that point, Sui had already woken up from the fuss, and was currently sitting worriedly in my arms. Uncle Fell sure is strong. Yeah, he sure is. Fell, what was that skill? Right. It is called Rending Claws. I put magic power into my claws and release it, creating a slashing attack to cut my enemies to pieces. To be that sharp with just one swing of a paw, that is too powerful a skill. I created this skill about 600 years ago. 
Fell, you don't have to make a smug face like that, you know? I thought, exasperated. Even so, creating a skill yourself? You really are a huge cheater, although it's a bit late to be realizing this. Hey hey, will Sui be able to fight like Uncle Fell? Ahem, uh -huh, Sui, you don't have any claws, so that might be impossible. But Sui, you have your own powerful skill, don't you? That acid shooting acid bullet skill is super strong, you know. Really? Is Sui strong? Strong, yeah, you're strong you're number one. I hugged Sui tight. The events just now were so savage. Ah I'm being healed. That said, it was still smelling really raw around here. Hey, what do we do with this Orthrus? The corpse of the Orthrus that met its demise at the wrong end of Fell's rending claws was still here. Herp this is awful. It's split apart from chest to hip. Orthruses taste bad. We cannot eat them. They taste bad. Fell, have you eaten an Orthrus before? I pondered this revelation in my head, he's the type that likes to try everything, I see. Normally a person would never think of trying to eat one if they saw something like this. If I recall correctly, its hide and claws should be considered precious. Among humans. Ah, uh, is that true? But I was pretty certain that if I brought this thing out, there'd be a commotion. And isn't there a chimera in my item box, too? I recalled, I'll have this Orthrus join the chimera in eternal sleep in my item box. Yeah, that's what I'll do. Peace really is the best. After that fight between Fel and the Orthrus, I was once again riding on Fel's back as he ran through the forest. The sun was just about to set, so I was thinking of camping out around here, but... H hey, is this area still in the Orthrus's territory? Yeah, I think it is. It will be just a little farther until we leave it. So we're still in their territory, hey? Is it okay to be camping here so carefully? Concerned, I look around. Even if you worry about it, I do not think any more Orthruses will come. They should have learned just who is stronger in that last fight. I guess. That Orthrus that Fell killed was probably the strongest out of the bunch, and Fell slaughtered it easily with just one swing. Just as Fell said, they might not approach us anymore. Even so, I couldn't bring myself to calm down knowing that we were still in their territory. I'll need to make doubly sure Fell puts up a proper barrier around us. More importantly, when will you start cooking? Don't more importantly me, geez. Make sure you put up a good barrier if we're still in their territory, okay? Master Sui is also hungry. Sui, you're hungry? Okay I'll make food. Hey, why is your attitude so different with Sui? I think the answer is obvious. I mean, Sui is just the cutest thing ever. Now then, let's leave the slightly sullen fell alone and make food. I confirmed the contents of my item box to help me decide what to make. We had gone through a good chunk of the meat by now. Fell, how long until we're out of the forest? Hmm? We are currently a little more than halfway through. In other words, since we took more than three weeks to get here, it should take about that time again. Still more than three weeks to go. I think our stock should just barely hold. Well, in the worst case, I still have my online supermarket, and I can always save a little meat by making rice bowls. If that was the case, I guess I'd try out that meat that I hadn't laid my hands on yet and by that meat, I meant the black serpent. I mean, it's a snake. The old man at the Adventurer's Guild did say that it was a high-class delicacy, so I think it should be fairly tasty. I've heard that snake tastes like chicken, so. I'd been thinking like that, but every time I considered that it was a snake, I just couldn't bring it out. But still, when I actually ate orc meat it was really good, so the black serpent should be the same way. Yeah, I should try the black serpent. And if it tastes like chicken, I should make that. Everyone's favorite, carriage. Before cooking, I bought any ingredients I would need through the online supermarket. I believe I still have soy sauce and sake, but shaving garlic and ginger is too much work, so I'll buy some tubes of that, and I'll also need some flour, potato starch, and salad oil. I also have a frying pan and pot, but not a pot for frying food, so I'll need one of those. Right, now to cook. Cut the black serpent into large bite-sized pieces, and make holes with a fork to allow the flavor to sink in. Put soy sauce, sake, and the grated garlic and ginger into a vinyl bag, and shake it to mix the ingredients. Add the black serpent meat into the bag and massage the meat. Leave the meat alone for a while to allow the flavors to marinate. The holes in the meat make it easier for that to happen, but it will still take about 10 minutes. Meanwhile, cover a plate with kitchen paper, and make sure to heat the oil as well. Right, it should be about time. Coat the black serpent meat in a mix of flour and potato starch, carefully shake off any excess coating, and fry. Good, they've fried to a nice light brown color. It looks exactly like chicken carriage. Now I'm just worried about the taste. I won't be able to eat it if I think of it as a snake. Telling myself it was chicken, I popped one in my mouth. 
Crunch mg mg mg, it's just plain good. That is unfair. Let me eat some too. It seemed Fel couldn't stand waiting and staring anymore, and he mercilessly ripped through the just fried batch of carriage. W wait. Hmm, this is tasty. There is not enough. Give me more. I've just started frying them, you know? Wait a little, I complained, exasperated, in my head. Muyusui wants to eat, too ah, uh, yeah, yeah, you wait too. I'm frying them up now, so wait a bit. I kept frying and frying. As soon as they were done, both Fel and Sui ripped through them. I fry them and they're gone, fry and they're gone. It's an endless loop. Both of them eat way too much. When will this end? Actually, where's my share? Hey, leave some for me. It's been a while since I've had carriage too. I fried new batches over and over again, and eventually, Fel and Sui were finally satisfied. Yes, that was great. I would want to eat that again. Yeah, it was great. Sui also likes this want to eat again. That's nice. So carriage is popular even here. Still though, they only left three pieces for me. Sadly, I had to eat them as a sandwich. Damn it. Oh wait, Fel. Where is the Griffin's territory, roughly? I had forgotten because of the incident with the Orthruses, but the Griffin's territory was also in this forest. Their territory is a little further ahead. A little further, hey? Then we have some time. Hey, let's avoid their territory. Griffins were dangerous, too. Not only that, but Griffins could fly. We should obviously avoid them if we knew they were around. As I have said before, why must we? Because fell, I retorted internally. You're the only one who can say that. They are not worthy of fear. Not only that, but their territory is larger than the Orthruses. If we have come this far, we cannot just avoid them. W what the heck? That's why I've been telling you over and over, say these kinds of things earlier. That is why I said it now. Ha this guy's never gonna get it. If we can't avoid them now, then it's basically decided that we're going through the Griffins' territory. I hate this. May we never see Griffins, ever. Don't show yourselves, Griffins. It will be fine even if you do not worry like that. I am always maintaining a barrier around you and Sui, and we are not yet in the Griffins' territory, anyway. Even if you say that, it's already decided we're going through there, right? The future looks bleak. Hum. How rare, Fell stopped moving as he muttered that. Hum. What is? Looking in the same direction as Fell was, I saw light blue mushrooms growing at the base of a tree. Looking around. I found that there were several such trees with mushrooms growing. You see, these are called healing mushrooms, and are a rare strain of mushroom. It has been a while since I have seen one, as well. Since healing mushrooms have healing in the name, does that mean that if you eat it, it will have an effect like a healing spell, or maybe it's an ingredient in potions? I wondered. Since Fell was over a thousand years old, and even he was saying it's been a while since he's seen one, it must have been pretty damn rare. These healing mushrooms have a fairly large effect even if you eat them raw. They even heal deep cuts or broken bones in a flash. Hey what an amazing mushroom, if even just eating it has that much of an effect. If they have that much of an effect, I'll take some. I got down from Fell's back to start picking healing mushrooms. When I did that, Sui crawled out of my bag. Something smells good what smells good? Sui approached a healing mushroom. Hey, hey, master this mushroom looks delicious. Can I eat it? Fell just said earlier that you could eat it, so it should be fine? Fell, this is edible. Right. Yeah. It just has a healing effect, so there should be no particular problems with eating it. Sui, it's fine if you want to eat it. But just make sure to not eat too much. I want to keep some just in case of emergencies, after all. Yay, Sui started to happily absorb healing mushrooms. That is right, I remember now. These healing mushrooms are an ingredient for a medicine called an elixir. If I recall correctly, that elixir is a medicine that can heal any sickness. A sage that I had met a long time ago told me that it can save a man from death's door, and even extend their lifespan. Th there it is, the elixir. I thought, excitedly. Elixirs are a precious, hidden medicine, right? If the healing mushroom is one of the ingredients, that means it'd be possible to make one as long as I have these, yeah? But getting the other ingredients must be ridiculously hard, for sure. That's why it would be really hard to make one, probably. As for other ways to get them, wouldn't it just be something like finding one rarely in a treasure chest in a super hard dungeon? It was that way in games and novels. Well, leaving elixirs as impossible for now, it was still lucky to have found healing mushrooms here. Let's take a lot mainly for my benefit. I mean, looking at my party right now, the one who seems like they'd need the healing most would be me, no matter what. From my point of view, Fel might just have been a glutton, 
but he was still strong enough to live up to his name as a legendary magic beast, and even Sui seemed like he might be a special slime since he was so strong no one would ever mistake him for a small fry. I'm the only normal one, hey? Huh? I'd become able to use magic, so at the very least, I was getting stronger little by little, though. At any rate, all this just boiled down to me having Fell and Sui do their best while I just prepared for emergencies. While I was diligently harvesting healing mushrooms, Sui, who was absorbing more healing mushrooms next to me, started to shine a bluish. White. Whoa. S. Sui. Master Sui's body is shining for some reason. S. Sui, are you okay? Does it hurt? It doesn't Sui's shining episode lasted for about a minute. Sui, do you feel anything weird? Nothing's wrong. Sui, healthy, saying that, Sui jumped up and down. Just what was that? It looks like it's fine, but for now I should appraise it just in case. Name Sui age 21 days race slime level 17 HP 367 MP 361 attack 354 defense 357 agility 363 skills acid bullet, potion creation. Sui, so you're already level 17. It sure levels up quickly just because it's eating trash from my world every day. Hmm? It's got a new skill. Potion creation. Hey? Hey Fel, Sui's got a new potion creation skill, right? I had Fel confirm the skill since he could also use appraisal. Yes, it does. Most likely it is because it ate so many healing mushrooms. Hey? You can get a new skill just by doing that. It is probably only because Sui is a slime. A long time ago, I saw a slime that only ate metals evolve into a metal slime. It gained a hardening skill to go along with that. This is most likely something similar. So slimes change what they evolve into and what skills they gain based on what they eat? Potion creation isn't a bad skill. In fact, in my case it's something I'm grateful for. Sui, you've done it. Hmm? Sui is a good kid. Yeah, Sui is the best kid. Yay. Yay. Sui is a good kid. Sui happily bounced all around me. Sui, I want to talk to you about something, so could you stop for a bit? I tried to stop Sui. What, master? Sui stopped in front of me and started conversing telepathically. Sui, look, you've gained a new skill. It's called potion creation, can you use it? Hmm? Sui doesn't really understand, but Sui will try, having said that, Sui groaned in effort as it tried to use its potion creation skill. Ah, Sui did it. Master, Sui did it, really? Yes, this some droplets dripped out of Sui's outstretched tentacle. Ooh, wait a second. I hurried and brought out a pet bottle from my item box. Put it in here. Sui's tentacle came closer to the bottle. The bottle was slowly being filled with a transparent bluish liquid. Master, this is all Sui has made for now I see I see. Thanks. The stuff that Sui made, mostly likely potion liquid, filled half the pet bottle. Is this really a potion? I tried smelling it, but it didn't really smell of anything. I tried appraising the transparent, bluish liquid in the bottle. Sui's special high-grade potion. Hey. What? The heck. Island. This? It says Sui's special here, and high-grade potion, here. Sui, please tell me. Sui, appraisal is telling me this is, Sui's special high-grade potion here do you know why? Um, it's because Sui made it. Also, because it's a medicine that will make a lot of pain go away I I see. Can you make other medicines? Yeah. Sui can make a medicine that heals some pain, and a medicine that heals only a little pain so some pain means a mid-grade potion, and a little pain means a low-grade potion, right? Next is figuring out just how much effect the high, middle, and low-grade potions have. Sui, do you know just how much of an effect your medicines have? Um, the one that heals a lot of pain heals a lot of pain, and the one that heals some pain heals only some, and the one that only heals a little pain heals only a little pain right? I see. It was a mistake to ask Sui. I guess we can only figure it out by using it. That being said, Sui now had potion creation. Sui even had the acid bullet skill, so with this, it had got healing down pat as well. Wasn't Sui just crazy strong? I have lived a long time, but even I have never seen a slime that creates potions before. Even Fell, who was over a thousand years old, hadn't seen one. You did say that Sui might be a special individual. There is no doubt that Sui is, but even so, Sui has very high intelligence for a slime. He truly is a special individual. If Fell's going that far, then Sui really must be special. Looking at Sui, I just can't think of slimes as easy prey anymore. Actually, who was it that decided slimes were small fry? When I looked over at Sui as it jumped around, it went, master and jumped into my chest. Of course I caught it safely. Ah, uh, Sui sure is cute. 
I'm being healed wait, I have something I need to ask. Sui, how much high-grade potion can you make a day? Uh huh, dunno yet, that makes sense. Then, for now can you make enough of the same medicine as earlier to fill this? I asked, showing him the half-full bottle of Sui's special high-grade potion. Yeah, got it Sui made more of his potion. It didn't take too long before the pet bottle was full of it. It's filled. Sui, thanks. This is good. I've got healing mushrooms as well as Sui's special high-grade potion now, so as long as something ridiculous doesn't happen, I shouldn't be in danger of dying. I never would have thought that I'd get my hands on potions. Sui's so... versatile. Hey, it is about time to go. Eh, uh, sorry, sorry. Sui, come here putting Sui into my bag, I climbed onto Fel's back. Now then, let us go. After dinner, Fel reminded me of something important. By the way, have you remembered your offering to Ninrir? Ah, crap. I completely forgot. You damned fool. Go and do it now. Right, right. Fel was mad, but it had only been a week since the goddess used her oracle to beg for more, so I technically hadn't broken the promise. It still seemed like that disappointing goddess would complain, though. Well, it should be fine as long as I offer a little extra. I thought on what I should offer while paging through my online supermarket though that goddess seemed like she'd be okay with anything as long as it was sweet. HRM what should I do, MM? This section might be just perfect for getting that goddess into a good mood. I started scouring my way through the sweets section. They had quite a bit of variety. I guess for now I'll just buy anything that stands out. First, this custard pudding, and this cheesecake. I guess I should buy both the baked and rare cheesecakes. Other than that, I should get this show cream and this roll cake, right? As well as this chocolate cake, Mont Blanc, and strawberry shortcake. And lastly, this pudding a la mode and tiramisu should do fine. All in all, 10 pieces. I ended up only getting western sweets, but, well, it would be fine. For that goddess it's probably 100% A-OK. -okay. That said, I never really looked through this sweets section, but they sure did have a nice selection. If I ever wanted sweets, I'd look through it again. Now then, let's check this out. A cardboard box appeared immediately, just like always. Taking out the sweets, I arranged them on the cardboard box altar. Goddess of the Wind, Ninrir, I know this is a little late but please accept. This offering. I am forever grateful for bestowing upon me your blessing. I place myself in your care, thank you. I prayed and gave my offering, tribute, to Ninrir, the disappointing goddess. Oh, finally. Really, just how long were you going to make me wait? I beg your pardon. I was a little busy myself, you see do not lie to me. I know, because I have been watching you from here in the divine realm you simply forgot, khh. She knew. I, I am very sorry. I will be more careful from now on, please forgive me. Humph, I shall forgive you just this once, but make sure this never happens again. You were so late, I have lost count of how many times I was about to send you an oracle. However, even I have my own situation to worry about, so I could not, I completely forgot because there wasn't any oracle begging for sweets, but apparently, she had her own circumstances to deal with. Those goddesses are always so sharp only when it comes to matters like these. They might find out if I were careless and sent too many oracles. Even I must pay the utmost attention. The other gods must not find out just yet, the goddess was mumbling something under her breath, apparently troubled. Goddess Ninrir, it is but a small token of apology, but today I have offered you a large assortment of sweets. Please enjoy them. Saying that, I bowed my head. When I lifted it, the sweets that were on top of the cardboard box altar had all disappeared without a trace. Amu. Th this is. What the heck is a Amu? She really is a disappointing goddess. Are not these all different kinds of sweets? And this many, goddess, you're too excited. Yes. Just like I have said before, it is an expression of my apology. I did think it might be too much, but, w what are you even saying? This is in no way too much. This is great. Offer this much next time as well. That is an order sure, sure. Of course, this much was no problem. Ah, goddess Ninrir, all these sweets are fresh so even if you refrigerate them, they'll hold until tomorrow at the latest, so please eat them by then. I understand. However, I am a goddess, so both refrigeration or preserving them through stopping time are no problem. I am going to enjoy one every day. Muhiha muhiha. Goddess. I could just imagine the goddess doing a small jig or something. Now then, I will be looking forward to the same amount next time. Do your best to not forget as you wish. Ha h h, I'm tired. It's so much work keeping up with this disappointment of a goddess. I had thought to go to sleep already, but I noticed both Fel and Sui staring. 
in my direction. W what's up, you two? Sui wants some too, ah, Sui, please don't say that so miserably. That is right. Would it not be fine to share some with us? But those were offerings for Ninrir. Also, we're just about to sleep, so no. Yuwei, Master Sui jiggled back and forth. It looked like Sui was trying to suppress its desire to eat because I told it no gh. Sui is way too cute. I caved. You only get three each. Three was probably a small amount for both Fel and Sui. Master, really? Yet. Yeah. But just like I said earlier, you only get three. Yeah why? Sui jumped around happily. Hey, what about me? You'll get your share too, don't worry. Very well. I bought one each of the desserts Sui cheekily pointed out when it looked at my online supermarket, a chocolate cake, strawberry shortcake and a pudding a la mode. Three pieces each for the two of them was probably very little, but the both of them enjoyed the desserts greatly. How my familiars are way too gluttonous. The next day. We will be entering the Griffin's territory shortly. My heart skipped a beat at Fell's statement. So the Griffin's territory is finally here. Man, I don't want to go in. Make sure our barrier is properly in place, okay? I understand. Do not worry. That's not gonna stop me from worrying, you know? They were griffins, after all. We were in the griffins' territory. So far, we had not caught sight of any griffins. It would sure be nice if we got through their territory without meeting any. Three days into the griffins' territory. At last, a griffin showed itself. A single griffin landed before us with a flapping of its outstretched wings. In my case, I was so surprised I couldn't even speak. Seeing a griffin, live, in front of me, almost had me wetting my pants. At any rate, the griffin was huge. With the front half of an eagle and the rear half of a lion, it was even bigger than fell. Said large griffin suddenly bowed and lowered its head. Oh great Fenrir, I have, a request, the griffin intoned in halting speech. I had talked. I had thought that the only beasts that would be able to speak human language would have to be something on the same level as fell, so I was surprised. Sui was capable of telepathy, but that was probably only because we were a bonded master and familiar, and it could communicate telepathically with Fel for much the same reason, that they were both my familiars. Griffins can speak, too. It is not able to speak human language because it is a griffin, all right? This one simply has especially high intelligence. Ah, uh, I see. The only ones that would be able to speak human language fluently would be something like me, or an ancient dragon. Got it. Great Fenrir, correct, human words, speak, only me. Then. This is the only griffin that can speak? Leader of the pride, to become, trial, with me, fight, please. Hmm? Did he just say that he wanted to fight Fel as a trial to become the leader of his pride? Strong, great Fenrir, fight, everyone, me, acknowledge. Fighting with a strong Fenrir will get everyone to acknowledge it as their pride's leader? Hmm this griffin's got guts. Very well. I will be your opponent. However, I cannot hold back. I know. Sui and I fell back to safety. As I hopped off of Fel's back, I said, don't kill him in his ear, but he only twitched a little, and didn't respond. He said that he couldn't hold back, will that griffin be okay? I'd use that if it really came down to it, Sui's special high-grade potion. I only had one bottle's worth, though. I was worried whether or not this much would be enough for a griffin of that size. Sui, can I get you to make some more high-grade potion, sure just in case, I had Sui make another pet bottle's worth of special high-grade potion. Fell faced off with the griffin. Well then, here I come. Taking Fell's words as a signal to begin, the griffin opened its large wings and ascended into the sky, launching countless black, arrow-like objects from on high. Fell dodged those projectiles like he was dancing. Looking closely at what the griffin had shot at Fell, I found that they were feathers. They must have been extremely hard, as they had pounded a rock that was bigger than a volleyball into dust. Whoa, uh, amazing, this time, Fell launched magic at the griffin that was still in the air. Is that wind magic? A small tornado manifested around the airborne griffin. The griffin was caught in the tornado and forced into a tailspin. Not only that, but it seemed like the tornado had blades in it, the magic itself seemed to me to be a higher version of the wind cutter spell, and the tornado was gradually stained red with the griffin's blood. Isn't that griffin in danger? H hey, fell, you've gone too far. Humph the tornado dissipated, and the griffin fell to the ground with a thud. I immediately rushed over to the griffin and splashed Sui's special high-grade potion onto it. I did say that I could not hold back. You did, but there's something called a limit, you know. What the hell was that tornado? Don't just go shooting off such cruel magic like that. M.M. The griffin opened its eyes. Hey, are you alright? Eh, uh, my wounds. I sprinkled potion onto them, 
so your wounds should be fine, but does it hurt anywhere? Humans, medicine, expensive. Ah, you don't have to worry about that. More importantly, are you okay? The griffin's feathers, which used to be a pure white, were now completely stained a painful looking blood red. I am fine, sorry. Will you, that's good. It looked like Sui's special high-grade potion worked perfectly. It was worth using two entire bottles of it. Lost, unable, do anything, the griffin hung its head sadly. It looked like the griffin didn't expect to be able to win against Fell, but also didn't think it would lose without putting up much of a fight. It is a boss-class griffin, after all. It should be a monster that was strong even by this world's standards. For Fell to win so completely with just a single spell, he really is just completely overpowered for this world. Hmm? Hey? I realized it as I looked over at Fell. You didn't do nothing, you know. Look, there. I pointed at a section near Fell's shoulder. There was a faint bit of red blood welling up out of the white silver fur. He probably got that from your first attack. It's only a scratch, but you managed to wound a legendary Fenrir. Isn't that right, Fell? Growling, I hate to admit it, but that is true. Having heard Fell's words, the griffin raised its head with a start. I I did, to great Fenrir. Pi hi aurora roro. The griffin suddenly raised a cry towards the sky. When I looked up, there were several tens of griffins heading this way. W o. W what? Just one griffin was intimidating enough, several tens of them would be crushing. Or rather, I was just ridiculously scared. The horde of griffins landed behind the griffin that fought fell, and lowered their heads. I, leader, acknowledged. Ooh, I see, I see, that's great. Great fell, thank you, very much. Sure sure, this kind of thing is nice. Human, this, give. For some reason, the griffin plucked one of its own feathers and gave it to me. Is this thanks for healing him with a potion? Griffin feathers seemed like they'd be an expensive item. I accepted it graciously. Also, human, you, next time here, not eat. Yeah, not sure if I should be happy or just scared. It said they wouldn't eat me, so that means that griffins eat humans. There's no way I would come this way again after hearing that. Fell, let's hurry up and go. Agreed. Returning Sui to my bag, I climbed onto Fell again. In these situations, it was better to leave quickly. What a rowdy bunch of griffins. We are through the griffins' territory. Oh, finally. We didn't see any griffins other than the talking one that challenged Fell, but hearing that they ate humans had my teeth on edge the entire time. So, I was understandably relieved to hear that we'd left their territory. How long until we're out of the forest? It should not be long now that we are this far. Probably around three days. Ah, uh -huh, finally out of the forest, hey? And then, at long last, we'll be in the kingdom of Leonhardt, at least, I think. Fell, we're in the kingdom of Leonhardt after we get out of the forest, right? I do not know which country. However, this is the forest to go through when heading to the eastern ocean. Is east not our destination? If it is, we are fine. Sai so leaving it all to Fell was a mistake. Judging from Fell's words, the forest we went through was part of a great wooded region that was at least partially considered part of the eastern region of Venon. So, since we went into it from Venon's side, coming out the opposite end should have meant that we would be in Leonhardt, but... I'll have to ask someone once we get out of the forest, hey? It would be nice if there would be someone to ask. Let's stop here for the day. I told Fell when I noticed that the sun was setting. That is a good idea. I am hungry, as well. Of course he is. We were almost out of the forest and I had gotten fairly used to riding on Fell's back, so I agreed to Fell's request to go a little faster. Hmm, then I guess I should make something that fills people with... energy. If that's the case, then that seems perfect. I'm talking pork cutlets. Personally, I had always eaten meat when I absolutely needed to succeed at something, and at those times, of course, pork cutlets are my meat of choice. I should still have some orc meat left. After looking through my item box, I found that I did, in fact, still have some orc meat left. Good, let's get Fell to do his best after eating some pork cutlet. But first, I'll need to buy the rest of the ingredients, hey? Uh huh, I have salt and pepper, and also eggs. I have cooking oil too, all I need is panko and flour. Oh, I also need to get cabbage and cutlet sauce. And pork cutlets need rice, don't they? I bought what I needed through my online supermarket. Now I had everything. First, steam the rice, and mince the cabbage before washing it. From there, Cut the orc meat into thick pieces, and soften the meat with the back of the knife after cutting the muscle fibers. After lightly seasoning the orc meat with salt and pepper, coat with flour and dust off any excess. Then, coat the pieces with a layer of egg wash, then panko, and repeat the coating process again. 
Coating twice ensures the crispiness, so that is what I always make sure to do. All that is left is to cook both sides until they are a nice light brown. The cutlets make a nice, crisp sound when cut into strips with the knife. Man, it looks good lay the pork cutlet on a bed of minced cabbage on a plate, and the dish is complete. It's done. Fell and Sui came over instantly. Let's just pour on the cutlet sauce, ayond here you go, guys. It's hot, so be careful. Right as I said that, Fell bit into the food anyway. Hot, hot. But it tastes great. Hot. Sui seemed to be fine with the heat, and absorbed the entire thing all at once. Yeah, it's delicious, yeah, pork cutlets are the best for motivation. I was happy, too, that the food got favorable reviews. Right, let's eat. Crunch oh, having pork cutlet after such a long time makes it taste even better. Next, with rice pork cutlet combined with rice is unbeatable. Ah, I want some miso soup now. If I remember right. There it is, found it. I had indeed bought some instant miso soup, so I took it out and made it. Cutlet, rice, miso soup, cutlet, rice, miso soup, and then, some cabbage for variety. Ha ha, delicious. Hey, seconds. Sui too sure, sure. Pressured by Fel and Sui, I was forced to fry up a mountain of pork cutlets. I had thought that there might be enough for another meal, but in the end, they ate all the orc meat I had left. Both Fel and Sui really are huge eaters. Fel raised his speed. I could see blue sky from gaps in the canopy now. Yes. We're out. We broke out of the forest into a wide plain. Finally, after a month and a half of travel, we had cleared the forest. Ha, finally, we can say goodbye to this forest. It feels good to be in a big open space. Wait, where are we? Is there a road somewhere? Fell, you've been through here before, right? Yet. Yeah. Is there a man-made road near here? A road? There should be one a little further ahead. Then, can you head for it? Why? Judging from what you've said Fell, I think this should be Leonhardt, but I'd feel safer if we confirmed that by asking somebody. Not to mention, we're almost out of meat, so we'll need to go into town soon. Out of meat? Then this is an emergency. A road, right? I will head. There immediately. Ah, so running out of meat really is a disaster, according to Fell. Just as Fell said, we found the road in no time. It would be nice if we could also find somebody to talk to along the way. While moving along the road on Fell's back, I saw a carriage far off in the distance. Ah, people, I could faintly hear voices cutting in and out. To be able to hear their voices from this far away, they must have been yelling quite loudly. It looks like that carriage is being attacked by thieves. Hey? Th thieves? F fell. Go save them. I'll make an extra special dinner for you. I offered that in the heat of the moment. All I could think of then was that I needed to save them. Those words, do not forget them. Saying that, Fell raised his speed and charged towards the carriage. The carriage was already right ahead of us. The adventurers, probably hired as guards, were in front fighting against an ill-mannered looking group of men that anyone could tell were thieves at a glance. The thieves were more numerous, and the adventurers were being pushed back. Cover your ears. I did as Fell said and covered my ears. A W O O O O O O. Even through my hands, my body instinctively froze hearing Fell's howl. The adventurers and thieves that heard Fell's howl unguarded were frozen absolutely stiff. Sui crawled out of my bag. Master what happened, there were bad people around, so Uncle Fell punished them. Eh? Really? Sui wants to do it too you do? Then, can you shoot your acid bullet at the men there and there who are holding weapons? It would be better if the bullet is small. I want you to make it so they can't hold their weapons anymore. Okay. Splush 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 gya ah. Gya. 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 The thieves whose arms were hit by Sui's acid bullets cried out. It seemed like Sui's acid bullet had leveled up or something. Sui wasn't just shooting acid like a water gun, it was more like a high-speed jet of acid almost a beam. You thieves, if you move one step, I will eat you whole. If you understand, throw away your weapons. The thieves who weren't being attacked by Sui were turning blue in the face at the sight of Fell bearing his fangs at them. They all threw down their weapons. Only the largest one among the thieves didn't listen to Fell, and swung away with his axe. Don't go spewing your nonsense when you've just appeared out of nowhere. The man swung at me. I reflexively raised my arms to cover my head. FSSHHH. Blord opening my eyes because the impact never came, I found that the axe man had been killed in such a grotesque way that the sight of his corpse made me want to barf. Herp I really was about to throw up. Not only had he taken Fell's rending claws head on, but he was also hit with Sui's acid bullet. One could imagine what the body looked like. He deserved what he got for breaking the law like he did 
but I'd never want to die like that. The thieves who had completely lost their will to fight after seeing how the axe man died quietly let themselves be bound with rope. The ones who took care of that were the adventurers that had recovered from earlier. Since help had come relatively quickly, none of the adventurers were seriously hurt. After that task was done, a male adventurer and a merchant that was in the carriage approached me. My name is Lambert, and I am a merchant from the town of Carolina in northwest Leonhardt. Thanks to you, all of us and my goods are safe. Thank you so much for saving us. The one who said that and bowed deeply was a well-mannered old man who looked from his build to be in his mid-forties. I'm the leader of the adventurer party that's guarding this merchant caravan, Phoenix. My name is Lars. Thanks for the help. The man who said that and bowed as well was taller than 180 centimeters and brawny, with red hair. He looked like the very picture of an adventurer around the age of 30. Don't worry about it. We just happened to be passing by. My name is Makota. So, are those over there your familiars? Lambert asked that while looking at Fel and Sui with a fearful tone in his voice. Yes, they're my familiars. It's fine, they won't harm any of you. When I said that, Lambert put on a relieved face. That familiar is a Fenrir, isn't it? So the rumors were true. Lars muttered under his breath while looking at Fel. The rumors have already spread this far? According to rumors in the wind, there's an adventurer with a Fenrir as his familiar. I thought it was just a tall tale and didn't pay it any mind, but... Well, normally you'd think that, right? But it's actually true. If the rumors had spread this far, then it would only be a matter of time until I was found out. Case in point, it looked like Lars knew with just one look at Fell. Just as I thought, Fell would be my biggest concern. Just by having him around, I'll have to worry about people butting into my business, won't I? I had heard that Leonhardt was a relatively free country that didn't promote prejudice, and I had also heard from just some light research that the country was proactively gathering high-ranked adventurers within its borders. That made me think, if they're aggressively recruiting high-ranked adventurers, what about a super-strong legendary beast? If possible, I'd like to hope for the best. Fell's a legendary beast, and ridiculously strong, after all. My ideal would be to be able to freely move between Leonhardt and its ally, Ermin. I can only hope that happens. Well, at this point I can't really stop, so whatever happens, happens. I had a feeling that no matter what came to pass, everything would turn out fine because of Fell's presence. I'd be crushed by anxiety otherwise. By the way, where are you all going? It's time for my 100% success rate conversational evasion skills. I'll never admit that Fell is a Fenrir. We were in the middle of returning to Carolina. So they're in the middle of returning to home base after a job, I see. We need to go to a town anyway, so I wonder if we can ride along? Fell, Sui, this place seems to be our goal, Leonhardt, so want to try going to Carolina, to procure meat, right? I am fine with that. Sui is fine too. Fell and Sui seem to be on board. To tell you the truth, Lambert, we've just arrived at Leonhardt, so we're not really familiar with the area. If possible, can we join you guys on the road to Carolina? When I brought that up, Lambert happily agreed with a smile. It would be very reassuring to have you with us. It's us who want you to travel along. Like that, we set off toward our next goal, the town of Carolina. Extra, Makauta's lazy weekend. They say TGIF, but to me, who had just barely finished his overtime work and was allowed to go home on Friday somehow, neither God nor thankfulness was anywhere on my mind. Well I'm off tomorrow and the day after, so I guess it's better than being at a black company. It had been really busy lately, so I was only able to return as late as this by luck, but once it passes, there wouldn't be that much overtime anymore. The pay at my job was low and when it got busy, it got really busy, so overtime and working during weekends was not unheard of. Still, I thought it was better than a black company, though frankly, most people would probably consider it just short of being one. I didn't even have time to eat while at work, so I was famished. At any rate, I need food first. Food. I hurried and changed out of my suit to casual room wear, before heading into my small but easy to use, because I arranged it that way, kitchen. What should I make? I thought aloud as I looked through my fridge. I can't really work up the effort, so something quick and easy would be nice. I think I still have some frozen ground meat, right? And also, potatoes and bell peppers. Okay, I've got it. I'll make Japanese-style curry roasted ground meat, potatoes and bell peppers. Peel the potatoes first, and then remove the seeds from the bell peppers and cut both into thin strips. As for the ground meat, there's just enough for the batch I'm making, so I'll use all of it. I usually keep the ground meat in the freezer wrapped like a flatboard and scored, so that when I need some, I can just snap off a section like a chocolate bar. Doing it this way is convenient because I can neatly measure out serving sizes and simply snap off what I need. Add oil to a heated frying pan, 
and use it to heat the thinly cut potatoes until they turn clear. Once the potatoes have changed color, add in the bell peppers and continue cooking. While that is happening, defrost the ground meat in the microwave. Add the defrosted ground meat to the pan with the potatoes and bell peppers, and cook while stirring and mixing the meat. Once the meat is cooked, add curry powder and mensui while paying attention to how it tastes. Once the desired taste has been achieved, use salt and pepper for any final adjustments to flavor, and the dish is complete. Once I take this bowl and fill it with rice I cooked this morning, and heap a good amount of Japanese curry-flavored roasted ground meat, potatoes, and bell peppers on top. The Japanese curry-flavored roasted ground meat, potatoes, and bell peppers bowl is complete. It's simple, but looks real tasty. I took the bowl and the premium canned beer I'd recently become fond of and cheerfully sat down in my chair, and turned on the laptop that was left in front of me on the table. While the laptop was starting up, I opened the can of beer and took a gulp. Khhhhh, that's great. Yeah, this beer really is good. This was a great example of what is referred to as life's little luxuries. Next is the Japanese curry bowl. Mm so good. The flavor of Japanese curry goes great with rice. The texture of the crisp potatoes is such a good contrast, too. I was hungry, so I ate pretty fast. Good, the laptop's up now first is Ian. I opened the site of the online supermarket I'd totally become a regular of. Looking at the site while eating, I noticed a huge banner on the front page reading, The Hokkaido Fair is now open. Oh, the Hokkaido Fair, hey? Let's see, the event was named Hokkaido Fair, and under that name, products from Hokkaido like seafood, meat, vegetables, and other goods were displayed. It was mysterious how every single item looked delicious in the light of a special promotional event. The ones that most caught my eye were the processed goods. Squidgy okra, hey? It looks like it'd be good on top of freshly made rice. Oh and this looks good, too. The other thing that caught my eye was a display of Matsumi pickles. They were only eaten around New Year's, but I liked them quite a bit. Of course, both of them would go great with rice, but they also seemed perfect as snacks to go along with alcohol. Being single, another attractive point was that the bottles had just the right amount in them. HRM. It's a bit expensive, but I just got paid so I guess I'll get both, I'm playing right into their hands, aren't I? I thought. But they looked delicious, so I couldn't help it. I could just imagine stuffing my face with freshly made rice topped with squid okra and matsumi pickles. I'm drooling just from thinking about it. Hold it in, me. Just until tomorrow. After that, I proceeded to buy a week's worth of food while looking through what was available. Ah, I also used up all the ground meat just now, so I'll need more. It's always convenient to have some. Right, it might be nice to buy some extra and pre-make some hamburg steak patties, too. Okay, let's do that. With that, I added some ground mixed meat as well. Next is, looking through the meat section, I noticed that minced beef had gotten cheaper. Minced beef looks cheap. I guess I'll buy some. I put the minced beef in the cart without hesitation. On to frozen foods. I'm definitely buying frozen gyoza, and I'd like to get some frozen yudin too. And also some mixed vegetables. That stuff is pretty useful in most anything, so it would be nice to stock up on. Oh and some pilaf and napolitan pasta for days when I don't feel like doing anything. I added the frozen food, which was basically made for single people, into the cart. After that, I added several more things that caught my eye into the cart. This should be it for food. Was there anything else? Ah, now that I think about it, I'm almost out of shampoo. I added in refills of the shampoo I usually buy. Right, this looks good. Let's check out. I clicked the checkout button on the page, and specified what time I wanted it delivered so I could relax and sleep until around noon tomorrow. I ended up finishing the food while looking through Ian, so I guess I'll just go take a bath. And after that, I'm gonna relax and read web novels while drinking beer. Ha I feel refreshed. PFFSSST. Glug 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 I retrieved a can of premium beer from the fridge and downed it. It was my second beer today. I usually didn't drink this much, but circumstances were different because I didn't have work tomorrow. Man, beer straight out of the bath really is delicious. With a beer in hand, I once again sat down in my old chair. Right then, this novel's first. I caught up all at once with this novel that I'd been reading since it started publication. Man, who would have guessed that turn of events? For one of the MC Heroes harem members to betray him and join the Demon King's harem. The author's really being brave. Well, at least I can rest assured that it's gonna be interesting for a while, seeing how this all turns out. While talking to myself about what I thought of the novel I just read, I started looking around for the next one. Oh yeah, I need to catch up on this one too. Let's see, I started reading one about reincarnation into the Sengoku period that I'd been hooked on recently. Most of these types of stories featured someone reincarnating as a historical figure from the Sengoku period, and then making big waves in either war or domestic politics. 
The reincarnated MC or even the historical figure he replaced were sometimes bland, and it was also fun that the historic figure usually was someone who committed seppuku early in their lives, or were otherwise similarly misfortunate. And in order to avoid that, the main character would have to use their cheat level knowledge of modern science and historic events. Man, there's been more than ten chapters since I last read this. Let's start now. After catching up to the novel, I took a huge swig of the beer. He sure is making full use of that modern knowledge. Inventing saltpeter and even cannons just to not die sure made my heart pound. These Sengokura reincarnation stories are always so good. Now then, what's next? Ah, I've only schemed this one, right? This cliched other world cheat harem thing. Yeah, having a harem is a man's dream. It really does make people want to read it. I started reading the novel while sipping at my beer. Wuyu, finally caught up. It really lived up to its popularity. That was fun. But wow, dude. Having ten girls in your harem is way too much. Your brain must have permanent residence in your dick for that to happen. Having only five in the harem really is just right. Well, it's not like I have a girlfriend either. Ha ha ha, I couldn't help but complain a little, seeing as I hadn't had a girlfriend in the past three years. Ha ha. I guess I'll go sleep. And after catching up on a week's worth of web novels, I went right to sleep. Yeah w and I sure slept I was asleep right up until just about noon, which was perfect for a day without work. I freshened up a bit in the bathroom. I didn't have plans to go out today, so I was in a comfortable tracksuit. While I was spacing out watching TV because I had nothing I needed to do, the doorbell rang. Pingpo ng yes, coming. It's probably my order from Ian right on time. I opened the door and accepted the box. Opening the cardboard box, I checked its contents. The squid shiokara and matsumi pickles that I bought on impulse after being hooked in by the Hokkaido fair were there too. This'll be today's lunch, yet. Yeah. I even already cooked rice before I slept. I diligently confirmed the contents of my order and stocked each in its proper place, vegetables in the fridge, and frozen foods in the freezer. As for the meat, I measured out portions, wrapped them, and froze them all in ZLOC bags. I should freeze the ground meat now, at least the portion that I'm not going to cook right away. Freezing the ground meat while it's still fresh is best, after all. Wrap it in a bar shape, score the measured sections, and freeze it that's that. Now I just need to make the food to leave in the fridge for later, and I'm done. I need to make hamburg steak patties, right? And then. I did buy some minced beef on impulse because it was so cheap, so I guess I'll preserve that with ginger to make shijirini. Doing that will make a perfect rainy day side dish to go with rice. After that, I might as well also make some pickles with shiokanbu. Oh, before that, the rice I need rice. I opened the rice cooker I had set to finish steaming the rice at just about noon. The cooker spewed steam from the opening and beyond that was white rice so fresh, it was almost shiny. Mm I just love freshly cooked rice. I piled the fresh rice into a bowl and took it in the bottles of squid shiokara and matsumi pickles to my favorite chair. Time to dig in. Put the squid shiokara on the fresh, fluffy rice first, A and D. Delicious. The meaty and well-textured squid with a mild but deep taste fit together perfectly with the rice. Just what I expected out of something they picked to sell at the Hokkaido Fair. It was completely different from the squid shiokara I normally bought. The price was a little higher, but there's nothing to complain about with the taste. I thoroughly enjoyed the squid shiokara with the first bowl of rice. Next is this. After the squid shiokara, I tried the matsumi pickles. I put it on the rice as well, and took a bite. This is good too. The pickling juice was made out of a mixture of cayenne peppers and salty sweet soy sauce, and added to that was the umami of seaweed and cuttlefish, along with the great texture of large herring roe. Oh man, this is bad. I ate that way too fast. Eating with large bites, I had already downed a second bowl. Wuyu, that was delicious. Sipping on cold tea, I let out a sigh of satisfaction. So I'm definitely having squid shiokara and matsumi pickle as snacks with my alcohol for a while. Oh, putting the squid shiokara on buttered baked potatoes would be good too. Okay, let's make that for tonight's alcohol snack. Now then, I finished lunch, so I should go do the laundry now. After that, the hamburg patties and stuff. Good, the patties are done. Next is the ginger pickled beef. I wrapped the patties individually, put them in a ZLOC bag, and put them in the freezer. Only one of them went into the fridge because I was going to eat it that night. Next up was the shijirini I was going to make out of the minced beef I bought cheaply on impulse. What I was going to make would both serve as a good side with rice, or as filling in rice balls. And most importantly, it would be easy to make I only needed one frying pan to make it. First, add sesame oil to a preheated frying pan and briefly cook the minced beef just until it starts to change color. Regular salad oil works as well, but I prefer sesame oil it helps produce a more enticing aroma. Next, add water, soy sauce, myron, 
cooking sake, sugar, and some ginger paste from a tube, and reduce while scooping out any lye that appears. Once all the juices have been evaporated, the shijirini is finished. Raw ginger has more flavor, but for my purposes, tube ginger paste is perfectly fine. Once the beef cools, put it in a lidded container before storing in the fridge. Letting it sit for a while will allow the flavors to ripen more. Eating it as is is fine, but adding white sesame just before eating is nice as well. The last preserve I need to make is pickles made with shiokanbu. Doing so is super simple. Cut the cucumber into thin discs before tossing the cucumber into a vinyl bag with some shiokanbu. Then, shake the bag well to mix the cucumbers and shiokanbu together. Leaving it like this for about 30 minutes will complete the dish. Eating it as is is fine, but adding in a little sesame oil at the end is also delicious. If the vinyl bag is a ZLOC bag, it's possible to be stored as it is immediately, so I recommend it. Right, now I'm fully prepared for the week. Oh, wow it's this late already? Time sure flew while I was doing chores. The world outside my window had already started going dark. I guess I'll make dinner. And of course, today's menu is Hamburg steak. I took out the portion of Hamburg patty I'd left in the fridge and cooked it. Yeah, this kind of thing is perfect for making at home. Especially with faux demi-glace sauce. Homemade Hamburg steak pairs exceptionally well with homemade faux demi-glace sauce made with ketchup and Worcestershire sauce. The sauce also pairs well with rice, and this really is the go-to sauce for homemade Hamburg steak. Today I decided to accompany the meat with broccoli and warm vegetables that I heated in the microwave with red paprika. Using an easy and convenient microwavable cooking container I bought at a 100 yen shop, making the dish was as easy as washing the vegetables, cutting them, and throwing them in for a while. Thanks to the container, I started to eat warm vegetables more. The vegetables retained more nutrients than if I boiled or roasted them, so the easy and convenient container was a really good purchase for me, as a single guy. Woo, that was good. Now then, let's watch that movie that I recorded before. The movie had become a hot topic because it was the first time it was broadcast over the air. It was an action movie that was made from an American comic, I heard, so it sounded quite interesting. But before that, I needed to head to the kitchen to prepare some beer and snacks. Of course, I was going to prepare buttered baked potato with squid shiokara on top. After washing the potato, leave the skin on and wrap it with cling film before tossing it in the microwave. Make a deep slice in the center while the potato is still hot, insert butter and squid shiokara, and the dish is done. Retrieving some premium beer from the fridge, I took the potato and sat down. Nice. Aeon play. I took a bite out of the buttered potato with squid shiokara. Khhh oh man, this is great. The fluffiness of the buttered. Potato and the saltiness of the squid shiokaram mixed together for the perfect combo. I washed down the salty flavor with a gulp of beer. The opening credits of the movie began to roll. Oh, it started. I watched the movie with good beer in one hand and a good snack in the other. It was slight, but I enjoyed this luxurious time as the night rolled on. Yeah and I slept well today, too. Waking up at a time that couldn't quite be called morning, I stepped into the washroom and freshened up. I was in a tracksuit today as well. I finished all my chores yesterday so today I can just relax and hang around on the internet all day, haha <laughs> oh but before that, I need food. It's close to noon, so it's brunch time. What to do? Right, I'll make yudin. I'll use the frozen yudin I bought from Ian yesterday. First, make the yudin broth by mixing water, mensuyu, and granular dashi in a pot, and bringing it to a boil. While that is being done, defrost the frozen yudin in the microwave. Put the defrosted yudin in the pot with the boiling yudin broth, and after letting the two simmer together for a while, Serve it in a bowl. And here comes the ginger pickled beef I made yesterday. Put some in the center as a topping, and sprinkle some white sesame around, and there it is. Yudin, Mukauta style. Dot. I brought the Yudin in a bottle of tea with me to my favorite old seat. Starting up the laptop, I slurped on Yudin while browsing web novels. Let's see, I was searching for interesting looking novels by browsing through the ranking charts. I found one just as I finished my bowl of Yudin. Oh, this one looks good. It was finished and I hadn't read it yet. Not to mention, the premise seemed really interesting. I started reading from the first page. Quiet clicks of the mouse resounded. In the otherwise quiet room. Woo I finished it. That was pretty good. I ended up finishing the series in one sitting. It was an other world teleportation story where the main character used his cheats to live in I'm fucking strung up life. It was as cliched as you might expect, but it was good. Teleporting to another world, hi? Huh? Even I had a phase where I would have wanted to go to another world if I would be overpowered there, yet. But right now, I wouldn't be able to work up the will to be excited about it. I mean, modern Japan is very convenient. I wouldn't be able to throw away this lifestyle. Living this comfortably, even though I haven't put one foot outside this room for the past two days. It's honestly the best. 
Being in my own home is really as good as it gets. Recently, spending my days off like this has been my routine. I could never throw away this comfortable lifestyle. Well, it's not like teleporting to another world is even possible. More than thinking about unrealistic things like that, I need to focus on earning enough to maintain my current lifestyle. I need to try hard at work tomorrow. So I thought, but who would have imagined that the next day I'd be going to another world?